Six minutes past the hour. Welcome in to the Rick and Bubba show. It's the kickoff hour, and we start a brand new week together, and we thank you so much for being with us. It's 866-WE-BE-BIG. That is the number, and we could take those phone calls at any time. They're called unscreened phone calls because uh, we don't have anyone screening them. So when we answer, it will be live, so be looking for that. A lot happening today. It is tax day, 2024. Uh, It is finally here, and I know a lot of you have been dreading that moment, but it's here. Tax Day 2024 we will have the annual visit with uh, three on a string live in studio next hour. Uh, It's a charity charge day benefiting Beckett's Blessing Box, and uh, that's going to be happening at participating Buffalo Wild Wings. So there is a lot to do today, so let's bring everybody in. Over to my left is Mr. Greg Burgess, and to my right, it is Michael Hams. What's up, boys? How are y'all? Hey, hey. Hello. What's happening, boys? Bring them in. Bring, bring them, them in. Bring them out. Bring them out. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, hope uh, y'all had a great weekend and uh, well, everybody busy. is good. Yeah, very, very busy. Well, good busy. night alive. Uh, Glad I will to sit say, back in here for a few minutes, kind of catch my breath. Yeah. Before it starts over again. Well, uh, it is over. Hey. Oh, yes, it is. The one oh, week I in April has Greg, passed us. I did, and I usually like to watch You would have enjoyed it, it, too. It was it was at times. We had a we had a four-way tie at the top with eight holes left, uh, nine holes left. I used to watch part of the last day. Scotty Scheffler wins his second in three years uh, as he uh, gets a, another jacket and, and puts it on. It's kind of funny because um, – uh, <laughs> Him and John Rahm have been putting each other's jackets on, uh, yeah. and uh, it's funny because he gets his second jacket in three years and wins. Uh, like Helmsy said, it was it was a great tournament uh, yesterday about halfway through. It's not that he was doing anything like he was just running away, but everybody else was just making mistakes, and he kept being consistent yeah. uh, and, uh, and shot a, a great round and, and wins uh, the Masters 2024. So congratulations to Scotty. It's funny because he uh, and um, one of the other golfers, uh, their wives are, were expecting any day. I mean, like uh, they're expecting their first child. And so he said it's been a crazy week, not only trying to get prepared, but also to deal with, you know, your wife not being here, she's she's expected to go into labor any second now. And so uh, he said it would be great to get finally get back home, and now they're ready to have their first child. So It was uh, it was <clears> a <throat> top w- – they talked about it the entire weekend, and, and rightly so, um, <clears throat> because he made the statement early on in the week that if he got the phone call during the Masters that he would just leave, drop everything, and head home. But we got to talking yesterday – about um, last night at a little gathering that Braden's tennis team was having. We were all kind of around the men. You know, we gravitated towards the TV and was watching the last three or four holes. And we got to talking about, like, if she had the baby, like, on hole 12 and he has (laughs) this four-shot lead, does she call? Right. Like, no, she probably, probably doesn't make that phone no, call. Probably not. not, and, not and, of course, some of the guys were like, because I think her name's Meredith, Mm -hmm. and they were like, Hey, Meredith, don't you pick up that phone. He's got a four-shot lead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He'll see the baby when he gets here. That would have been interesting. Yeah, yeah. that, that would have, uh, I guess, a, an official would have come riding out in the cart because I don't know how else you get yeah. that word to him unless uh, I don't I don't really know and how I, that works. We were thinking, too, like when the caddy hugs his, uh, Scotty's neck after, yeah. you you were wondering, like, okay, is he about to whisper, hey, we got to hurry up and sign this scorecard and get you on a plane. She's had the baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's go. She's currently so, having um, attractions. Also, uh, Tiger Woods made the cut. He won uh, it. There was talk of that uh, as we left uh, last week. And he um, he has golf fans in stitches because it they claim it's uh, Tiger Woods' meme of the year where he goes to shake someone's hand. The guy's behind the pine tree, so it looks like the pine tree is shaking yeah. Tiger's hand. It's pretty good. It's pretty funny. But he uh, last uh, hey. uh, yesterday he uh, he played uh, the final round with the the high amateur, uh, which is a young kid. I, I think he's at Ohio. State. I can't he's remember. The only amateur he is. Yeah. He was the only amateur to make the cut. Yeah, uh, and um, he uh, Greg, you would like this kid. He's a little heavier set kid. He, yeah. He's got a he's, he's he's got him some flow. He's got it. He's got his hair long like he likes it, uh, and what a moment that had to be. But I think Tiger, and, and really the, the broadcasters alluded to it, he, he knows where he is, even though the mechanics are there. He said his body's just not, I mean, it's not there. 
but he he kind of gets where he is in his life, and that is the his presence and the fact that he's there and, and able to mentor folks or whatever. He's kind of he's at peace with that. Well, you know? I, I think I didn't really give this much credit to it mm-hmm. until yesterday morning. I'm sipping on some coffee live from the Masters' zone, and they're starting the day. And because he wasn't playing well, he was going to be one of the the first guys to go off, whatever. And I realized why he's still doing this, because he doesn't have to. Mm-mm, and no. to your point, he does have a piece about him yeah, and what he's accomplished and that he he doesn't have that attitude where – because used to, it didn't matter how sick, hurt, ill, whatever, he would look in the camera and say, I came to win this thing. And he's not doing that anymore, to Speedy's point. But I figured out why. And America did yesterday, too. This is all about Charlie. Oh, yeah. Yesterday. Did you see him at the range? Yes, that was <laughs> awesome. And so, and I didn't realize, like, you you can only, when you're at Augusta, I don't know, I guess everybody has different rules, but Augusta National, you have <clears throat> your caddy that can go out there on the driving range with you, and you got one more person to pick. And most people pick their coaches or a physio or somebody like that. And Charlie, his son, is out there with him step by step. And they're actually – communicating on the golf mm-hmm. swing and he he's got Charlie doing certain things and it it looked like it was so entertaining to me because it looked like his son was engaged so much he was actually listening to his dad he was mm-hmm. actually yeah it was just it was great to see and I thought okay this is why he's doing this and that <laughs> oh, makes yeah. sense yeah, like probably. Yeah. yeah so that was fun that was good to see yeah it was <clears throat> excuse me but one week in April's over Greg so calm down oh. uh and so we move forward uh but that is a that is a wrap uh the Masters 2024 and Scotty Scheffler wins his second in three years and he's 27 years old yeah He's Tyler's age. He looks 40. Tyler and I were talking about that Wow, yesterday. that's perspective for you. Yeah, it's yeah. like, Tyler, that's like you just went in the Masters, buddy. Twice. 27. Two green jackets. <laughs> yeah. Good <laughs> great. All right, we'll take a break. <clears throat> Excuse me. We'll be back, and I'll get my voice. Choked up about it. Sure. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Most emergencies come without warning, and when the next one comes, you won't have time to pack and prepare. It's better to get ready now before an emergency strikes. Start with a four-week emergency food kit from My Patriot Supply at preparewithbubba.com, helping millions of Americans prepare since 2008. My Patriot Supply are experts in self-reliance. Their four-week emergency food kits offer over 2,000 calories every day, and these kits last up to 25 years. Go to preparewithbubba.com, save $50. A kit. Are you somebody who likes the deals? Well, go to mypillow.com slash bubba because right now they're having their $25 extravaganza sale. For example, premium Giza My Pillows are $25, My Sandals $25, six pack My Towel Sets $25, four pack Dish Towels $25, two pack Multi Use My Pillows $25, Beach Towels $25. Don't forget their 100% Arabica Organic Coffee to start the day, 50% off. It's deal time, baby. MyPillow.com slash bubba or go to rickandbubba.com under the sponsors. Helix Sleep does it again with an innovative kids mattress made to flip. Why? Well, the firmer side is great for younger kids when they need more spinal support to aid proper development of their growing bodies. You simply flip it over when they're a little older, around 8 to 12 years old, when they want the softer side for sleep. Handcrafted and assembled right here in the USA, Helix is offering 20% off all mattress orders, including the kids' mattress. Go to helixsleep.com slash bubba. helixsleep.com slash bubba. Patriot Mobile offers the same dependable nationwide coverage we all want, accessing all three major Major networks, but without funding agendas you don't agree with. Switching sends the message you support free speech, religious freedoms, our Constitution, as well as our military, veterans, and first responder heroes. Their 100% USA based customer service team makes switching easy. You can keep your number, keep your phone, or you can upgrade. Your choice. Check them out at patriotmobile.com slash bub and get free activation or find the link at rickandbubba.com. There's a popular saying out there health is wealth. And folks, I couldn't agree more if you're dealing with everyday aches and pains, I want to tell you about Relief Factor, a daily drug-free supplement developed by doctors. It's not just a pill that masks pain. Relief Factor uses a unique formula of natural ingredients that work together to help reduce or eliminate pain. Try their three-week quick start kit for only $19.95. Go to relieffactor.com or call 1-800-4-RELIEF. You can also find the link at rickandbubba.com under the sponsors. Debt. 
keeps you tossing and turning at night. You can't get away from it. Insanely high interest credit cards and loans make it nearly impossible to pay off your debt. There's a new way out of the debt trap, Pivotal Debt Solutions. Pivotal Debt Solutions can cut or even eliminate interest. They can find programs to write off your balances. They find every solution possible to end your debt. Before you do anything, contact Pivotal Debt Solutions first. Talk to them for free. Find out how fast they can help you get out of debt. Just visit zapmydebt.com. That's zapmydebt.com. You ever know Notice when you ask moms what they really want for Mother's Day. Many of them ask for one day of peace and quiet. Maybe you can't help mom run away from all her responsibilities, but at least you can help her tune them out. And tune into something great with a brand new pair of Raycon earbuds. Their audio quality rivals the big audio brands that you know and you love at a price you'll love even more. With eight hours of playtime and 32-hour battery life, Raycons are perfect for all-day listening. Get 20% off plus free shipping at buyraycon.com slash bump. Springtime is all about fresh air, freshly clean homes. It's also the perfect time to give a fresh look at Simply Safe Home Security, the only home security system we use and recommend. The system blanket it's your whole home in protection. It has sensors to detect break-ins, fires, floods, and more. Get 20% off any new Simply Safe system when you go to simplysafebubba.com. That's simplysafebubba.com for 20% off. Also, find the link at rickandbubba.com under sponsors. There's no safe like Simply Safe. A wave of concern is washing over America. Recent studies reveal that an astonishing 56% of our fellow citizens report feelings of anxiety or dread about the upcoming presidential election. Hey, this is Rick. This is why we're standing with AMAC, the Association of Mature American Citizens. Now listen, AMAC is more than a senior discount organization. During these challenging times, they fight for common sense and hope our nation returns to traditional American values. Now as an AMAC member, uh, we're not only going to enjoy money-saving benefits, but also the AMAC magazine, a free Social Security and Medicare advice, a trusted voice in Washington, and a community of like-minded patriots who love this country. Take advantage of this election you're special Four years for $30 and be part of the solution over the next four years by becoming an AMAC member. You're strengthening a movement dedicated to preserving the principles we hold dear. Join now, amac.us slash Bubba. That's amac.us slash Bubba. There's also a link at rickandbubba.com. The gravy, please. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Ooh, it brings me to my knees. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. I can't start another. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Day without him, brother. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Ooh, there is no other. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Waking on that blubber. All right, it is uh, leaning on 19 minutes past the hour. We thank you so much for tuning in to... The Rick and Bubba Show's kickoff hour. It's the Good Time Gang. I'm Speedy. There's Greg. There's Helmsy. And we'll get you till top of the hour. And Rick, Bubba, and Adler will join us for the main show. Well, it's tax day 2024. Look uh, out. April 15th, if you're listening live. That means the annual visit of, with uh, three on a string. Uh, we look forward to that. The tax day song. And we'll have a good time. Uh, Super Tom scheduled to be here. Uh, engineer behind the scenes, making sure everything sounds great. And so uh, that will be today. And don't forget, too, a charity charge of participating Buffalo Wild Wings where we benefit Beckett's Blessing Box. Uh, and we had uh, them as a beneficiary back, I think, in 2021. Uh, they continue to support families who are grieving the loss of a child by sending them a grief resource box. Over the past three years, Beckett's uh, Blessing Box uh, has sent about 500 boxes to 35 different states and seven different countries. Uh, so if you go out and enjoy some delicious food, just know you're helping a great ministry with uh, Beckett's Blessing Box, and we'll talk more about them today. And RBU this past weekend, getting a lot of great feedback. We had uh, Mike Waller on with us, uh, his book, Big Intel, How the CIA and FBI Went from Cold War heroes to deep state villains. If you didn't catch that, you can. That's RBU this past weekend. Hey, since y'all were slobbering all over Tiger Woods and his son and about to cry, I was going to give y'all a golf fact, but I Go couldn't ahead. get in. Cause, yeah. Because y'all were so tore well, up. Well, throw it out there, Greg. Uh, now, y'all may know this. Us talking about it tore up? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, <laughs> uh, this, I mean, y'all, uh, for one It was thing, a great I, scene. Y'all had to have it a was. moment of silence yeah, yeah. for It was me. emotional for me. But anyway, I heard this one way, and y'all may already know it. Probably. Uh, you know, the green jacket, mm-hmm. they, they keep it for a year, yep. and then they got to put it back. Yep. Mm-hmm. Who's the only player who's never put his back? Ben Crenshaw. 
Hmm. Gary Player. Okay. Why? He said when it came time to turn it in. Now, this is the guys I heard on the rail this morning. They may have made that up. Mm-hmm. That he told them that it was in South Africa at his house, and if they wanted to go get it, they could. <laughs> and that's, that's where it still is, I guess. Well, and you that's funny. Yeah. Look, that's funny. That's he's, good trivia, I think though, he's Greg. 88 now <clears throat> and hit the, one of the, he did one of the ceremonial first balls. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, he's 80. If if I look like that at sixty eight, I'm gonna be excited. Is he the one that did the naked picture that time? Yes, yes, okay. it is. And yeah. he was like yeah. in his seventies. Funny yes. that you remember that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. you remember that? <laughs> that's, like the that. body, that's the, the body what edition, he right? Yes, of ESPN body yeah. edition. I yeah. think that's what it was. Right. Remember, Speedy was in it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, I did not know. Greg, thank you for that. Did uh, not know that. That's pretty now, unless cool. these guys are wrong. Now I just heard some people talking about it. Mm. And um, plus, they had a good question. So this is what started the conversation. Yeah. Since Powell that won it this weekend, it's his second. Does he does he get another jacket, or do they just mm-hmm. go? That's your no, jacket. No, he yeah. gets another one. I think he gets another one. He gets another one. Now I don't know what they put on him last night. I don't uh, know it was, if it was if a new, it was a new one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when he turns it in, there'll be two of his in there. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of like getting a mark on. Right. And they right. have. You it. don't get a mark on. You let him his jacket. <laughs> and they, you know, it's special to have it there. And you know, they come back and do the dinner every year, yeah. where the champions yeah. dinner, and so they'll bring them out, and all of them be in yeah. their green jackets, and you know, uh, yeah, yeah. Of course, we all wish we had one, but that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> um. So we we talked about the uh, Barstool Sports uh, founder Dave Portnoy, uh, his betting deal where he bet on the NCAA basketball uh, tournament and with UConn and and uh, won a lot of money. And we talked about the fact he had thrown some money towards uh, Scotty Scheffler winning for the Masters. And it says here that he has scooped in a massive $1.65 million payday after betting on Scotty Scheffler to win the Masters, hmm, uh, taking his winnings to $4.41 million in a week after UConn's March Madness triumph. So, so he's done well in a week. He's uh, got about four point four one million dollars in earnings. Mm. Uh, so there's you know a quick if I had update. that kind of money, I, and I'm no basketball expert, but I, mm-hmm. I think I would have piled it on UConn too. And, yeah, and felt yeah. pretty good yeah. about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. You know, you got you got him. I guess looking at, at you know because Scotty Scheffler right now is number one in the world, so that wasn't a tough bet. But still, you had he had golf to be, though. That's different. He had to go out and win it. Golf, U- so UConn, complete... UConn was obviously a number one yeah. seed, but there were other number one seeds. Yeah, but you had to feel good about. You that. You had to feel good about it, so it wasn't like it was some, you know. But golf's not that sport where just because you're the best guy, well, bet on the best guy, he's no, gonna win. No, that's no. just not there's, that way. There's a lot no, of really that's... best in the world that didn't even make the cut. Exactly. Uh, so, um, but there's you an update because we had talked about him last week and the fact that he had thrown some money towards it. Uh, and I uh, just wanted to give and you that, that unbelievable update. deal he got when he sold his business and bought, and they gave it back to yeah. him. Yeah, and and I got to tell you, until bo- y'all started breaking that down, I didn't realize that they really did it that way. That's so bizarre. it was this, it was this company that bought Barstool, and but they bought some other things too, yeah. and and but that one they just like, hey, we don't really want this. And, and one of their products, he was fixing to come <clears> out with something to compete with it, and so yeah. he signed a non compete, and somehow that they just gave him the money back that they. Huh. Wow. Ga- I don't, I don't, I don't, it's crazy. It is. Well, it looks like they gave it back to him to gamble. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Evidently. Yeah. Well, you know, the house Target. always wins. He better stop. Uh, yeah. Because yeah, I think he's ahead. He needs to back out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, quickly. Turn. Uh, so this past weekend, just so many updates, and we'll have a lot more. Uh, don't forget, uh, three on a string in studio next hour. It's going to be fun. Tax day 2024. So um, this past weekend, I know you went, you were at the Little League ballpark a lot. Uh Greg, uh, with one of your grandsons having a baseball game. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and that you, age. You were telling me a lot of what happened, but I saw uh, that he got the game ball for one of he them. Did, and he did. He's just learning. Gr- this hey, is, he was just grinning. This is his first year, and he's learning, and <laughs> he's, he's, you know, trying, trying to, you know, it's hard to keep him focused. Yeah. And he got him a couple little hits and uh-huh. got some score to run okay. and all that. So, yeah. That, it, of course, then they played the next day, and, Tutter, and I didn't get to go to that one because it was so far away and so early. And yeah. uh, Tutter said pretty much it was the opposite uh-huh. that day. But, yeah. you know, at that age, you never tell. <laughs> I mean, you never can tell. But he was tickled because he wanted one of them games. Okay. <laughs> and they, but what's funny is, you know, they started out a little slow. You know, oh, they oh, dropped yeah, a lot. Yeah, but they yeah. got in this, I don't know what, they, the county-wide tournament. They're playing at all the different low. Anyway, oh. they end up in a championship game. Now, they got beat. Well, that's but good. I, I don't know how they had it broken down. It was just certain brackets uh-huh. for the championships, but but they uh, they they on a winning streak there for a little while. So, but what's funny is the game uh, 
Friday night went in extra innings. And Tutter said it's hard enough to keep them looking at regular game. And they were looking at him going, Coach, when's the game over? Yeah, what are we doing playing? <laughs> Why are we in extra innings? <laughs> but you'll be glad to know that the five- and six-year-olds, when they go to the extra innings, they do like Major League and put a guy on second. Oh, yeah. yeah. International yeah. tie run. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so, and, and hey, we got up in the bottom of the last inning and – Kid got up there and drove one in. Really? Yeah. That's awesome, man. But anyway, it's been fun. He's <laughs> learning. It's, you know. And and, and I know your role, uh, you know, is just, I'm, I'm just enjoying this. Yeah. But I, it's also to look over at Taylor, your son, oh, and go, no. <laughs> and, 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 and enjoy that, too. But so, it's, well, <laughs> it's been fun. It has. And uh, we'll continue. I don't know when the season ends. but Yeah. But, Jared, like I said, though, you give them – because they normally play five innings. Well, these mm-hmm. games were six innings plus an extra inning. Well, they, my goodness. They're probably looking around going, what do we do? Oh, yeah. The, the other <laughs> team, I looked at one point and the kid was out in the head. He was standing on his head, like bent over with his head on the ground, <laughs> his butt up in the air. Just, <laughs> Done and then he would it. do a front roll. Right. It's so entertaining. <laughs> yeah. And, they, and, you know, a lot of times, especially when it gets to the outfield, they all get to fighting over the ball. Yeah. Like one, one kid tried to throw it in and hit the other kid in the head. <laughs> And that kid lays on his back just motionless. Like he's just, yeah. yeah. And everybody's screaming, throw the ball. Throw it, throw it, throw the ball. It's awesome. And, and the ball, you just see it just laying there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nobody will get that. it. Nobody will get it. Yeah. And nope. then you tell them the runner, no, run. Oh, that. I'm going to tell you what they ain't going to do. They ain't going to run through first. Oh, you no. You forget it. No. It's not going to happen. Gosh, I'm They're going to stop on the back every time. Oh, the memories. It's fun. We're, we're enjoying it. Like I say, he, he's learning. <sighs> it's his first time. And I love his cheering squad. Oh, Lisa gets to screaming, <laughs> which is hilarious. And she didn't realize it because she had videoed it. And she played it back. She was going, wow. So that's, that's how I screamed. Yeah, yeah. I said, oh, run! yeah. That's funny. Run, Ellis, run. And run, she Ellis. is screaming. Just at the top of her lungs. Yeah. Taking over the video. Of course, you know, every base they get to, <laughs> even if the ball's nowhere near, they stop. And they're like, <laughs> yeah. go to the next one, go to the next you know, yeah, and at one point he was like doing yeah. a little juke out there on second, yeah. Um, but he, but it, it's been fun. We're, speaking of wives, uh, I had uh, I actually had second hand on my wife this past weekend. Oh, wow. uh, it was a very uncomfortable moment, uh, and sh- that she didn't even know it, it, it was taking place. Uh, it was, she was just having a mom moment with JC talking to him in the parking lot, and she didn't know that there was, um, Two men that were standing right behind her, just needing to get by her, and they oh, they, no, they, they, they couldn't uh, get around her. And and I could sense it, and I saw what was going on, <laughs> and I turned around, and just started walking to the car. So we, um, JC had uh, they hosted they hosted this this past weekend. So they had Friday, and then they had a doubleheader Saturday. And n- normally, depending on what night and how it plays out, we'll take them out to eat one of the two nights or something like that, and just go grab some dinner with him, catch up or, or, or whatever. But sometimes it's Friday night's not best, so we'll just do it Saturday night. Yeah. Just And then sometimes there's rain outs and Friday gets moved to Saturday. Then you're playing on Sunday. It's just a mess. But when we come back, I'll, I'll talk to you about it. It worked out Friday night that we would go grab a bite to eat. And we do. And we had a great dinner. I mean, a great dinner. Uh, but as we were leaving, saying the goodbyes, and you know, and I told Terry we're going to see him tomorrow. You know yeah, that, yeah, you know. Uh, but just being Mama, she wanted to talk to him in the parking lot, and um, literally had to walk to the car and leave her. I couldn't She's stacking I, traffic yeah, up. Yeah, the the, uh, the two men actually made eye contact with me. Like I, we just want to get by. Yeah, can you yeah. please tell your wife? Yeah, man? we'll be right back. Rick and Bubba. Rick and Bubba. Resolving to eat healthier this year, that was easy. Actually doing it, not so easy. That's where a field of greens comes in. Better nutrition is a key to health and longevity, and a healthy diet could even help you avoid health risks that run in your family. Field of Greens is your healthy superfruit and vegetable habit. It's the only fruit and vegetable product that literally promises better health at your next checkup. Your doctor will notice your improved health or your money back. Do your vitamins or green drinks promise? 
wellness, better health? No. I love this stuff and definitely feel healthier taking it. Each super fruit and vegetable in Field of Greens was doctor selected for a specific health benefit. Some support your heart, lungs, and kidneys. Others support metabolism for healthy energy and weight loss. If you're resolved to get healthier in 2024, it starts with Field of Greens. And we got you a 15% off first order with free rush shipping. Visit fieldofgreens.com. Use the promo code Bubba for 15% off. Or go to rickandbubba.com. Find the link under sponsors. So there's many options for phone service. But how about spending your money with a company who shares our values? For 10 years, Patriot Mobile has been the only Christian conservative phone company out there. They offer the same dependable nationwide coverage we all want, accessing all three major networks. You'll get the same coverage you've been accustomed to without funding agendas you don't agree with when you switch to patriotmobile.com slash bubba. Now, switching sends the message that you support free speech, religious freedoms, our Constitution, as well as our military veterans and first responder heroes. It's a win-win. It's money you'd be spending anyway. Now it will be working to help make a difference, and their 100% USA-based customer service team makes switching easy. Now, you want to keep your number? Fine. You want to keep your phone? That's fine. Or you can upgrade. It's your choice. They'll also help you find the best plan for your needs. So check them out at patriotmobile.com slash Bubba. That's patriotmobile.com slash Bubba and get free activation. Springtime is all about fresh air, fresh starts, freshly clean homes, and it's the perfect time to give a fresh look at Simply Safe Home Security. The only home security system we recommend, the system blankets your whole home in protection. It has sensors to detect break-ins, fires, floods, and more, plus a variety of indoor and outdoor cameras that keep watch over your property day and night. It's backed by 24-7 professional monitoring for less than a dollar a day. So you get fast emergency response when you need it most. Simply Safe professional monitoring agents can even help stop crime in real time with no contract and a 60-day money-back guarantee. You can try Simply Safe risk-free. Simply Safe will give you and your family a real peace of mind. So don't wait any longer. Get 20% off any new Simply Safe system when you sign up for a fast protection Tech monitoring at simplysafebubba.com. That's simplysafebubba.com for 20% off when you sign up for Fast Protect Monitoring. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Ever notice when you ask moms what they want for Mother's Day, so many of them just ask for one day of peace and quiet. I mean, good luck. Maybe you can't help mom run away from all her responsibilities, but you could at least help her tune them out with a brand new pair of Raycon earbuds. Raycon's everyday earbuds are the perfect way to tune out all the noise around you and tune into something great. Their audio quality rivals all the big audio brands you know and love at a price you'll love even more. With eight hours of playtime and 32-hour battery life, Raycon's are perfect for all-day listening. Raycon's also come with three customizable sound profiles, noise isolation, and awareness mode. That explains the tens of thousands of five-star reviews. Right now, get 20% off your Raycon order plus free shipping when you go to buyraycon.com slash Bubba. That's 20% off and free shipping at buyraycon.com slash Bubba. Buyraycon.com slash Bubba. Buyraycon.com slash Bubba or look for that link at rickandbubba.com. You'll find it right under the sponsors button. Folks, most emergencies come without warning, and when the next one comes, you won't have time to pack and prepare. It's better to get ready now in advance before an emergency strikes. In all kinds of emergencies, supplies should be ready to grab and go right away. Secure those supplies at this website, preparewithbubba.com. Start with a four-week emergency food kit from My Patriot Supply, helping millions of Americans prepare since 2008. My Patriot Supply, they're experts in self-reliance. Their four-week emergency Emergency food kits offer over 2,000 calories every day. Protected by heavy-duty four-layer packaging, these kits last up to 25 years. They're sealed inside rugged handled buckets, and they're made to grab quickly. Go to preparewithbubba.com and save $50 per kit. They ship fast and free in unmarked boxes. Once again, you can save $50 per kit at preparewithbubba.com. That's preparewithbubba.com or Find the link at rickandbubba.com under the Sponsors button. Rick and Bubba's in Ohio! Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Pass the gravy, please. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Ooh, it brings me to my knees. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. All right, 25 minutes until top of the hour. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Rick and Bubba Show. 866-WE-BE-BIG is our number. So, um, 
As we went to break, I was just going to bring this up uh, because it was a very funny moment that we laughed about a lot. Uh, Friday night, so we're in Huntsville, Alabama, uh, and um, the uh, uh, the weekend consisted of a lot of baseball, seeing my parents, uh, hanging out with Reese and Tyler, Mabry, and River. It was just a full weekend, just great. But it go back to where it started Friday. Uh, we were, the schedule was, is, you know, the show wraps up, go home, gather our stuff, whatever. Then we head north on 65. First you check and just make sure the interstate's not shut down because that'll happen in a second. Oh, yeah. Is it detouring you, you know, six different ways? Uh, and, uh, and there was a three o'clock first pitch, uh, for JC's game at UAH baseball. And so it was alumni weekend and we knew that and all the parents, they, they're just, the, we have we have a great group of parents, and any time we have a doubleheader on Saturday, it's normally tailgating day. And when I say that, I'm talking about it's like a uh, potluck dinner kind of thing. Everybody brings what they love, Gee, and bring yeah. you know it's it, we we had dessert. So Terry made a pound cake, delicious, and uh, almost got in trouble one time where I tried to eat a piece, and I she's like, "This is cake. not for you. This is for the tailgate." So I'm like, "So I well, can't you- have a piece in the car, but you can deliver it to the tailgate, put it under the tent, and then I can have yeah. a piece there." She said, "That's correct. Why not? Yeah. You, you can it's go ahead and get yours." I'm like, "But so that's five minutes from now. I can, well, so I can't right have one to here." Set it down. You've already eaten it. I yeah, guess. yeah. I, that's, I, that's I, I it. get that. I love pound cake. Oh yeah, um, <laughs> I do. And it was going to be a busy All weekend. Kinds. Do they call it pound cake because we pound it once you know, it's in front of us? You know, I've never understood why it's called pound cake. Um, <laughs> he tried to pound it in the car. <laughs> he did. If you're just joining us, come up, okay. On the way, um, on the way to the um, event. But um, anyway, so uh, that was Saturday. But you know, you're looking for something, oh, you throw something go. out oh, there. Yeah. It, it worked. There it is. I mean, it is. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> but I had to have that pound cake in the car with me all day Friday, and then we took it into my parents, and then we were supposed to take it Saturday. So I oh, couldn't, I couldn't oh. pound it at all until Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> Only join it. Just, that's the way you do it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Don't uh, fight it. Just right. join. I it. think it's a legitimate question though. Yeah. Why do we call pound cake I'm pound cake? Because right. yeah. no one, yeah. everybody pounds it. Uh, that's it. That's it. <laughs> Uh, we love. I love either pa- that or you put on pounds when you're eating it. Yeah, that's probably Maybe what. That's, that's it. probably Maybe what that's it is. It. But I like the other yeah, batter. Yeah, exactly. Um, but anyway, so I, I, I um, <laughs> so we we go to ga- the game Friday, and then Friday night, um, uh, you know, we we're gonna go take JC out, and and Reese got off work. He's he's up there now, but he got off work. Then he had a haircut, and he's like, "Y'all, I'm I'm eating. I ain't waiting." So he's out. So it was just the three of us, me and then Terry and then JC. Yeah. And uh, we went to the uh, Blue Plate Cafe. And okay. and that is the classic meet and three. Oh, it's been around. That. Anybody that's in, in Huntsville, Alabama, you know about it. Uh, they're on Governors. It's it's known to, to, to specialize in some really good eating. And uh, what is that? And uh, and so anyway, Greg, um, Greg. I'm sorry, something's come up on TV. Whoa, and I, and I, had a, I had a good night look at that moment. <laughs> Um, but anyway, world? so we have dinner and, um, uh, they, it was delicious, absolutely delicious. Uh, and we talk about everything but baseball. We just catching up. Anybody that's got college age kids, if you ever get them in front of you, you know, it's kind of a special moment because you don't get that. Much. No, they're, they're going to um, vapor at any moment, even though you might go to campus or you, whatever and visit, you don't really have that just quality time. And so we, we look, we look forward to that with any of our boys, but so we sit down and we have dinner with JC and we catching up with him. Well, as we're leaving, all right, it's you know it's a little bit later because the game the game you know it, it stretched on. So it's we're looking at seven thirty now, mm-hmm. and uh, and so we're walking out and now my assistant coach who I call Terry Wilburn, uh, she is she is we've we've hugged JC and uh, and now he's about to go towards his car and we're going to ours going back to. Nan and granddaddy's, uh, my parents' house, and he's going on to his house and then got a doubleheader the next day. Well, she decides at that moment to say, now listen, you need to get a good night's sleep. Now in the morning, what are you eating in the morning? Uh, Did they feed you? Now you need to eat good. Now look, you've got to eat good. That's like Amanda's there too. And and are you drinking enough water? You know, tomorrow's going to be hot. You've got to drink a lot of water and just take care of yourself, son. Well, J.C. is looking back at her. I'm looking back at her, and we can see that there's two men that just want to get by her. 
but the cars are in a position where they can't get by. And they're like this. They're kind of pinned. They're like. And so JC looks over at me, and I look over at him, and I'm like, I, I've got to, I've got to, I got to leave. I, I've got to walk to the truck. Have a good night, son. See you later, man. And and I turn around and I'm I'm heading on because I can't separate yourself because uh, right? I've got secondhand. I can't watch it. <laughs> and, and you just remember now. You remember who you play for too. Now you glorify God out there, and you you know what this is about. You you have a good attitude. You carry yourself well. And, and JC can see that she's holding up. And, yeah, and, and he didn't. And now he's kind of walking backwards, yeah. like yes, ma'am. Yes, man, and he wants it to be over too. Sure. Well, finally, I can't help it. I'm two cars away, headed to ours. I'm like, honey, behind you, and I'm I'm leaving. Hey, heads up! All of a sudden, she turns around and she sees there's two men as close. I mean, from me to you, like a foot behind her, and she's like, "Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I I'm so sorry." And they look at her and they, it's okay. Okay, we're and she late. But that's is fine. It, she is extremely. Embarrassed because please understand this didn't go on for two seconds. Yeah. Mm. This was uh, why didn't you, you know help her out? I'm not. I, I'm you out. Ran. I'm out. I had. I, I'm out. I, I'm, I'm getting in the car. Love you, son. Listen to your mom. And, and I'm said, out. Hey, they try and get by. Come on. Well, she got to giggling and she got to laughing because the guys thought it was funny too. Like, listen to your mom. Yeah. You know, they kind of chimed in now because I'm sure they felt uncomfortable. Well, they were, they were part of the speech. I think she might have. She might have. I don't know what they had the next day. I think she might have motivated them. Maybe. You know, maybe we need they to dial get it up in here. Got yeah. a lot to eat the next morning. Uh, so the next morning, I, I wake up and I have been instructed to report to center field with Ron Herring and, uh, and Doug Haygood, two of the dads, that – have you ever met guys that they they can they can't just grill out or cook or smoke uh, whatever type of meat it is to, to for a tailgate? They are like top level, like next level, and they like they got pull behind barbecue yeah. setups and I mean smoking smokers. And you take they, time to have something you hook to your truck to take with yeah, you. Yeah, right, you're serious right. about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, these two guys they they don't just kind of do it on the side or whatever. They 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 cook uh, and smoke things, and and we're Boston, but Boston button it, and we're you know we got uh, all kind. They do that for their community and 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 all that all the time, so they're used to this. But the 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 go the it was hey meet out eight thirty nine o'clock, uh, and we we're starting we're starting the 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 smoking of wings and duck and Kaneka sausage. <laughs> And other sausages for these alumni that are coming out because it's alumni weekend, and they're expecting a ton of former baseball players to come. And and so f- part of the tailgating is is that they were going to provide all this food. That's you know where Terry was bringing the pound cake to. Sure. And so uh, I report to center field. They got some pine trees, and Helmsy, you would appreciate this. Greg wouldn't. We got the master zone in the background. Mm. We got we got we're overlooking a baseball field where. There, it was pitcher day for the baseball team, and the seniors were taking their pitchers. It's alumni weekend. People are rolling in. It's a beautiful day. The wind's barely blowing. It's been blowing about 20 miles an hour, but today or, or Saturday it only blew a couple of miles an hour. We had it like we liked it. And, now, of course, I don't have the gift of the cooking, but I did have the gift of sampling. Well, uh, and so whenever useful. something was about ready, it was, hey, Speedy, will you taste this? And I'm like, well, yes. I mean, I'm – I, that's yes, my gift. That's my gift. And so uh, I was full before the tailgating ever started because I was the sampler. But that was my gift. But it was a great weekend. We had – That I mean, was the, perfect for you, too, because y- you being able to taste everything, once you actually started to eat, you didn't have to make any decisions. You knew exactly what you wanted because <laughs> yeah, of the tasting. Exactly, exactly. You grabbed a plate and filled it up. Hey, guys, they had – they of course you know their little link was out there, uh, so they had Kaneka. That's good stuff. Uh, my goodness, and they had the wings, and they had different. I, I won't. I'm a little I won't, afraid of the duck. I won't embarrass myself with what all they had. I'll just say there was sausage links, there was wings, but there was different recipes and flavors of each. It was amazing. Hmm. It, it really truly was, uh, and I was. It was fun to be a part of. Uh, and then the games happen, and we get home late Saturday night, and wake up. And then you got your Sunday, uh, and then uh, Tyler Maber and River come over, and it was just—it's just—it was a great weekend. But Friday night, I got to tell you, we were still talking about Friday night, Saturday, uh, Sunday afternoon to to the boys, uh, to t- Tyler and Maber, I should say, uh, of the embarrassment of Terry giving That's JC funny. a motivational speech with two men that just wanted to get by. I could believe. tell though they were a little motivated. 
I could tell they were like, well, okay, I they got might as well get motivated. Yeah. They couldn't go forward. Right. You might as it, well list his speech. And if anything, they probably stayed hydrated for the day. True. Uh, because good she, breakfast that too. was a very big focus. You know, had for a good breakfast. Them. Oh yeah. Hey, the blue blue plate cafe is. If y'all were with me in Huntsville, like we'd go there. Three. You had uh, your meats that night were like fried chicken, uh, meatloaf, uh, um, dumplings. It's just yeah. you, uh, you can't miss. Grandma's food. Yeah, Bubba, we'll be right back. Hey there, you and aisle two. I see you by the fiber and laxatives. You still using those to manage your constipation with belly pain? If your symptoms keep coming back, you may have irritable bowel syndrome with constipation, or IBSC. So you may need more than over-the-counter treatments to manage it. Ask your doctor about how Linzess can help you get ahead of it. Linzess linaclotide is a prescription medicine that treats IBSC in adults. It's not a laxative. It's a once-daily pill that helps you get ahead of your symptoms. It's proven to help you have more frequent and complete bowel movements and helps relieve overall abdominal symptoms, belly pain, discomfort, and bloating. These symptoms were studied in combination, not individually. Do not give Linzess to children less than two. It may harm them. Do not take Linzess if you have a bowel blockage. Get immediate help if you develop unusual or severe stomach pain, especially with bloody or black stools. The most common side effect is diarrhea, sometimes severe. If it's severe, stop taking Linzess and call your doctor right away. Other side effects include gas, stomach area pain, and swelling. Learn more at Linzess.com or call 1-800-LINZESS. Family Talk with Straight Talk. You give and you give. It's time to get with Straight Talk Wireless. You get a reliable 5G network and unlimited data, and you get to choose who joins your family plan starting as low as $25 a line. Does it have to be family? It can be family or people you like. Get more lines and more savings. Switch to Straight Talk for family plans starting as low as $25 a line per month for four lines. Find us at Walmart and StraightTalk.com. For network management practices, visit StraightTalk.com. Family plan discount with four lines all on the silver and limited plan. Taxes and fees apply. And Doug. To celebrate everyone who's customized and saved hundreds on car insurance with Liberty Mutual, we got a saving siren that goes off every time someone saves. There it is. It's a really more savings, which really, okay, a lot of savings. A little annoying now. Will you stop saving for five seconds? Only pay for what you need at LibertyMutual.com. Savings may vary underwritten by Liberty Mutual Insurance Company and affiliates excludes Massachusetts. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential. But finding those people can be a major hassle. Unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. And right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash free. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need, sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. ZipRecruiter.com slash free. Resolving to eat healthier this year? That was easy. Actually doing it? Not so easy. That's where a field of greens comes in. Better nutrition is a key to health and longevity, and a healthy diet could even help you avoid health risks that run in your family. Field of Greens is your healthy superfruit and vegetable habit. It's the only fruit and vegetable product that literally promises better health at your next checkup. Your doctor will notice your improved health or your money back. Do your vitamins or green drinks promise better health? No. I love this stuff and definitely feel healthier taking it. Each superfruit and vegetable in Field of Greens was doctor selected for a specific health benefit. Some support your heart, lungs, and kidneys. Others support metabolism for healthy energy and weight loss. If you're resolved to get healthier in 2024, it starts with Field of Greens. And we got you a 15% off first order with free rush shipping. Visit fieldofgreens.com. Use the promo code Bubba for 15% off. Or go to rickandbubba.com. Find the link under sponsors. A 
wave of concern is washing over America. Recent studies reveal that an astonishing 56% of our fellow citizens report feelings of anxiety or dread about the upcoming presidential election. Hey, this is Rick. This is why we're standing with AMAC, the Association of Mature American Citizens. Now listen, AMAC is more than a senior discount organization. During these challenging times, they fight for common sense and hope our nation returns to traditional American values. Now, as an AMAC member, uh, we're not only going to enjoy money saving benefits, but also the AMAC magazine, a free Social Security and Medicare advice, a trusted voice in Washington, and a community of like-minded patriots who love this country. Take advantage of this election year special. Four years for $30 and be part of the solution over the next four years by becoming an AMAC member. You're strengthening a movement dedicated to preserving the principles we hold dear. Join now, amac.us slash Bubba. That's amac.us slash Bubba. There's also a link at rickandbubba.com. Rick and Bubba's in Ohio! Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Pass the gravy, please. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Ooh, it brings me to my knees. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. I can't start another. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Day without him, brother. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Ooh, there is no other. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Wake. All right, we're rolling back. Thank you so much for being with us. Nine minutes until top of the hour. This portion of the show is brought to you by my is brought to you by mypillow.com slash Bubba. That's mypillow.com slash Bubba. We've been talking about my pillow for so long now. Uh, right now they are having a great $25 extravaganza sale. For example, premium Giza my pillows are just $25. My Sandals are also just $25. Six-pack My Towel Sets, $25. Four-pack Dish Towels, $25. You get the idea? It's a $25, $25 extravaganza sale. Go right now to MyPillow.com slash Bubba. That's MyPillow.com slash Bubba. And enjoy all the savings, plus get free shipping. Uh, or you can always go to RickandBubba.com and look under the Sponsors button. All right, so as we roll back... Um, Hey, I found out why they call it pound cake. Yeah, I did. I did too. Go, go ahead and read that because I saw the same thing. The original it's not what we thought. Was a cake that was made from a pound of flour, uh-huh. a pound of sugar, uh-huh. a pound of butter, and a pound of eggs, which oh. puts the pounds on you. And it yes, is why it it's so dadgum good. good. Gosh, it's good. Woo! So come on. Oh my goodness gracious, that's good stuff, y'all. Uh, and thank you for that information because. We weren't sure, and and it definitely wasn't what Helmsy said. What I just I just, uh, you just made a say, suggestion. You wanted to say pound. All right. So um, <laughs> as we roll on, uh, you had sent something Helmsy that we realized uh, was from years ago, and and it wasn't current. But Mar- Mark Pope from Kentucky now, or right, he's at Kentucky. He left BYU men's basketball, and now he's at Kentucky. Yep. He was introduced at Rupp Arena, and. Um, the crowd went nuts. Everybody's uh, all about it. He signed a, a five-year deal for $5.5 million per season uh, and uh, said he's there to win national champion uh, chips, uh, national, national championships. And so that's official. Uh, he's, in, he's in Kentucky now. Ken, uh, but there was, a, there was a video out that we weren't sure if it was current, if it was not, uh, and we got to the bottom of it as a staff. But at first we weren't sure. So what, what was he doing that for? I'm Back not in sure. the day, was maybe they made it to the Final Four? I guess so, because it was in BYU's or, basketball uh, facility. It was. Yeah. That's what was even yeah. more strange about yeah. it. Do you um, even know what we're talking about, Greg? I saw it, and I hit it, and I couldn't get hear it. And then I meant to go back, and I forgot. So there was I don't a, know what it was. There was a, <clears throat> a video, the old video, of him undressing into a Kentucky uniform from the BYU gym mm-hmm. years ago. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Talking about how ex- it was very corny, and it was talking about how excited he was. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of people wanted you to think on social media that that's the way he was introduced. Okay, to, and it's something, and it's something from okay. it's real. It's a real video, but it's not current. But it's not current. But what I want to know is what was he doing it for, even back in the day? Because it's still it would have been corny then. Okay, I got you. Right. So anyway, yeah. But, so <clears throat> so uh, I watched some college softball this weekend. Like okay. actually went to a game. Oh, cool. I had. Uh, it's you know we've always talked about how exciting it is when it gets to the college world series and all that and it's fast paced and those type of things 
and that's easy to say and and whatever. But I I had uh, Coach McGinnis has been so great to me uh, in she's my really, transition really to really Jacksonville State with a yeah she, she is. She's she's really, she, is is there anybody better? I, I mean know. it. She has been just she always checks on me and just always making sure that you know mm-hmm. I felt welcome when we my first got the job and I've been wanting to get up there and watch them play right. and so. We had practice Saturday for a couple hours, and then we had a team dinner later on that night. So I had a couple hours kind of in between to kind of get ready for that. But also, I I, just, I didn't want to just sit in my office. And so I thought, you know what? I said, they're playing. I'm going to go up there and watch them. Mm-hmm. And so I watched, I guess, three or four innings. And that was, ex- I mean, that was some exciting things going on. Good crowd. Yeah. And, uh, great, great of course, it was a home run. It was a home run, Rob, that was disappointing. Oh. But great play. And uh, I think you, I think people saw it on probably Sports Center and a couple of things. I mean, it was really – she went over the fence and grabbed a home run, brought it back. Ooh, it was ooh. amazing. Um, and that would have tied the game. But it, it was fun. Oh, I enjoyed one. sitting there for three or four innings while well, I was standing. But still, I was like, wow. So, yeah. it was fun. So, <clears throat> she, they're have they're they're actually going to be in Miami this weekend when we're there. Oh, okay. so they cool. play a three game series with Florida International while we're there at our conference tournament. So anyway, yeah, I just that's a, that's that a good in. bit of news. Fun. This will be Helmsy's only day this week, yeah. and back next Wednesday, I think. Yeah, well, Lord willing, <clears throat> I'll be back in Birmingham. Hopefully, the fo- so next Sunday night, but Braden's final. Ten at state tournament is Monday and Tuesday, and I just felt, I I felt like I need to be there for that. Okay. So yeah. I'm gonna get home late, late Sunday night, only to wake up and drive to Mobile, Alabama. Okay, and watch him and Caroline. Caroline plays too, and so they'll both be there. But um, you wish it was closer. I do. I do wish. Mm-hmm. I wish it was at the Hoover Met. Yeah. Um, that'd sure been you do. that'd be awesome. Uh, but anyway, so that's. That's the risk. So we'll have our con- – so we leave t- – I was getting messages from coaches last night that have already arrived. Like, I thought we were going early. I thought we were going to Miami early because we don't play – we don't know whether we play Thursday or Friday until we find that out tonight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I I thought, well, we'll leave Tuesday. That gives us travel day. We'll practice for about an hour, and then we'll practice Wednesday, and then we may play Thursday, may play Friday. I don't know. But the way our flights are, and going through a travel agent, I told you this when we were in Houston, we can't change them. So we're there till Sunday either way, mm-hmm. no matter what happens. And I think we can make the best of it. We're in Miami. Worst places to be. But I was getting texts from coaches last night going, where are you at? Why are you not here yet? <laughs> and I was thinking, why are you already there? It's Sunday night, and we're what not. So world? I think they had road trips, and instead you of coming back there. for a couple of days, yeah. they just took the flight down there which makes sense but um anyway so we'll fly out tuesday morning early goodness i gotta deal with atlanta and then um be back sunday night late only to get up and go to mobile for a couple days and see Braden and caroline play in their uh state tournament so that trip mobile Hmm. maybe you can jump off at mobile on the way back from miami yeah (laughs) yeah I don't think longer, land and let yeah. you out. Yeah. It's so, longer to drive there. And I don't have back. as many transportation issues. Like I actually have a van from the university. Okay. So I don't have to worry about getting one from Birmingham, taking That's it back good. and those type things. So um, should be a, uh, if I can get everybody on the plane mm-hmm. and get everybody there, it should be a good week. Uh, we've had a good week of prep. And if we can, listen, we fit, we're third in the conference right now out of nine teams and the top two teams, I, I don't know that they're even touchable. They're that good, Florida International Liberty. I think Liberty, on a good day, we play our best tennis, something goofy happens, and mm-hmm. they don't play. I think they're probably gettable. But those two teams are top-notch, and so um, we've put ourselves in a good position to to go have, maybe win a couple matches down there. there. We'll see. It'll be, yeah. be fun. Know. But we had a great senior night uh, dinner we we used uh, Greg. We used Calhoun to cater it, and it was fantastic. Delicious. Good yeah, gracious, gracious good the food. food. Mm. You know what the guy's name is that runs that place? No. Socrates. Really? What? That's his name. <laughs> Socrates. <laughs> a lot of pressure. Thought Your he name's Socrates. When he said that a couple of times, I'm like, is he saying Socrates? Keep, so I had to get to the bottom of it. Do his people name ask him about advice and stuff. <clears> you know, probably Socrates so. had all these great. Yeah. <laughs> Philosopher. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be safe, buddy. Rick Thank you. And Bubba, Rick and Bubba.
If you're a Georgia fan, do you go, wow, we let him get away? Well, what I would say to that, yes, you do. But what I would say is, so tell me how you could have kept him. Well, you had a choice. You had a guy that looked like he was uh, top notch, and you had Fields, and you had to decide one of them was going to transfer. Whoever yeah. did start, right? So, and, but from had done a lot. Of he good was top notch. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, he's but, he, a good college quarterback. But here, here's the thing. Do you remember when Fields would get in? They wouldn't let him throw. All he did yeah, that was run was wildcat. Weird. I thought that because he's shown now he can throw. Yeah, I mean, I, that, that was strange. Maybe he's, you know, maybe he wasn't that good then. But you know, people, and if you're even Kirby, you're going to go, wow. Uh, the backup was awful good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but evidently Fromm was doing things that, that yeah. kind of gave him a better chance to win. Is he in the pros now, by the way? Where's he he, he got drafted late by the Bills yeah, or somebody. Or Is something. he still on the squad? I don't Didn't know. he go later than they thought he oh, would? he went like fourth or fifth maybe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But he thought he was going earlier. I, I thought I felt I like he was a little combine, disappointed. His numbers okay. dropped, I, but I think Bubba brought up the point all fair. All right, so the the national championship games down at uh, Miami, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, there's they are allowing some fans, so people have to make arrangements and and flights. Or I'm driving, I got yeah. hotel rooms. Oh, yeah. So a decision has to be made on this game, right? Because you can't just float along. Because you're, you're taking off work to go to a Monday night game too, and you've got to you know, hey, what? Go stop, go stop. Mm-hmm. But you would there, like to. There's there, there's <laughs> Saban's daughter saying you, you don't see us trying to delay to get Waddle back. Yeah, yeah. that's a good one by uh, the way. That was a good well one. and valid. Hey guys, well. But again, the <laughs> national championship game, you would like to see both teams at their full strength. I would, you know? I would, yeah. But mm-hmm. but to Speedy's point, there's a lot of lot lot of organization going on on Monday night yeah. that yeah. say, well, we'll just delay it. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. yeah. it's a pretty big it's event tough. when it comes Look, to TV. Ohio and... State's only played seven games. Yeah, or eight, right. whatever. Yeah. No, I think it's seven. If they win, they will have played eight games. Yeah, I don't want to hear any whining. Including they the played playoffs. seven games. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's just. What odd year. What an odd, odd little year 2020 was. Yeah, if you're Ohio State, you're almost that person like you think, you know, we always talk about our accounts. I talked to one earlier. <clears throat> hey, we've already gone to our account too many times and asked for, well, could y'all give us a break on this? <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, your whole, you, the fact you got in the four, we had to give you a break and change the rules. So, Rick, they couldn't mm-hmm. even make it to the championship game that had to change the rule. I you know. know. Yeah. For the conference. There's so, a lot of rule changing. But I, I, mean, I understand it's like, it's, the conference wants to put the best team there. But they, they were. Yeah. It's, oh, no. It's like yeah. deciding how you're going to vote. Am I glad that Alabama and Ohio State are playing each other? I am. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I will enjoy that game. However, I think. When you get into contact tracing, you talk about being able to play games with stuff. Yeah, that's I mean, what, I mean, that's good grace. Well, you know, I might, aren't that, that bunch of practices together? And then you have so, different ooh, conferences. So come on now. I mean, you, anybody got symptoms? Look, different conferences <laughs> have different rules yeah. on coming back. What's well, yeah. the reason why? If you think about, it, like, on contact tracing, you, you and Adler would have been declared as sick. Yeah, but you weren't. I got it. Yeah, yeah. So it's um, I. <laughs> I, I I don't think Ohio State can be allowed to to now get another pass on something. <laughs> I, I think they're going to have to play the game Monday. Mm-hmm. I think so too. But, and, but, but there's do been I want, no official word, right? But do I want to see both at full strength? I do as yeah. a fan because I, we I want to see the Ohio State we saw the other night against Clemson and had not seen that team before. That team has mm-hmm. not played that well all year. Well, but that's the team well I want to see. That's yeah. the team I want to see. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Otherwise, it's going to be a shellacking. Yeah, because uh, other than the A&M game, what was that, a 17-point and, and a little bit of the Florida game. But even on the Florida game that Florida scored a bunch of points on Alabama, you never felt like Alabama was in trouble. No. Yeah. I, I don't want, know why, but you didn't. I want Ohio State to find four pickup games, play them all in a row, and Alabama just wait and play them after that. <laughs> yeah, we could do that. We'll be right back. 15 minutes past. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. This is the Rick and Bubba Show. Watch more at blazetv.com slash Rick and Bubba.
minutes past the hour. The Rick and Bubba Show, 866-WE-BE-BIG is our number. Thank you for being with us today. This hour starts with the national anthem. Here we go. It is seven and a half minutes past the hour. Welcome in to a brand new hour on a brand new day on a brand new week in Rick and Bubba history. Tax day today. Yep. We'll walk through that together today. Three on a string. They have been uh, tax day. I mean, I'm talking about solidified right there, a uh, norm, and they'll be here again today. Uh, to sing the tax song and, and also just uh, pick a little for us today. Uh, Charity Charge is back today at participating Buffalo Wild Wings locations, all those in Alabama. Today, 10% of those food sales at participating locations go to Beckett's Blessings. Uh, and uh, that is a great organization. And so you go out and enjoy some great food today at participating locations and help a great cause at the same time. Speedy, the real Greg Burgess, Helmsy, uh, Eddie Van Adler all here. Super Tom, the engineer, is here preparing for Three on the Strings performance coming up. Uh, but we're missing one, uh, the silver tongue one, the man with the golden voice, professional lunch eaters, man of the year, the inventor of pizza and a cup, Shakespeare's worst nightmare, and the master of the king's English. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Bill Bubba Buster. How about it, Rick Burgess? Friends, neighbors, associates everywhere, welcome into another edition of Rick and Bubba. When I, when I spun that at the Silver Dollar at the Teen Club, good Ooh, gracious, in the 80s. Oh, yeah. Good. You think that floor didn't pack? Mm, it's a good oh, one. Yeah. I mean, that's that's one of the best ones of all time right there uh, in the dance in, in the dance uh, category. Uh, so we do have a lot to, to cover, as I mentioned uh, on the show today. We, we do have uh, tax day. Uh, we, once again, want to come through, for those of you that may be uh, having a tax burden today, <laughs> Uh, if you are writing the biggest check to the federal government today, this is in addition to what you've already paid or however you pay your taxes, the biggest check to the government today, we will help you with that burden with a crisp $100 bill. There you go. 
A hundred dollars. There you go. So, uh, so there, that, that's just our way. Of, just to help. You. Just, just our way to help. And our way of saying thanks. Thank, that's right. So <laughs> for all you've done so, for us, the taxpayers. So we will. Uh, you can start uh, probably uh, since we don't really have anybody on the phones like just all the time. It might be best just have them email. And that's kind of what we went to last yeah, year. They I, I just think emailed me, and and I kind of shifted through them. And then sometimes we'd get a phone call, but we'll get through it. So yes, why don't you email that check? Because a lot of you need to get us that information on your schedule, not wait around on ours. And we got a pretty active show today. So uh, just email Speedy at rickandbubba.com dot uh, com the amount you're going to be uh, handing off to the federal government today. If your check is the biggest. Uh, $100, and we'll keep you updated on what is the biggest. So if you're not in that category, you don't waste time with that once we get, get established. but Yeah, it'll be a moving target today. Moving target. And it has had wide ranges over the yeah, years. Yeah, it has. Yeah, it uh, has. Some have been very hefty. I've already emailed Speedy, uh, and, I, and, I am, and I am currently leading. Uh, so so anyway, it was, it was a little it was an ouch this year. So, whip it, whip it, baby. Uh, whip it, baby. Uh, so, but the good news is the government has spent our money so well we should be thrilled. <laughs> Right. Uh, so, That's so true. Yeah, don't they don't they do a good don't they good stewards of it? No sure. boy. Uh so I'm I'm probably you know, I'm probably funding the mating habits of the monarch butterfly today. So uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll see. No tell. Uh or or for them to you know, they'll come up with something that uh, they did a study and found out that males and females actually aren't what? interchangeable. Wait a uh, minute. yeah, but anyway, so uh we've got that today. So send those to, to Speedy. I told you we have a charity charge today. Uh, Rick and Bub University, the podcast uh, dropped over the weekend, Mike Waller. Uh, the book uh, Big Intel, how the CIA and the FBI went from Cold War heroes to deep state villains. That was a really troubling conversation, yeah. <laughs> uh, but an en- enlightening conversation. If you haven't caught that yet, wherever you get podcasts, look for that. And, of course, Bubba, a lot to discuss from the weekend, uh, including uh, Israel. That, was, uh, that, that became a big story over the weekend as Iran uh, launched drones and missiles uh, at Israel, uh, uh, the combination of Israel, the United States, uh, and I believe the, the Brits uh, were able to take down almost all of them. Uh, but uh, it was uh, it was serious. Matter of fact, uh, you know, have you, have you seen some of the pictures of the missile yeah. on the beaches? Mm-hmm. My that, uh, uh, Israel. Look, they sent us a picture. Matter of fact, oh. here is one, and and that that's now. So when you're talking about missiles. <laughs> Uh, pretty big, pretty and, big and, piece of metal yeah, coming through there. You start, there. you start thinking to yourself, well, what, yeah, what, no, was it any big deal? There's one of the missiles right there. We're showing a picture of it. Uh, that's your big boy right there. Wow. That, 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 you know, so that, well, and the, the embarrassing part of this is that the president did not address the nation. Uh, they was talk of him recording a message. But, again, he was unable to right. get on TV right. live. And address the American people. One hundred percent right, because uh, this happened unplanned. Yeah, so, so they, they so weren't. They couldn't. They couldn't yeah, get his right. meds, you know, ramped up ahead of time like they do normally. How else were you supposed to interpret this? That he can't go off something that they didn't know about and actually address it. Well, I mean, Rick, it's clear. Right. I mean, they 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 pump him up for the events they have to have him at. Mm-hmm. We've all been through this. We've seen it. This is no mystery. There. You're right. It's just. It's just. You one hundred. I can't right. believe we're at this point. You mm-hmm. know, it's just. Well, whoever is running the country also doubles down on embarrassment and is saying yeah. that we'll be no part of a retaliation, and we're telling Netanyahu he shouldn't retaliate. And um, that's embarrassing. Mm-hmm. So uh, uh, all that's embarrassing. Well, So whoever puts those statements out, that's an embarrassing statement. Yeah, well, I mean, let's, let's go back. It, let's just make an assumption here. Let's, let's just play the game. If we think the, that that Obama is still running the White House and he's still pushing for this, you know, all along he wanted a weaker Israel in the Middle East. Remember, he he worked toward that. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, he he didn't want them taken over, but he wanted a weaker Israel. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, this would kind of play down that same way. But, you know, the the Iranians uh, have been a problem and their behavior ever since their revolution back in the 70s. It uh, started with Jimmy Carter, started with taking hostages, all that stuff. And, uh, you know, this this is the first time they've directly attacked Israel, and I think that uh, Israel needs to respond. Now, I, I tend to be a bit hawkish on these things sure. because I think that uh, actually gets results. Yeah. 
You talking about uh, what what peace always follows? Yeah, because uh, in a few years, Iran is going to be nuclear, mm -hmm. and uh, you you'll have very limited options. You can't go in there and stop them. You can't go in there and damage their facilities. You can't go break all their toys like we did with Operation Praying Mantis. You know they were shut down mm -hmm. for a decade. Mm -hmm. You didn't hear nothing from them because they didn't have anything to work with. Right, and uh, that was courtesy of the U.S. military. Yes, it was. So there you go, and um, that you know that was a, a huge story over the weekend. And um, Netanyahu has said all along, and he's been very consistent: uh, we will respond, and we will not let it go, and we will do what we have to do to break people's will to continue this, whether we're in it or not. We'll be back. Rick and Bubba. Rick and Bubba. I'm fortunate enough to be with Johnny Hunt January the 22nd in America's Georgia. We'll both be together. And he makes the point, especially when it deals with churches, the fact that people are dying is all the more reason we need to be meeting and we need to be preaching because he said, um, and, uh, and and he didn't specify where that came from. He maybe just be using numbers or whatever. He said but that uh, this 350-something thousand people that have died 85% of those have gone to hell. So so does anybody care that, that you know we we always love to give you the death rate and everything but how many of the you know it's like like I always talk about this too anytime a celebrity or somebody dies there's always this panic to mm -hmm. try to find some way that we can declare that maybe they were saved and I we made the point on there why don't we start caring about that while they're still alive? Yeah. Yeah. W what if we cared about that while they were still living? That, when that, you can do something about yeah, it. Yeah, that that's probably a a time to to really make a move. So uh, for the, the churches, I mean, guys, I mean, what 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 we've been given, by the way, very clearly, by Christ, uh, to to tell the world, when people are dying, the last thing you need to do is declare that unessential. Did you love if he says, if you declare this unessential, I will just take my membership and leave this place? Yeah, that's good. If you if you declare that preaching <laughs> the gospel is essential, I'll give back my ordinance. Uh, so, um, we need more guys like that out Boy, there. Yeah. That's good stuff right there. Boy, it's straightforward. Yeah. And so, uh, so anyway, hmm. um, on that note, did you see, you know, while we were gone, the Barna survey has come out and they're saying that this online stuff, it just, well, it goes back to what the guy said when we were going into the break there about, you know, he's taking this challenge. He's going to, he's going to, he's, what he's really saying is I'm going to, I'm going to go from just being someone who may or may not be redeemed to someone who is actually a disciple of Jesus, a follower of Jesus. I'm going to start growing spiritually. It always does amaze me, and I used to be one of these men, and, and I was sickening that we demand excellence from everything in our life except our spiritual life. That really doesn't – we don't spend any time on that. Mm. We want to be sure our kids can do all these things. But then we'll, And if we have time left, we'll get to these other things. I mean, if we're really honest, it, do we consider our children to be successful people if they're devout followers of Jesus, period? Mm -hmm. I had a conversation with one of mine yesterday. I said, if you get that right, man, everything will flow. I can't, the rest of the stuff I can't control. If you get that right, everything will flow from there. And you're a success, and mm -hmm. I'm proud of you. Uh, and I'm, I'm sorry that if I've ever lived my life and you thought differently of me of how I look at success. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so anyway, so when, so, when, so when you look at these kind of things, by the way, that's a constant reminder that I need to hear because yeah, I battle that. We find ourselves wanting the world to think they're yeah, successful versus. Right. I know, I know. You know, like I said yesterday, are we ever going to get to the point that we're more concerned with with offending God than people? Yeah. But but anyway, so uh, so anyway, so in this, they said they found that they're seeing numbers like forty percent, because what's happening, they're saying the cultural Christian, and I think there's a purging going on in this country everywhere and in the church that the cultural Christian, the person that this is just kind of a part of the culture or routine or kind of a social deal, they're now having a convenient excuse to not go to church. And yeah. then they've realized, well, this ain't really a big part of our life anyway. And, and they say, you say, there's, you know, you're looking for how many people are watching online and all that kind of stuff. And they said, if the local church, because there's a connection to the local church, the local church serves a purpose that nothing else serves. And that's connecting, investing, and discipling in people. And they said this survey shows once again that the people who are disciples of Jesus have remained unchanged during this. But the ones who aren't 
have faded away. Now, so the problem is, and we know this, guys, it's the way what we do for a living now has changed. Whether we want to admit it or not, it has. And it's changed dramatically in a pretty short period of time. The Rick and Bubba radio show is really the Rick and Bubba show, the content provider. Our content goes out every day. Some of you listen to it live. Some of you listen to it on your own time. Some of you go back and grab content later. We're content providers. Now, we can say we don't believe that if you want to, but it's the truth. That, that's the way people consume content now. So the, the survey that Barna did made a great point. If the church is just going to become a content provider yeah. and, not, and not anything other than that, which that's the online-only stuff, mm-hmm. well, now people can get content anywhere. Anywhere. And I got news for you, local church. I probably can find content better than yours. Yeah. If all I'm going to do is go out and say, well, I want to hear this guy preach. Or I want... <laughs> 22 minutes past the hour of the Rick and Bubba show. Thanks for being with us. We're back. So uh, that was uh, the big story worldwide over the weekend uh, were the drones and missiles from Iran uh, uh, trying to hit uh, Israel. There's all kinds of discussion about that. I thought Bubba hit on the big one from us, and that is that our president was not able to respond because it wasn't expected and planned. That, that should be concerning. Got a big big election coming up, by the way. Uh, and uh, so anyway, but now it is what should be done. And, and Speedy was talking about even some, you know, there's some theories out there that Iran needed to save face and look like they were doing something, but they did something that they thought that Israel and, uh, and her allies could easily shoot down and protect themselves. So they get to act like that they did some sort of attack, and then Israel wasn't really harmed, so no harm, no foul. Let's all go back to our corners. Um, I don't know if that's true or not. Um, it, it is. I do know that um, if if you are, you know, you can't ignore. You know, if somebody says publicly they want to kill me and they wish I wasn't on the planet, and then every time I go to my truck they shoot at me, I tend to think. I bet they're trying to shoot me, mm-hmm. you know, and yeah, I, I get the feeling right. they don't really like me. Right. And, and and they keep coming back and going, we're, we're missing on purpose. Yeah. But you keep telling everybody you want to kill me yeah. and, and you're shooting at me. Yeah. So if you, you know, they, they've got a formula that, um, you know, that, that looks kind of odd. And I think the point that you made is the one everybody's been talking about. And it's true. If you have any sense, the only reason why Iran has not annihilated Israel and the West, if they could, is because they don't have the weapons to do it yet. But to, And they're working to get them. So why would we sit around and wait for them to get what they need to do what they say they want to do? I mean, they're building these nuclear facilities. They're trying to spin up their own yellow cake uranium as we speak. And uh, it's just a matter of time. Do they have some type of crude nuclear weapon? Mm-hmm. It's, it's a lot like North Korea. I mean, we, we have to deal with them differently because they do have some crude nuclear weapons now. Well, and it, and what what if you get uh, an Iran uh, an Iran that has nuclear weapons, and they're still firing at Israel? What do you do then? Yeah, you you mentioned it talking about Obama. If he truly is still running the country in one way, shape, or form, I know this man that we have parading around as a mascot isn't. But uh, if, if, if it is, because of just common sense, I mean, but if Obama still is, you remember we always talked about this when, when you mentioned a weaker Israel, when he would deal with, with people like Iran, either he was maniacally deviant and had some bizarre worldview that was dangerous to us, or he was incredibly naive and not very wise. Because this notion that if somebody says... I want to kill you, and I want to kill whoever represents your life that would be Israel. And you say, okay, instead of me saying I'm not going to let you do that, I'm going to make it make it unable for you to do this, what if I gave you the money so you could get everything you needed to do that? Would that make you like me and then you wouldn't do it? Mm-hmm. I mean, that was really our policy. Well, you, you uh, remember we gave them, what, how many billions of dollars? We had frozen right. over all their past uh, uh, things they'd been up to. And, you know, I guess the people thought, well, this will buy peace. Well, no, it's only bought more because they went out and bought weapons. But think about the lunacy. What you're really saying is the people said, I would kill you if I had the money or the weapons to do it. And we said, well, if we give you the money so you can get the weapons to do it, will you just not do it because that was nice of us? (laughs) Do you realize how stupid that is? 
I mean, well, I know it's. it's I, I don't. The, I don't know what. I don't. The, the enemies don't see that as kindness. They no. see that as weakness. No, and we've we've had to, as I mentioned, we had Operation Praying Mantis once upon a time, and we it went, worked. We went and broke all their stuff, and, and it uh, worked. And uh, it took them a while to to rebuild. So, but you'll have to deal with it again. I mean, they they've been this way since the seventies, since they yeah. overthrew the Shah, mm-hmm. and uh, went back to uh, you know this uh, this form of government they have now. And uh, this is old Persia, by the way. Mm-hmm. They're not, uh, you know, as we've been educated, these are not Arabs by the typical name. They they are Persians. They are separate. And uh, they uh, it's the old Persian Mede Empire, you know. Yeah, so. They, uh, they've been around a long yeah, time. And I have had some people that were kind of in the camp, what Speedy was talking about, off air, that are military experts that says that praying mantis was so effective that Iran wants to walk a line that they don't have that happen to them again. Now, apparently, they picked the right administration because this, <laughs> this administration is saying we wouldn't do praying madness if our life depended on it, you know, uh, or whatever it be called this yeah. time. But you know what yeah. I mean? Uh, there'll be no response from us. I love telling them there'll be no response from us. Hey, great. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, and then and then encouraging who they attack not to respond either. Can you imagine somebody walking or calling you on the phone because it wouldn't come there and your house is being bombed and they said, no, nah, I'd rather you not shoot back. Uh, yeah, that's great for you, but I mean, yeah. we're 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 right here. Did you see the pictures of the beach? Well, it's they, ruined our beach afternoon. There's a they, missile laying out there. Yeah, <laughs> they, and and not only there, you know, in the Strait of is it Hormuz over there? They, you know, twenty percent of our oil goes through there every day, and it's been a problem. I mean, they grabbed a ship Saturday too. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you saw that, um, and and that's constantly been a problem over there. So you know. We're, we're going to have to deal with this one way or the other. It's just when and how and, and most effective way to do it. They're, they they don't seek peace. They don't want peace. That's not going to happen. You mm. can't you can't give them money and they'll quit. Mm-hmm. You can't give them this or that. They're going to they're going to keep going. And then when they get a nuclear weapon, they'll use it. Well, like and, we then, s- and then then what are we going to do? Well, like we said, when you give them money, all they say is our narrative hasn't changed. But thank you. That'll help. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, Appreciate it. it. Yeah, they but, probably mm-hmm. laughed all the way home. Oh, of course I they guess. did. Well, I, I, y'all probably had the same experience. A, a lot of families at church yesterday were saying, "Hey, our our sons are being uh, being alerted, and some are on ships headed out there." So we do have a presence there, uh, and uh, just about everybody that we go to church with that have uh, sons that are serving in the military. They said, "Hey, they all went on alert, and some of them are are headed out." Yeah, and uh, you know, I I know the U.S. helped to shoot some of that down, but I I really haven't heard any details what ships were involved right, or yeah. how they did it. I mean, uh, Israel has the Iron Dome, which is uh, they actually have three levels of defense. Uh, I love I love the uh, David Sling. The David go. Sling is the second is the is the deeper <laughs> level, and then they've got one more past it. I yeah, can't remember the name, I can't of, think it. The name of it. Either. Uh, but uh, I, I, yeah, David Sling, that's a good one. That <laughs> is a good one. So yeah, I I don't know how much damage was actually done. I don't know if it was meant to be more symbolic or not, but, uh, you know, again, uh, the fact that they would do it. Well, to me, where they're naive, especially with Netanyahu, is it's like me saying that guy over there is my enemy and everybody thinks I'm scared of him. I'm going to go punch him, but I promise I won't punch him hard. Yeah. yeah and maybe right. he won't punch me back. Right. Yeah. I, <laughs> probably <laughs> means that they'll come again next time. Right. I don't think I'd count on that, would you? No, no bullies usually don't quit. Uh, bottom of the hour. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. This guy, teacher, I want to, I want to, you know, I want to do this. Now you've just entered the arena of content. Mm-hmm. You're not providing anything else that everybody provides. Yeah. So you're not, you cease to be a local church then. You're just a content provider. And again, I'm not talking about shut-ins. We that's been around as long as, and yeah, I'm glad we right. have more stuff. But but I but I talked about this. But even a shut-in gets a visit from who? The local, the local church. church. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But but it, but if you're out there saying I'm just choosing the online, a lot of people are using it as an excuse to kind of disconnect from the local church. Yeah. And I think the local church is extremely naive that that's not happening in huge numbers. Yeah. Now, I'm okay with somebody saying, well, maybe it's a purging. That's fine. But if you if you don't see it that way, you know, to me, I think, you know, that it, that's fine. But back to what Johnny Hunt just said, but what if somebody was going to come to Christ and now they've become a content grabber 
that says, well, today I meant to watch the service, but, you know, we got up late and we started having breakfast. And I, oh, I got those dishes I need to do. And, and I did look when I was when we were having to watch it at home only. It wasn't the same thing. No, it's not. Mm-mm. It wasn't the same thing. I, hey, I, I glad we could do it. I was impressed with how we do it. My son is in that part of, of the church who provides those kind of things. Now, he's mainly there to do the stuff for the, the service where you're in the room. But but those things are part of it, and I'm glad we got it. But that, that never replaces – that that turns into just, uh, hey, we'll get to it if we can. It's, it ceases mm-hmm. to be a priority mm-hmm. at that point. Right, mm-hmm. and you're not really paying attention, you yeah. know, and, and, and exactly. that, that kind of stuff. Because you can do other things. Mm-hmm. You, when, other you go, when you make the decision to go to church okay. and it's a priority – you're there for one thing, right? And that's mm-hmm. to worship. Yeah. So they're saying you, that the uh, in the mornings at, at home, just like you said, it's yeah. easy to go back there. Well, I can watch this while I do the dishes. Yeah. And before you fold know, the laundry. Yeah. Well, and they're just saying that what what's happening is the numbers for church attendance are diminishing greatly. Yeah. And 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 because especially if you're a cultural Christian, because someone who who is at that point where they've said I'm gonna be a follower of Christ, not just a believer of Christ. I want to be discipled. I want to grow. And once that clicks and that becomes not something you say but something you actually do, and I've been on that process, trust me, still still learning. But at, at that point, you are going to grow spiritually no matter what anybody else does for you. But, but until you're there, speaking to my own life, until mm-hmm. you're there, if, that's, if there's not some structure that's getting you there, yeah. you don't ever get there. Yeah. And the longer you wait to go back, the harder it's going to be to it, go back. Because I know me. It's just like yeah. me when I start trying to do things, do a little better with my weight and try to address what was sin in my life, which was it was the way I was approaching it. People were like, well, you know, why don't you just get you a gym at home? Well, I'll tell you why. <laughs> because I won't use it. Right. <laughs> you know, so, so what I do is I report somewhere that has structure yeah. that says here's what we're doing today. Now, I still have to decide to go there, Okay. But when I get there, there's no me going, I think that's good. Mm-hmm. So and that's the reason why I like, it's changed my life dramatically. I like, and I never wanted to do it until God made me. That's why I like teaching. That's why I like today's Wednesday Bible study. Yeah. It forces me to grow, and I have grown leaps and bounds in my knowledge of and knowledge about Scripture and God, I've learned so much because if I don't, then I let everybody down. Mm -hmm. And so people say, well, you need to take a break on that. Well, one of the main reasons, and I'd like to say it's about the people, (laughs) it's really about my growth. (laughs) If I I stop doing these things, then I know me, you know, and so it has helped me grow leaps and bounds. So if if we get to the point where church just becomes an online-only experience, the surveys that just came out, are showing it's disastrous, and 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 if and, and people's eternity. Isn't it interesting how we take something that that leads to someone's eternal damnation or eternal life, and we treat it as the thing that we worry about the least, our last, mm-hmm. and and eternity's riding on. Yeah. Fifteen minutes to the top of the hour. We'll be right back. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Five minutes past the hour, the Rick and Bubba Show. Relief Factor has been locking arms with the Rick and Bubba Show for for years, uh, and we love this product. It is an all-natural, hopefully, solution for you 
uh, for the aches and pains of life. Um, a lot of this over-the-counter stuff never designed to be used every single day, popping those pills like you're taking vitamins. That's not what they were designed to do. Now, you start getting into the opioids and pain management there, Lord help. And I don't know the last time that you... Um, uh, went for physical therapy for a long period of time. The bill that comes with that, that's a doozy. But but so anyway, what if you could take a product and, and it do the job naturally mm -hmm. and you would join the 70%. Anybody know what 70% of a million is? 70% uh, of a million is 700,000. Yeah, that's a pretty right, easy one right friend. there, isn't it? it so, is. He I might figure that one out we, with my shoe on. We can do that one. Now, we, we, you know, we may not can pronounce words, but we can do yeah. simple tens, can't we? That's right. Uh, so power of tens. That yeah, so anyway, that's a lot of folk. That's how many people, good like myself, man. that took Relief Factor and did the quick starter pack. and it, there That's was, a good many. The results were so good, they just kept on doing it. And and, and hopefully you can join us, okay? Get yours now, 1995. Uh, and uh, they'll send a three-week quick start kit. Now, you'll know inside three weeks whether it works or not, and hopefully you'll be like the majority of us, and it will work, and voila, there is your answer. Uh, so coming up, Bubba, as has been tradition, do you know if they've done it every year that you and I have been a show, three on a string, tax day? Pretty much every year. I mean, it, it started way, way, way back in the Gadsden days. So yeah. I bet Bobby Horton could answer that question. Yeah, Bobby Horton. You, you know, Bobby Horton. I saw, is, I, saw right Bobby, in I saw Bobby picking last <laughs> night in Columbia. Yes, you did, and I didn't see you because you left for it. Well, that was by that was by design. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so any, <laughs> I was afraid that the the guy with me would have thought I knew you. Uh, and uh, so, but anyway, the. Uh, uh, but what an incredible experience that was. I'll talk more about that. But, you know, you by the way, you're watching Hall of Famers walk. Yeah, I know they are. The Alabama Music Hall of Famers. Check is Zeb coming, too? Yeah. Is, uh, he, yeah, by the way, well, I'd never seen that. But anyway, Jerry Ryan, <laughs> Bobby Horton, Brad Ryan, and Andy McGinnis, three on a string. They are, are four in, to make three. Four That's to right. make three. They are in the Alabama Music Hall of Fame. And so they have I'm been. I'm just glad to know you. Me, too. They uh, And, of course, Brad, as you know. Uh, and his wife and brother, the Rick and Bubba theme, they created that uh, the first year of the show. Uh, so uh, there's a lot of tie uh, uh -oh. to the show with, with Three on a String, and they perform every tax day that we can remember. If there's an exception, we don't know it. And they will be performing coming up next hour. Uh, Rick, uh, too, I don't, I don't know if you caught any of it yesterday, but I, I had a good time watching. I know that y'all said so bad. <laughs> Watching uh, the end of the Masters yesterday uh, after uh, they had some crazy weather earlier in the week. Had a beautiful day yesterday. And uh, Scotty Scheffler uh, pulled out the win. And, uh, boy. Uh, he's, uh, he's a crowd favorite, and uh, it are you, was fun to watch. Are you mad because the Cajun didn't win? Which one? DeChambeau, ain't that your Oh, um, <laughs> If he's not a Cajun, he ought to be. Well, he he's, to be. he's from Oklahoma. He he's not uh, Cajun? No. That's funny. How well, can you be named that well, and not be family, Cajun? Uh, family uh, it's kind of like Jeff Lopez. Well, yeah, you know, really, that you know he's uh, he's quite a character. And, um, he, you know, I love his innovations. He, he actually <laughs> came to the tournament with irons that were illegal and they were they they judged him to be legal before he started, right? Yeah, right before they, they started. And then he go, then he goes out and gets a big lead, you know. So, but he fell off toward the end a little bit. But right. uh, well, he he tied, he he's always fun. Let me tell you yeah. what's funny. If y'all y'all could literally hear my conversations, and and God love Helmsy and Speedy, they finally have just given up on trying to discuss golf with me <laughs> because they don't want to be frustrated. But this is how it literally goes with me. Okay. Hey, did you hear, did you, would you hear who won the Masters? I said, okay, who was it? Was it the Cajun guy? And they're like, Cajun guy? I said, the guy Bubba likes has a Cajun name. And they said, that, that was what you gave him. Yeah. Now, I do have his clubs that are all the same. But then length. listen to this. And I don't never use them, but I got them. So here it is. This was my next line. This was all, you know, this was all after yesterday, after whatever. And I said, all right, was it Tiger Woods? And they said, no, Tiger made the cut, but he didn't win, which was a huge accomplishment. And I said, okay, was it the guy who loves Jesus? They said, yeah, that's the guy who won. That's, that's it. it. <laughs> Sorry, hey, that's it. That's I didn't it. know his name. I just said the guy loves Jesus. That's it. And, I think uh, they Tiger said, yep, that's the one. 60th, wasn't it? He was, didn't uh, I see him at 60th? I think he was actually the last of the guys that made the cut. Yeah. It's, it's Good. Big accomplishment. A huge accomplishment. Is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Greg, don't yeah. be like that. Yeah. No, it, it really is. And there was some special, and Greg makes fun <clears> of this, <throat> um, there was some special moments. We have come to the conclusion, or I have, Speedy's there too. He's finally at a point where he's okay with just being out there mm -hmm. instead of thinking he's right. going to win. Right. And there was something happening Sunday morning that was pretty special. 
with him and his son on the driving range. Oh, I heard and, you talking about that. In the and it was yeah. one of those things where it, it made you think, okay, this is why he's still doing this. Yeah. He didn't have to do this. He didn't have to be putting himself through this. But his son, who during COVID started really getting into golf, and so, uh, and he's a really good player. And now he's able to be, you know, if if I'm Tiger Woods, first of all, and I can go to the Masters anytime I want to, why wouldn't I go and let my son experience this and be on the grounds with me? And, oh, yeah. and so I, I think that's what this is about more than anything at this point. Yeah. I, does he scream at him like Tiger's dad did him? Oh, right. uh, I don't know. <laughs> no, but, no. I don't know, but his, name, his son's to name's to Charlie, though. Yeah. Um, Yes. There's a there's a story that y'all have. <laughs> the um, Joe Jackson of God. <laughs> if you'll if you'll flip to like page three of the story that you have, there was a meme that started out uh, oh, this yeah, past weekend this, where yeah. he went to shake a man's hand, but the man was behind the pine tree, yeah, so it looks that. like the pine tree shaking his hand. It looks it's like pretty funny. Tree, Rick him trees on puffing it, stuff. You yeah, it's oh, pretty yeah. funny. I forgot. I was scared. Good stuff. Scared me. I was terrified yeah. of those trees. Yeah, I heard y'all heard y'all talking about that. Hilarious. But I will tell you this. I guess was that Vern? Somebody tell me that was Vern. Uh, that Lungus. was behind the tree. It's as big as Vern. No, it that's may, not Vern. I don't think I don't it think is. Would Vern. he have been in the booth You know, somewhere? it may have been. I don't think that was Vern. Or maybe Vern. Now, I will say there was a – now, the, it, it could be, but there was a special moment where he did go up to Vern and tell him thank you for everything. You think that – did I just see a cane? I, I don't know. Yeah. Was that yeah. a cane? Yes. It was Vern. Vern was on the 16th, so I don't know if he was broadcasting behind a tree, but it might have been. Or in this case, maybe it was It might have been. <laughs> hey Rick, that's good. Look, check the watch. I got it. See Rick. if you can I identify that watch. It looks like a lady's watch, by the way. Oh wow! Well, he she's may. got big old forearms. He just needs your glasses yeah. to go with it. Yeah. It, it could have been that Ricky Tidwell's mama. <laughs> it could have been. Okay. It could have been Vern's wife. She didn't Ooh. have forearms like that. Well, I've never seen her. I've never, oh, seen, I've never right. seen her forearms. She have you seen her forearms? Do reverse curls. She was a raw who, who was that? raised on the farm. I had mean, a tattooed on her forearm. That looked more like Steve Garvey. Than, <laughs> yeah. And does it Steve say it's Vern in the story? Yeah. I, I don't know. Sure Somebody does. told me that. I don't it know does. It's true. Yeah, it's Vern. It's Vern. <laughs> it's Vern. <laughs> You're right. So, All right. so now they, Vern they, has tiny little look, forearms. Look, it is Vern. Yeah, it no, it's Vern. not. That's a different Listen, that was not that's Vern. Vern. Woods it? was shaking hands with is... legendary U.S. commentator Vern Lundquist, okay. who yeah. was set to hang up his mic after this match. Okay. Yeah. That's who it was. Pee in I do know he went over to him and said thank you for everything. Uh, I'm because, like, he was Vern you know, broadcasting from the tree? What is he doing? I don't know what happened Yes, Greg, that's where they put him now. No. Hey, he was at the forefront all week. It was great. It was great going down memory lane. With it says it soon became clear. Okay. That's who he was shaking right. hands. With. Everybody okay. knows. That's, that's good. So, but it looked like he was shaking hands with a tree. Is what <laughs> it, it was. Does. Shaking <laughs> hands with danger. Or as I told Greg, in this case, it would have been fern language. Oh, <laughs> okay, Rick. There he goes. <laughs> So, just good. Somebody said, "Is it a woman? The forearms like Burns got? Uh, you gonna say a man wears that watch?" <laughs> well, now see, see, now you're being mean about. <clears throat> yeah. Well, look at the. Is that, that a man's watch? like a woman's watch. Hey, no. Is that a man's watch? Is this watch? two different handshakes we're looking? See, at? It, could it, be. it could be. Could and be. I, 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 was Hamzy, that picture with, a few minutes ago look, legit sh- from this year? Because yeah, that the, was Vern, but it wasn't by the. Tree. See, that's a di- okay. Right. There's a second hand that was on the left hand. That is a woman. It was Vern. Everybody in here owes me up. Apology. That's Vern. Me now. Hold on, that was well, not a woman, y'all. So that's, that's not a woman. And then a woman's hand comes out, right? The, now he was with a second different person. No, I think it's the same. Oh person. my gracious! I think it's both. Call the and ask him. All right, l- let's see the picture of him <laughs> shaking hands with Vern. See if we can identify that arm and that watch. Yeah, maybe there's another picture. He's not <laughs> behind a tree. Yeah, well, that was that was the uh, the other one. Well, yeah, he, he told him he had to leave and go straight to Charlie. <laughs> yeah, I'm well, getting they, a bunch of texts they, saying it was Vern. Yeah, now, they, again, now that, a black there were, arm. There were a couple shirt, of times when to see the other arm. Uh, what about that ring he's wearing? He always wears that ring. The, was it on the? There was a couple of times on the broadcast where they would go to him on the 16th and he'd go. Behind the tree right now. No, that's, I can't, I can't I, I, I see. Big pine tree. I can't really see. You know, one fell last year. Yeah, yeah. Hey, what are we going to do with, with, with Vern at this? Put him behind that pine tree. Yeah, yeah give him my mic. Set him behind that. Pine you know tree. what he's doing next? What he's Can about to start calling games look, with Jackson look, there's State. The ring. <laughs> there's the ring. <laughs> that's Vern. That's Vern. That is Vern. That's Vern. Where's the ladies behind the tree? If he's doing Jackson State, <laughs> you don't give me enough. Of that. Oh wait, I think <laughs> that was a good <laughs> one. I mean, we needed we owe you an apology. that was a Let's good one, honest, but we, we were we were hung up in the ring. It, I, I we needed a minute. It yeah. looks like a female <laughs> watch. It, it's it's a it's an elderly man's watch. You know, they'll wear those. You don't. And think about it. You know, Tiger's not going to stop and give a full handshake to just anybody. It had to be somebody. Of, of yeah, some type yeah. of significance. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Don't you yeah. agree? Yeah. Yep. I agree.
Because he ain't known for his overwhelming pop, uh, personality. No. And, listen, and if you want to hear the story behind the handshake, RBU with Vern, was, uh, he, he explains a lot of the behind-the-scenes <laughs> stories to some of his more famous calls. We could, not this one. Uh, no, Great. I mean, the, the call that he made for Tiger, didn't he discuss that? He did. Yeah. He did. Yeah, he's going to be Adler. great calling Jacksonville State softball game. <laughs> Adler. Helmsy, that's that's gold. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Uh, let's go to uh, Scott. Scott, welcome to the Rick and Bubba yeah, show. Yes, Scott. Yes, yeah, Scott. Uh, good morning. Hey, buddy. Um. Uh, now that the wonderful folks over in Georgia have handed full Democratic control to Joe Biden, Chuck Schumer, and Nancy Pelosi, is it time for me to panic? Well, well, think about this. They've got what they were looking for. Joe Biden is now in the way. Think about that. If you're attached attached to Joe Biden, don't boy, so you, you, mm. you, there could be some sadness around the corner. You, he, get, you get Kamala in there and... Uh, Boy, the uh, they got two years to do whatever they want to do at whatever cost, and it could be very difficult to undo it. What you're going to see, I think, if you're right, Bubba, I think you're going to see them. They will now join us on being concerned about Joe Biden's I, mental ability and faculties to be able to run the free oh, I hate yeah. to say this. Not, not as too a, quick. It'll take a minute. Oh, yeah. As a, as a conservative in this country, we have to now circle the wagons around Joe Biden. That's what's bad. Yeah. You're right. We got to protect. He's our only. He is our His only thing, thing close got. to a circuit breaker out there. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> I knew you'd love it. How, how you feel about that? <laughs> well, at least that mean guy's not in there anymore. Yeah, the tweeter. <laughs> yeah, Orange Man bad. <laughs> hey, uh, Orange Man may be bad. 401k did pretty good last yeah. year. Stock market loved him. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so Scott, to your question though, there's never a time to panic. Concern, yes. 15 minutes to the top. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba.
celebrating our 30th anniversary, working our way through year 31, and so many traditions, uh, and one of them today is tax day. Uh, so if you are, are writing the biggest check to the federal government today, you'll get $100. Uh, yeah, I mean, breaking the bank for you, take off some of that pressure. So start emailing those. The, now, you have to be writing the check today. This is not... Not total. Not, this is just today. The, 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 the check you're having to send, and you had to put in the mail postmark by today. Uh, so send that to speedy at rickandbubba.com, and we'll let you know where that's pacing. And, uh, and also, would you let him know, uh, if, we, you know if we get toward the end of the live show, you'd be okay with us contacting you and I, us asking, asking you where this burden came from and all that? Now, if you don't want to, you don't have to. Uh, but if you're willing to do that, let him know that as well. Uh, so you see the uh, the Hall of Famers themselves, uh, three on a string. They're putting their stuff together. Super Tom, the engineer, ready to mix their glorious sound. And that'll be coming up uh, next hour. We'll ha we'll have the ta the tax on, but also they'll 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 pick and jam for us a little bit too. You know, it's a lot of pressure on Super Tom. Mm -hmm. uh, you okay. know, mixing for Hall of Famers. That that's not. You know, it's one thing. Tom's up to the challenge. It's one but there's thing. Still a lot of pressure. It's one thing to set up America's favorite house band, Rock and Roll City. Yeah, yeah. But but when you're when you're talking about Hall of Famers right now, and and on that note, you never know where you will see them. Now, you and I have been studying, you know, a couple of mysteries throughout this, and and these are people that we have known for a long time, and then people we've just been introduced to, and they're mysteries. Right. And one of them is what is Andy Andrews talking about? Right. Okay. Right. That's and, one. And we love him, okay? I mean, I love yeah, him. but it's kind of. A I wish mystery. I was hanging you and out I, with him on his dock today. Yeah, you and I will sometimes sit down and say, "Let's review," and we'll we'll trade notes on where we thought he was going, and and did he ever get to the point? You know that kind of stuff. The other, I one, thought it was me. Yeah, the other one is, and I didn't even feel any more informed after the podcast. Did you? What does Sean of the South actually do? Yeah, and and yeah. so he he writes Sean of the South, very popular person, very popular, wonderful, wonderful guy. Uh, incredible story. You've uh, seen him on, what's he, Alpha? Yeah, he yeah, Alpha yeah. Commercial. But he's also yeah. become a, a, a prolific writer. Mm -hmm. I never used the word pro prolific before. I didn't, I didn't handle it real well, did I? It's a new day. Yeah, he, he is a, he's a, a well-known writer. Mm -hmm. He is what I would call, what was the guy, uh, Louis, Louis Grizzard right. type commentator. Right. right. Okay. Um, he, he does shows that just when I thought I had them figured out, I was wrong. And that didn't help, you know. Yeah, I, mean? I thought he did like stand-up comedy. Well, you know why I thought that because the per, the, the the person who took the went to the, we went to his show last night, uh, in, in Alabama, the people we went with had already seen him, and we said, "What can we expect?" And, and that's they, what they said. and they said he told stories about ninety percent, and then picked about ten percent. Well, when I went to this last night, it wasn't that. Mm. I, it, it it was a different show. And so I, I'm sitting there, and there's a bunch of chairs out there, and there's a drum set, and there's a stand-up bass, and I thought, well, and somebody, comes Bobby I thought, well, somebody means business. And all of a sudden, from backstage comes Bobby Horton <laughs> and Brad Ryan, to which I do that thing that we all do. I look down at the people with us, going, "I know them. Mm -mm. I know them. They're in the hall of fame." Yeah, and, and so, and and then when I realized that uh, it was uh, who was with us is a huge history buff. And he immediately knew Bobby's work from all the historic movies and documentaries that you've written music for. And he's like, I know him. I said, but I knew him first. Mm -hmm. And I was like, but I knew him when I was a kid. And now people are like, well, shh. You know, we're going back. and We're trying to see who knows Bobby the best and, and is who's the most familiar with him. I saw Bobby in the credits of something. Oh, you'll see Bobby a, anywhere. A history you'll see Bobby anywhere, especially Cracker Barrel. <laughs> and so, uh, so anyway, I, I was... Um, so then Brad comes out, and then I'm like, he did the Rick and Bubba. <laughs> and, and people are really like, hey, can y'all run the resume of who y'all know on the stage later? Mm -hmm. But I will tell you, I don't know I don't know what I experienced. I just know I liked it. Uh, this one was Shaun of the South was not what I was told I was going to see. This one was 90% picking and about 10% storytelling and, and comedy. And, and it was some of the finest fiddlers and pickers that that I've ever had the pleasure of sitting and listening to all at the same time, uh, and and a lot of music from the 1800s and just classic stuff and the stories behind them and um, you know it was all going well till Sean brought out the accordion that 
then it kind of, that was an uncomfortable moment for all of us, you know, because the accordion it's is a, a divisive it's, yeah. instrument. You yeah, know, it's a strange, it's, it's, it's yeah. a strange instrument. That and, and a bagpipe. And apparently Sean had told his wife he would never play it again. And he did. And, and, but she was out in the lobby doing merch. So I don't know that she didn't know about it. I think it's a very cheerful instrument, though. I mean, it makes me think of dancing and things. Well, you know? yeah, I tried to make him look cool. I sent Adler this picture. I said, send this to your wife today because he was talking about how his wife didn't think it's cool. He thinks it's a little geeky to play the accordion. And uh, and so I tried to take a picture of him like you would a guy slaying on guitar. Right. And, and so n there's he <laughs> and Brad. But look, at there's a one that's more close up. Did I see the one that's a little more close up of him? And uh, and that was that's him and Brad playing. But you know how you, there's always these shots of guitar players and they're like this, you know, and all that. Look, yeah. and I said, hey, send that to your wife. See, she thinks she a geek. Yeah. yeah. Look, I, I I I've got I've got him just wailing on the accordion. I didn't like a guitar player, but yet yeah, it's an accordion. Oh, yeah. And uh, look at him. If Eddie Van Halen had played an accordion. That's it. That's what it would look like. And, so I, and had a awesome beard and mustache. Yeah. I should send that on to your wife. See what she thinks about that. She'll be mm -hmm. she'll be thankful who she's married to. And uh, there, here's my husband playing the accordion, but uh, and he told you know a lot of funny accordion jokes you know which were were all very funny, uh, but I I don't know what it I carries saw. me back to Lawrence Well yeah. and the music maker and 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 I and I experienced these incredible you know, I already knew that Bobby and Brad were highly talented by the way I saw Brad's character Zeb I heard that yeah I have not that's the first time I've seen Zeb live I've heard the history of this character. And uh, and he got big laughs. Now you got big laughs. You did get big laughs. Uh, let me say the did y'all lose one by the way? I don't see as many. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. So so we have a. But I also got to see a guy that I I have heard about, but never seen. Alan Tobert. I I don't even know what to say about Alan. Uh, it's like everybody who was there when he began to wail on the guitar. It's like we all begin to wonder how we were picked to be so fortunate. Uh, to see him play, and and apparently his dad um, is a a bluegrass legend. Glenn Tolbert is that is that I, I didn't know Brad sitting down now. That Glenn Talbert. Talbert. How you say it? Talbert. And Glenn. Now is this Brad or Zeb we're talking no, to? No, no. Right, Brad. Okay. <laughs> right, right. Well, are you, I mean, eventually I would see it. I can't yeah, keep it in yeah, now. Well, maybe maybe that'll come up. You know, down the road somewhere. Okay, okay. okay. But yeah. the great Glenn Talbert is from Aniana. He's, mm -hmm. he's passed now. But this is Alan. His his son. Unbelievable! And they are phenomenons on the guitar. I, I, I literally <clears throat> can you pass my... that along genetically? Do you know? Is I, that, I, or I guess. you think he was just around it? And just around it. it since the time he, you know, when, was when in we, the crib. When we left last night, and uh, the the couple that went with us, I, I thought I thought it was summed up. He, he the husband said, "I can't think of a better way to spend." A Sunday afternoon than what we just got to do. It was great fun. Yeah, great fun. It, it was incredible. And I, I was shocked to see you there. I said, who's that normal-looking, regular-sized <laughs> man? <laughs> <laughs> right. We'll be back. Three on the string coming up next. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. The Rick and Bubba Show, 866-WE-BE-BIG is our number, and we thank you for being with us. This hour starts with a national anthem. Rick Burgess, friends, neighbors, associates everywhere, welcome into the little party we call Rick and Bubba. How are you, sir? Well, I, I, I'm fired up and ready to go. I want to tell you something I've been meaning to say uh, for a couple of days here. <laughs> here we go. No, no, this is this is totally just... It, it has, I, ain't, I ain't buying it. <laughs> no, I see it shiny not, moving right out there outside that no, stick, but I, I ain't going to buy it. I promise it's nothing like that. I promise. I, I'm not going to mm -hmm. do, do, do anything like that. Uh, I will laugh. I will start with the Babylon Bee uh, headline today. Ignorant Republicans riot and don't even get any big screen TVs. Uh, so, so anyway, Not one TV. But no, I want to. I've been wanting to bring this up because I know we got a lot to cover, and, and we'll get in all of it, and we'll talk to you. We'll hash out some old. Uh, well, it's not old news; it's still going. 
Uh, but we'll talk about other things today. We spent the entire show on the state of America yesterday, or most of it. Today we'll spend some of the show on it. Uh, it, it you don't just act like it's not happening and not talk about it. And we, we will talk about it. But but I, this has nothing to do with that. I've just been meaning to talk to you all about this. So here at the Broadcast Plaza and Teleport, and I, I love some of the changes they've made here. I think the place looks nicer. It, look, it looks good. Two things I forgot to tell you. Our first day back, did you notice that somebody pulled the world-famous – Throw detergent in the fountain. Deal. Oh, did they? Yes, Already? they did. Yep. They did. Yep. I, I, dro- saw it. I drove up, and there's just suds going everywhere. Uh, okay, I uh, so, think Adler did it. So anyway, that was that was one. But, or let me ask you, is that some move to keep it from freezing? Well, I thought I thought it could have been one of two. Maybe they wanted some kind of snowy look around the tree yeah. because it did kind of look like that. Yeah, so it's either that, and of course, <laughs> as, as I looked into it, actually, it was actually Antifa pretending to be kids. That's right. right. But, 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 but That's yeah, two already. Yeah, so, oh, so, but, but, but they've cleaned it up, <laughs> right. so, which makes me think it was your first yeah. thought. All right, so now here's the second thing. The Christmas tree is still blazing out here. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And, and we I have, say leave her up. Well, her up. we have a beautiful tree here. Mm-hmm. It's fantastic. Mm-hmm. I love our tree. Big as a tower. It's it, Man, it's a nice one. So we've talked about this. For, and, I, and, you know, this is one of those things kind of like uh, St. Patrick's Day when Bubba and I are told over and over again what is the the, the foundation and the origin of this and we never can remember, uh, you know, and all mm-hmm. this kind of stuff. And, and so, so – I think we talked about this before, but we just don't remember it. So what we talk about on the show every year is when is too early to put up your Christmas decorations. Okay. Yeah. And then we get into this thing of leaving them up and all that. So, you know, that's a pretty common topic. Mm-hmm. You know, coming. had this discussion with my kids yesterday right. because of just looking around the city at, at things. So this year we did something that we normally don't do. And that is, we got it up not too early, not too late, and it was all gone on like the twenty sixth. Okay. Wow. Yeah, twenty six, twenty seven. Um, tree out, lights down. Wow. Let's go. So, so, in, and that, that's never happened. Okay. So anyway, and I kind of like that. Yeah. Because I like it's over. Because I like the build up to it. So I started researching the twelve days of Christmas. Oh yeah, that song. Did you know that we do it wrong? Yeah, yeah it's mm-hmm. on the backside. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. the backside. It goes yeah. into January. You're not even supposed to start till Christmas. That's yeah. why you right. see you in these movies, oh, Rick, uh, where they wait until Christmas Eve and Christmas to start decorating. It, it would be yeah. like having yeah. a wedding ceremony. You don't do any, you're not supposed to do any front. Right, it, it, right. It's, right. It, yeah, it would be like a ceremony. It would be like a party after the ceremony. Mm-hmm. The ceremony's Correct. Christmas. Yeah, yeah. we're supposed yeah. to say it's here <laughs> and then celebrate it for twelve days after. Right. Bingo. Right. right. You remember uh, Ralph and them are putting yeah. the Christmas tree That's up right. when he gets that award. Yeah. 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 Can, can I yeah. tell so you? Th- can th- I tell you something? Yeah. So, so you watch I got that. news for you. We're up way early. We are. If you've got it up before Thanksgiving, you're. I mean, you're not just kind of off. You're way off. Once again, America has taken this and, and made it our own. Right, yeah. It really has. I mean, yeah. as far as decorations go. Yeah. So I mean, we're really, like, this is how yeah. we'll do it. We're supposed <laughs> to still be celebrating Christmas now and not to have really celebrated it before now. Correct. So I, I, I'd, I'd forgotten about it. And I think we've discussed that probably we, just we, forgotten we, about mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Well, you know I, what we did at our house? I begged Betty to leave it up because I didn't get to have Christmas so I could st- sit in there and look <laughs> at it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and, uh, well, see, the reason, and the reason why I, I feel the way I do – is that and I enjoy this. Don't misunderstand me. I enjoy the build up to Christmas. Now it's not historically correct, but I like the build up uh, of Christmas. But it's such a build up and it's such a long build up. Once chocolate biscuits are done, and once the air hockey tournament is over, and and everything's kind of cleaned up, mm-hmm. I'm kind of done with it. Yeah, I, I'm kind of ready for because now I've got the dread of all this getting cleaned up and all this going on and scheduling this and putting all this up, and it really couldn't have been much better for us this year. We we went hunting, and lights got taken down, trees got taken back out, mm-hmm. Sherry put every, into everything in the boxes. So we went hunting for two days, came back, and it was all gone. Yeah. Rick, so, I'm going to tell you if I, if I, I kinda, ever – I kind of like that, but I yeah. realize that's wrong. I should have well, just now been celebrating. <laughs> if, if I ever build again. Mm-hmm. We're going to put a giant walk-in closet in the living room den area that mm-hmm. we can just roll the Christmas tree into. Yeah. Now, we do that from the garage right. now, and it's a lifesaver. Mm-hmm. 
It is uh, six minutes now past the hour from the Big Boy Studio. We are here. Another Rick and Bubba show on another day, on another week. Uh, thankful that you have uh, decided to spend some time with us. Speedy, the real Greg Burgess, Helmsy, Eddie Van Adler, all here. Welcome back. Bill Bubba Bus. Rick, glad to be here and thank all of you for making us part of your day for 30 plus years. Uh, let, let me tell you something. Uh, we we have um, one thing, Speedy, I need from you. Where where will everybody be? Uh, it should be the next. Uh, because I, the, I look for that familiar uh, and I don't see it. Uh, is this it right here? Mm-hmm. Okay, testing one, two. Okay. So uh, we, uh, we have uh, Super Tom, the engineer, here today. It has been a tradition and Brad Ryan is here with the Hall of Fame three on the string, along with Andy McGinnis and Bobby Horton. Uh, so, Brad, you we were trying. I know you know Rick and Bubba history pretty well because you're such a part of it. There you go. Uh, did do you have y'all done this pretty much all thirty years? Is this is this your thirty first time as to far do this? As I could remember. Okay. So if I, it wasn't, it's got to be twenty eight, twenty nine. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah. It, it started early. Yeah. By the way, you know, we came up here two or three years ago. Promoting our Still Kicking tour. And now I hear Rick and Bubba has a 30 years in Still Kicking. Uh, well, coincidence? Co- coincidence. I think not. <laughs> uh, the, um, by the way, thank you all for the shout out. Oh, wait a minute. You didn't do that last <laughs> night uh, for I, I, the show. We didn't show. know you were there until uh, the break. Had a little more show left. Mm-hmm. Huh? I didn't have a whole lot of mic you time. You didn't acknowledge no, Rick, it, it, Brad. Right. You know better than yeah. that. You well, have to acknowledge it, it, the Rick. It, 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 Bobby I, I, had more on. mic time than I did. I had a mic sitting there, but I was waiting on Brad to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody was in the audience saying, I know Rick Burgess. I know, I know him better than you know him. <laughs> yeah, but I tried to explain y'all's entire history whispering down the row, and I'm sorry about that, to everybody who was sitting behind us and the, and the woman in front During of us the show? who turned around. I was on row two, though, oh. so I only offended a few folks. Uh, so you got an amazing show last night, but uh, that but we're 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 uh, we're talking now about uh, the amazing three on the string uh, Hall of Famers. So uh, I think we have to, don't you, to jump right into uh, the tax. Oh, absolutely! I, I mean, it is I, the day. I, th- I think we have to do this. And we uh, all feel very good about the way the government's spending it. Uh, I mean, I, I, aren't, they, aren't they good stewards? Uh, aren't they good stewards? I mean, oh, uh, so uh, so, uh, and Brad, you will you will take the mic uh, and and sing the tax song. I know, just like a lot of us, uh, you know, as far as you know, as as, as we you know dealing with it with our parents aging and stuff yes. like that. I mean, I know that uh, your dad is. It's a very similar road that we've been on, and we're praying for all of you guys oh, and yeah. just. Uh, and Jerry's doing well, by the way, yeah. for all those listening out yeah. there. Yeah. Wanted to be here today, but you know things happen. Yeah, so it's, it's quite early. Yes, it is, and, and 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 so here is Brad. The thing about it, the thing about him is he's kind of semi-retired, but we have to keep reminding him. Right? Yeah, semi-retired. yeah, but, yeah. I I, I made the mis- I made the mistake of asking him if he's retired. I won't do that again. <laughs> uh, so 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 here here is uh, the Hall of Famers themselves, three on the string with the tax off. I pay another man to do my taxes because that's one more deduction that I could take. But this year they brought the W-2 and they're taking about a third of everything I make. And I'm just as patriotic as the next man. And you know I love that red, white, and blue. And I'm going to help to pay this rising cost of freedom. But I'll be danged if I'm going to change my point of view. Cause every time the bureaucrats run out of money Congress sucks it to the working man And I don't think it's one bit funny When they take so much of my money And do things with it I don't understand I don't understand And I don't know why they think they gotta squeeze us But I'll tell you just exactly where I stand I believe if 10% is good enough for Jesus, it ought to be enough for Uncle Sam. Somebody say amen. Let's go. Amen. Go, Bobby. And all them folks we keep on sending off to Congress, oh, buddy. they think all they're supposed to do is spend and spend and spend and spend. It's hard to run a family, much less a country, with more money going out than coming in. 
and the debt, it just keeps on getting bigger. Bubba, it's out of control. And I, we all gonna have to pay so we can't laugh. One day you're gonna look down at your paycheck. Yep. Wow. Now they done started taking half. We're there. We're there. Yeah, Every time the bureaucrats <laughs> run out of money, Congress socks it to the working man. Suck it to me, suck it to me, suck it to me, suck it to me. I don't think it's one bit funny when they take so much of my money. Do things with it I don't understand. I don't understand. And I don't know why they think they got to squeeze it. Come on. But I'll tell you exactly where I stand. Everybody together. If 10% is good enough for Jesus, it ought to be enough for Uncle Sam. If 10% is good enough for Jesus, it ought to be enough for Uncle Sam. Yeah. Hall of Famers, Bubba. I think you got to update that song and start with their taking half. <laughs> <laughs> so, Brad, now now it's freelance. Y'all y'all can just jam. You know, I had uh, on the way up. I had this idea. What if what if Rock and Roll City joined us? No. And I, what do you think? I mean, I don't. Uh, uh, you, you talking about a hybrid? Yeah. Uh, well, I, the only did, problem, did, did, the ones playing are the same ones putting you on the well, air. that's right? true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that one, that'll be tough. Uh, yeah, that'll okay. be tough. Okay. Well, right. when we'll play this song, and uh, Bobby will play the jug. Okay. And <laughs> Rock and Roll City can listen. Okay. Next time we come up, hybrid. Hello, okay. future album. <laughs> Way down south in Memphis, Tennessee, jug band music sounds sweet to me. Sounds so sweet. Go three. And it's hard to beat. I jug band music certainly was a treat to me. Well, I run, run home, turn on the radio. Jug band music made me stomp the floor. It sounds so sweet. Hard to beat. Jug band music certainly was a treat to me. Hey, Bobby! Ladies and gentlemen, the great Bobby Horton. Bobby Horton on the no break! I took off my socks, I took off my shoes, I jumped all around to them jug band blues. It sounds so sweet, and it's hard to beat. I jug band music certainly was a treat to me. Can you do it, Bubba? Here Bubba. On the stocks, here we go. I'm not getting the volume I need here. I didn't practice that enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bobby, show him how to do it. Yeah, yeah Bobby, show him how to do it, Bobby. Here we go. <laughs> I, I think it's out of tune. <laughs> oh, love a junk band. Oh, Bobby. I went to my gal, I put my hand on her knee. Hey. I said, if you don't play the jug, you can't play with me. The sounds so sweet, and it's hard to beat. Yeah, jug band music certainly was a treat. Jug band music certainly was a treat. Jug band music certainly was a treat to me. Yeah! If you ever wondered why they're in the Hall of Fame, listen to that jug. Uh, we'll come back. What, what was in that initially? <laughs> Live from the big boy stage. Thank y'all. Thank y'all so much. <laughs> Always fun. Yeah. Three. 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 Are we done? Can we borrow some money to pay our taxes? Can y'all jam a little more? Oh, yeah, we yeah. Can, can we jam there. one? We got to do one We're more. We're counting on you being in the house, man. The rest of the day. That's right. We'll be right back. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. 
I thought, hey, I how much that. easier would I've that be that. Oh, if yeah. I had like you know French doors? You I open, love that whoop, idea. Roll her right out, decorated, plug her in. Mm-hmm. Hey, Merry Christmas! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I love that. That, that would idea. be merry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, so anyway, so wow. I, I'm not going to be critical of Big Tree being up because really, Big Tree, if you look at. The they've history. got it right. They have mm-hmm. it right. Now, yeah, they've yeah. had it up a long time. Right. I say but, leave her up. <laughs> yeah. Leave her up. <laughs> I think January 5th was the 12th day or 6th, something like that. Yeah, whatever 12 after. Yeah. Christmas. Yeah. But so if you think about it, we do it all wrong. <laughs> 16 minutes past the hour, 866-WE-BE-BIG is our number. Lots to do today, including the will of meat at any time. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Uh, so as we um, as we come back, Rick and Bubba University, the podcast coming up tomorrow. Uh, be looking for that. We interview Speedy's daddy. Oh, that was fun. Yep. That was fun yeah. yesterday. So Speedy's daddy. Mr. Wilbur. We talked to Mr. Wilbur. He's got the second edition of the Larry the Leaf Children series. It's available everywhere. Go to Amazon. You can find it. Uh, and uh, and it's called uh, Larry the Leaf and the Thieves, and we interview him, and we do talk about what's it like to be Speedy's dad. There you go. <laughs> it was weird from my perspective because I'm at the house just making because I had to technically set everything up. All I can do is hear him. I can't hear y'all, and I'm like, I wonder what's going on. That has to hurt. You know, you got to be help quiet, us. and you're over there just seated and silent. Well, help us, I, help us. I, I found I, I got myself in a dilemma on that yesterday. I wanted so bad to put you in a handle, <coughs> but I love your dad so much yeah. and have much, so much it's respect a, for him. such a nice man. It's too. like I couldn't do it. It's like <laughs> really for me to tackle you, I had to run through him, and I couldn't do it. Is Ryan mad at you? He is. He's very upset. <laughs> he said I don't have my legs in me yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Bubba, let's let's go to Rick and Bubba. Just don't know what's going on. All right, look, let me, let me lay this out. I was sitting around <laughs> thinking yesterday, okay, oh and but save your email. Okay, well, I'm not. I'm well not good. saying that I believe this. I'm not saying I don't believe this. I can hear that. But if you believe everything you're hearing nowadays, you have to go. Yeah, there's something to this. Okay, mm-hmm. so I do believe there is a deep state, and yeah. I think there are people who try to influence Y'all our country and all that. Yeah, okay. Now I don't know that they're a worldwide cabal with one guy sitting like Wizard of Oz behind the curtain or not. Mm. I don't. I don't know. I'm not privy to that. Okay. But I was thinking yesterday. Mm. Oh, he's wiping his forehead. Yep. Hey, he had his if, if, we, if we believe everything that we're being told in callers and email and all that, we have to believe that a U.S. presidential election was stolen, absolutely stolen, in multiple states. Okay? It wasn't just one. you got to remember, it was eight or nine states we're talking about here that were in these gray areas. The election laws had to be illegally changed in multiple states. Okay, so now we're already talking about a large group of people involved to pull this off. We also have to believe that multiple courts, state and federal, in multiple states were all in on it. Okay, now we're talking about hundreds, if not thousands, of people now working together in perfect concert to make this happen. Um, We have to believe that ballots can be moved in counted, moved out, ordered, sent where they need to be, truck drivers, warehouses, forklift operators at will and on a a very quick notice, hey, we need some votes over here. Give me some Biden votes over on 54, quick. Got to have that. So now we're talking about an army of people, thousands, that had to be involved in this, right? Um, We have to... We also have to believe that um, that the cabal or whoever's sitting behind the curtain can order protests to be done. They can order riots to be done if they want to turn up the heat a little bit. 
They also have an amazing distribution system. They can get pallets of bricks wherever they need to at any time. And they're not just Black Lives Matters or, you know, uh, anti gun The gravy, please. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Ooh, it brings me to 21 my minutes now past the hour of the Rick and Bubba Show. We are so thankful that you are here with us today. Uh, and looking ahead, active week coming up. Uh, we got a lot going on uh, that you can participate in all over the country. If you are looking for a man church uh, near, near, near you and you're in Pearl, Mississippi, well, good news. This Friday night, Park Place Baptist Church, Pearl, Mississippi, Blake Prime will kick off the men's discipleship strategy from the men's discipleship strategy, and you can be there with them for that service. Coming up this weekend, Sherry and I will be going to uh, Op Alabama. We'll be at Op High School Saturday night. We'll both be speaking. Sherry's speaking to the women. I'll be speaking to the men. Then we'll both uh, uh, spend some time answering some questions. It's sponsored by Westview Baptist Church. It is completely free, uh, but they do want you to register because seating is limited, and you can still do that. There are still seats available for this Saturday night, and then Sunday morning I'll be there preaching the morning service at Westview Baptist Church in Op Alabama, the land of 1077. Speedy will do, be doing in-game stadium emceeing this Saturday for the UFL's Birmingham Stallions. Bubba, they remain undefeated. I know it. They are rolling. And Speedy will be there in Protective Life Stadium uh, bringing uh, all the hype. So if you want to uh, see Speedy or you're coming to the game in Birmingham Saturday, look for him there. So that's kind of how the week shapes up, and there's a lot of opportunities for you to uh, participate uh, when we're, or some of the guys, or all of us are in markets near you. So uh, three, we, we want three on a string to stay, at least to give us one more segment. Uh, now we're just kind of moving into an all-out jam session. So it, it's... it's, uh, it's Player's a, choice. Yeah, player's <laughs> choice. Y'all have done some classics over the years. Uh, it's, uh, all right, so <laughs> what, which one are you going to do, you think? I mean, you, you, you've got... Gospel song. Okay, good. All right, here we go. I see Bobby's got the trumpet. Should I be concerned? No, no, no. Okay, here we go. All right, here we go. It's not recording. <laughs> Y'all sing now, Billy. Like... Joshua fit. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho. The Jericho. The Jericho. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho. And the walls come tumbling down. Good morning, Sister Mary. Good morning, Brother John. But I want to walk and talk with you. Tell you what Joshua would done. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho. 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 Joshua fit the battle of Jericho. And the walls come tumbling down. Where well, the tell me great God that Joshua's spear was near about 12 feet long. On his hip, a double-edged sword, in his mouth, a gospel horn. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho, and the walls come tumbling down. Jericho, they marched with spears in hand. Come blow your ram's horn, Joshua cried. The battle is in our hand. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho, and the walls come tumbling down. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho, and the walls come tumbling down. And the walls come tumbling down. And the walls come tumbling down. Go three. Hey, get your threes up. Go three. Let's hear it, Jerry. That's the way you do it. Yeah, right there. That's it. All right, here we go. All right, so, oh, oh. I'm going to have to change places because you got to. So, Brad, you, you, you're going to stand up well, and face we, away from if, Andy? If Andy might, going acoustic? 
If we may send out a sentimental song to the Rick above, the whole Rick above a family. Yes. Oh yeah. Okay. Right. This is a song yeah. Andy wrote years ago. It's I'm called. Andy. It's called Best of Friends. Oh yeah. It kind of sums up how we feel about it. When people come to see us, we're we're tickled that they just came to see us. Absolutely. And uh, when y'all have us on the show, we're tickled y'all had us on the show. So this kind of sums up all those feelings in one little song. It's called Best of Friends. So 30 years in one song. 30 years in all 30 years. 30 years. Okay, here we go. What, how's that? Yeah. <laughs> it's a bunch. Yeah. yeah that's a bunch. There you go. It's a three with a zero. Okay. Yep. Best of Friends. Here they are. The sun is slowly sinking now The shadows growing long We'd like to stay around a while And sing another song But we know even best of friends Must sometimes be apart And we'll always keep your memory In our hearts One day soon I know we'll meet To sing our songs again It seems so close to paradise Just being with your friends And we know even best of friends Will sometimes be apart And we'll always keep your memory In our hearts Well, great moments in Three on a String, Rick and Bubba history. It was Gadsden, Alabama. A small brick cube building way in the back of a parking lot. And we watched as Three on a String played Pantsless Good Old Boys Theater. <laughs> yep, yep. And to see Bobby playing the banjo with his pants down was unbelievable. And it, and it, it's just a poignant moment that we'll never forget. <laughs> There's a video somewhere. Another moment, Fat Fest. I forget the year, 19 something. 99. 1999. See, 1999, and we needed uh, we needed a segue between the naked cowboy and Kevin Derryberry. Yeah. <laughs> Who steps in? The three. Amazing three. The amazing. The, thank you, three. three. On the string. Thank you. Three. Some and say those are just the a, day. Those are just a couple of moments. From the Rick and Bubba, Three on a String, History. Thank you, Three. Yep. Take it away, Andy. And now it's time to say goodbye. We wish that we could stay. But memories remain with us until another day. And we know even best of friends must sometimes be apart. We'll always keep your memory in our heart. Yes, we'll always keep your memory in our heart. There it is. The amazing, award-winning three on the string. Legendary. Thank you. Hall of Famers. Hall of Famers. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. rallies they also can infiltrate the trump rallies and cause them to go how they want to now we're talking about a lot of power here guys yeah. remember multiple states all of this so we're talking about tens of thousands of people that operate in perfect concert perfect timing and cannot be detected by any means that we currently have everybody's in on the scam it's a giant scam if they're that good and they can do that, we got no hope. We got no hope. But it does, you have to ask this question. Again, I'm not saying it is or it's not, but I'm just putting the pieces of the puzzle together, okay? If they can do all of that, why did they settle for a tie in the Senate? Why didn't they go ahead and just win it outright? Why did they lose votes in the House of Representatives? Because if I'm that dominant and I can work that silky smooth and do that much, and do it that quick, and no one can detect me, wouldn't I go ahead and just close the book on the deal? Why would I leave it open-ended, you know? 
I don't know. I'm just I'm just thinking about that out loud. And if they're that good, I think we need to hire them to deliver the mail. <laughs> yeah, maybe right that. There. Maybe we need yeah. to call them and say, "Look, you guys got us. Quite an organization. We want to hire you to pass out vaccine." Warp Speed did a fair job. You guys would be much better at it. You'd vaccinate us, and we didn't even know it. Right. So yeah. I, I, how do we come down on some of this? Can can anybody be that good, that powerful, that slick, that quick, and that undetectable and have that many people on the payroll and not one person turn on them? Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't. <laughs> that's know. a big deal. It is. I, I think, in my own opinion, and that's all it is, um, it's probably more likely. Am um, I just that naive? Now, it's probably more likely that the people that I saw and have tried to tell us for decades, and we wouldn't listen, that have come here from the Soviet Union when it was still kicking, and and they said what happens is all they have to do is indoctrinate a generation of your people, and your country's over. It's probably likely that most of this, and there's some of dabbling. That's a big part. There's some dabbling. I, got, yeah, there was some. I hate to bring this up. We've had elections dabbled with as long as we've had elections. Mm-hmm. It, there was probably some dabbling, but I'm telling you, our biggest problem is – we have a gigantic uh, number of our current population that have been indoctrinated that the constitutional republic is evil and socialism is preferred. Even that, though it that's fails. our biggest problem. Even mm-hmm. though it fails yeah. everywhere it's tried. It is an easy sell for the uninformed masses. And if – and to the people who – and I know right now you go, oh, 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 oh. look – it, what are they let's doing? say it. What are they doing? Okay. If it is true, if it is true, and they're that good, they are the slickest operation mankind has ever seen. They are better than anything we've got going. And how do we put them to work for us? How do I hire them to steal an election I want to be in? Do, you, do they have a contact number? Do you have to go down to like a, a restaurant and sit in the right booth, turn the salt, and it flips you around? I mean, what? How do. Who are these people? Let's get in touch with them because how about this? They're doing a damn good job. <laughs> huh? Let's get them on our side. Because, huh? <laughs> buddy, they have they have pulled off the ultimate and sealed it, and it is undetectable. I don't know how they did it, Rick. Somebody help me out. Uh, top of the hour. We'll be back. More, help Rick, me. more Rick and Bubba coming up right after this. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. We need to get to this. Okay, okay. go ahead, yeah. and, and then I'm going to address uh, yeah. some of these other things. But I, you, it's like, I don't don't no, go look go. at all these comments. Don't no, read go, your go, email. I, I, I love do it. I love yeah, it. Yeah, I, I, think, <laughs> I think asking questions is a good thing. Well, I do too. I'm that. not against asking uh, questions. Undoubtedly, you're in the minority, but I agree with you. <laughs> uh, Lori in Huntsville, 100.3 <laughs> The River. Lori, go ahead. Good morning, Rick and Bubba. Um, Green Acres, by the way. Oh, Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I just wanted to say, um, yesterday I was listening to a lot of the comments that were coming through and everything, and I almost felt like you guys were kind of um, turning everything around that you've always stood up for. Um, right, can, I stop you? Words, can I stop it, you on that? Be, be specific. Yes. In, in what way? Okay, let me just ask you a question. Yesterday, a lot of the comments coming through – um, you guys almost sounded a little bit like you were telling people just to, okay, well, this is the way it is, so we're going to move on now. You know, people are really concerned about everything that was coming down the pipeline the night before, all the things that were being said, and all of a sudden, you know, it was Trump supporters doing all this. Why, why wasn't it ever discussed that we don't know if this is Trump supporters yet or not? Well- Thirty-five minutes past the hour. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you, Amazing Three on the Stream. If you are paying the most taxes to the federal government today, you're writing the biggest check. We want to help with one hundred dollars. And uh, there he goes, Bobby Horton. Uh, and so, uh, if you email Speedy at RickandBubba.com. What check are you writing to the federal government today? The biggest yeah. one. Do we we'll have help. an update on that? Well, right you know, they've been in a little bit of a handle. So right. so we'll, right. we'll get those updates yeah. coming up here in a minute. So uh, amac.us uh, slash Bubba. 
the Association of Mature American Citizens. I don't know if this commercial had co- has come at a better moment today yeah. uh, on the program. And we look, well, all of us, we, when we started clipping our 50s, we started getting the, you know, the AARP stuff. And, you know, mm-hmm. there's some things that, that they do and stand for that we don't agree with. And so we were like, well, uh, those are benefits are available, but uh, is there an alternative to AARP? And, I, and we have good news. And a lot of you are responding, yes, there is, AMAC. The Association of Mature American Citizens. Uh, look, if you want to have somebody representing you uh, in in Washington, but representing from a patriotic point of view, uh, the values that you hold dear, while at the same time enjoying money-saving travel benefits from hotels, car rentals, cruises, theme parks, shows, events, movies, food, dining, uh, and much more. They also offer an array of insurance discounts. It's a great organization, and the membership gets you free Social Security and Medicare advice, a trusted voice, as I said, in Washington, and a community of like-minded patriots. So you also get the AMAC magazine. So go to amac.us slash Bubba, election year special, we got a big election coming up. Maybe you've heard about it. Uh, Four-year membership is only $30. Okay, you're going to love this. amac.us slash Bubba. Yes, you have a choice. And there's a link at rickandbubba.com under the sponsors button. Okay, so earlier in the show, we, we talked about Tiger Woods. And we we were wondering if it was Vern Lundquist behind the tree. We can now confirm. It, it became a mystery. Yeah, we can now confirm that it is. Yeah, yeah. and we, we have footage. If you see here, Rick, this is video from the other side of the tree, and yep. that is him being greeted and having a handshake with well, Vern. So the mystery hand was Vern. There's the cane. Yep. There's the ring. Uh, that is the final. So how is it? Mystery I, solved, yeah. folks. Yep, so that, that means that that was his watch. It, 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 yeah, thank you for that reminder. It, it's, like probably, it's probably some collector's watch. Probably is. Know him. He's been yeah. around. I mean, he's no telling what Listen, he's Listen, there were so many great. Tiger may give it to him. Mm-hmm. Who knows? There were so many great stories on all broadcasts. I think the Masters coverage was mm-hmm. on probably six different venues yeah. this yeah, weekend. Yeah, and so every bit of it was about Vern. And it was, there was great stories. He's a great storyteller. Oh, yeah. So that that was great, and then they not only talked about the Masters, but everything that he's covered mm-hmm. from the Christian Leitner, oh yeah, Duke shot some of the stuff the, from the podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you know. He mentioned Rick and Bubba. I don't know yeah, if y'all well, know hey, that. And then did that watch? Did that watch have JSU on it? It looked like it. <laughs> See, th- this I was trying to get away from that, Rick. I've stirred enough trouble up this morning. Um, that was so good. So there it is. It's it's so there's no more discussion. I do find it interesting that he was there in that moment. I yep. guess he hasn't – at that point, Tiger teed off early, so Vern probably wasn't in the booth at that moment. Yeah. He hadn't made his no, way up. No, you're probably right. Yeah. So that's probably why. Uh, uh, also, yeah. a lot of big events over the weekend yet to cover. One of those is that Ruby Adler turned four. Uh, and uh, the, a lot of people are talking about it. It was the social event of the year. Yes. Uh, and so, Adler, how how did that go? It was great. Um I gotta say, I gotta give a shout out to uh, Fun Source. Yeah, man, yeah. they've been with us for years. Drug. I've heard over the over the last decade. After the last decade, you guys have had uh, the Fun Source people out, and I was like, I got now I'm in that zone. I got I got to try. <laughs> yeah. So I reached out and thank you guys so much at Fun Source. They actually um, they had a truck go down on them. That day, so they had to, and they, they've got these blow up bounce houses going everywhere oh, across everywhere, the all state, over the world. Mm-hmm. and they had a truck go down on them. So they actually had to rent a truck to get us oh. the bounce house. Uh, and I don't, here's a, I don't think, um, I don't think the barn at Shady Lane wants me to show this picture. I don't think uh, Fun Source wants me to show this picture. <laughs> okay. Because the Barnett Shady Lane, they're used to high class, right. you know, big events like that. And Fun Source, they're probably not used to their, their bounce houses being up in the rafters of a place. Uh-oh. Y'all, we cut it so close. <laughs> oh, my goodness. On this thing. Look at this. I mean, Adler, wow. What are you doing? Right. Adler, you are going after a dragon, it looks like. So, uh, what I'm doing is it, it was a princess castle party. Are you and, riding the dragon? And I'm, I'm riding a dragon, guys. <laughs> so I walked around with this big inflatable dragon on for pretty much the whole party. Nice. Oh, that's your uh, legs. I see now. Yeah, yeah. So look, like it's got fake legs, so it looks like I'm a tiny man riding on a dragon. And it that's is funny. the kids loved it. It is. The kids yeah. loved it. Yeah. And, um, you know, I used to DJ weddings. 
Uh, for, maybe, maybe you heard about maybe it. you heard about the parties that I used to throw down. Right. Yeah. But um, so I still have all I've I've all my my DJ gear still. So I was able to bust that out for the first time in a long time, and and that was that was great. Didn't have to pay for the venue. Didn't have to pay for the DJ gear. Uh, didn't have to pay for uh, the bounce house, so that increased my dragon budget. Oh yeah! So my dragon costume was actually one of two dragon costumes that I had that, for that, the party. That right there. Um, this was the uh, my the top half of my body was exposed in this uh, dragon costume, so I was able to have conversations with people and. And talk to people, and as all the kids came in, I would say to them, "Now this is a nice dragon. Hopefully, we don't see any grumpy dragons around here. Let me know if you see any grumpy dragons." You, you could terrify these kids. So that was that was foreshadowing for all the kids yeah. about the grumpy dragon that was going to come later. But that, these are kids are four. I had inflatable swords for them to then slay the grumpy oh, dragon. Okay. okay. So that was the whole the whole thing, and I was kind of trying to wink at the parents too to let them know, like, hey, there's going to be a grumpy dragon later. And grumpy uh, dragon. I, uh, yeah. In, in fact, um, I hope you have pictures. How did it feel to be the tallest dragon? person in the room? It was it was really nice. <laughs> right, I felt yeah. powerful. Yep. Yeah. Um, do y'all want to hear the Grumpy Dragon? Hear it? Uh, yes. Yeah. Wait a minute, there's sound with it? So, I, um... Are you the Grumpy Dragon? I recorded, I recorded a little action here for, uh, okay. for that. Here's just the audio, and y'all can make fun of it, and, and it is the Game of Thrones intro, so I'm gonna show, I'm gonna play okay. ju- for ju- just the sound. I needed the, the sound of yeah. it. That's the, no, gotcha. they, hopefully they don't know, they don't know the show. Okay. But, uh, here is, uh, what I played at a certain point, and I had my dad help me out. Here's just the audio, and then I'll show you guys the video of what happened. So this is the noise that comes with yeah, it? Yeah, this is just the audio. Okay. Hello, boys and girls. <laughs> Thanks for coming to Ruby's birthday party. (laughs) Hope you're having fun. We saw a nice dragon earlier, but I think the grumpy dragon is waking up and coming out of his cave. And that was my cue. So, all right, so you guys get the idea of what I did. (laughs) So you guys get the idea of what I did. At, at this point, I had all right. I, and my wife is a nervous wreck. She's like, "Please don't do and this." She should be. Please don't do this. I'm like, I'm doing the She's dragon. She's the only one that's thinking. Do you, do you feel like kids could just like go nuts and start running yes, everywhere? The yes. kids We've are gonna that. love it, is what I said. Okay. And so, um, I was like, "I'm doing the grumpy dragon. I don't care what anybody says." And so, um, here, 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 I'm coming out. You got to know, my dad was helping me. I'm like, okay, when "Don't worry, be happy" ends. That was the song I had don't before. Don't worry, be happy. It's You're while, setting them up. Well, don't worry, be happy is playing. I'm in the caterer's shed trying to get into this costume, and it's like, you know, the whole don't worry, be happy thing. Yeah. Very familiar. And I, the <laughs> zipper is stuck, and the, the, the Game of you Thrones didn't do a thing. You run-through? I, I did it once at my house, but now I'm in the shed. Okay. And I, I, I'm, I'm panicking. The zipper is stuck. I'm like, what am I going to do? But luck, it's like, don't worry, be happy. I'm like, I'm worried. I'm worried and right I'm not now. happy. If this Game of Thrones intro comes on and I don't have this dragon costume inflated, I'm in trouble. So you go from don't worry, be happy to be terrified? Do, 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 do. All right, so here is the uh, the moment of, uh, sick, twisted of truth. What kind of sick, Y'all, this? it was great. The kids loved it. It was awesome. Here comes the dragon! Look, look, this little girl's terrified. She was scared. She was more scared than I wanted her to be. But uh, it ended up being good. And I'm going to pause it. (laughs) Yeah! Here comes the grumpy dragon! (laughs) Look, these kids are terrified. They're screaming. That's fun screams, I think. They're terrified. You, they didn't sleep. <laughs> One's trying to slay the dragon. Yeah, that's yeah. what I wanted. So the, the so you didn't want this kid that's crying. You didn't want that. I wanted them to hit me with the inflatable swords that I provided. Did you see the kid crying? And I've got Who's going to hit the concrete? Yeah. Yes, I was worried about that. I wish somebody was filming Aaron. I'm going to pause now. Aaron right here, okay, the face palm of the you. century. Hey, yeah. Aaron, oh, look at Aaron. Aaron is just, you, uh, you I mean. You brought Yeah. <laughs> Why y'all. should she be in this situation? It's her It's her daughter's birthday. It was a hit, y'all. It was a huge hit. Uh, I mean, everybody loved so it. So was the Aaron parents, embarrassed? Yes. Yes, clearly. Very, very embarrassed. But the kids did what, love it. I will say that. Isn't she used to that by now? You think. You would think. Um, so here's the here's the other angle, and y'all, it was great. Kids loved it. Parents loved it. Uh, oh, the the kids it. got to vanquish me. I almost hit a kid right here. You're gonna oh, see. Yeah. 
I almost hit this kid right there. Yeah, you did. That could have been bad. I didn't take him wow. out. They took me out. And uh, yeah, there we go. Did so. you practice falling down? Can you even fall down in that costume? I just leave. Okay. And, oh, okay. And I've got cues in the song for myself. Away, Grumpy Dragon. And then you can hear I go, thanks, kids. Well, they're chasing you into the street. <laughs> <laughs> so it was great. Uh, both of my grandmas came. It well, was awesome. You even had elderly people that could have gone into cardiac arrest. No, it was great. Everybody okay. loved it. All right. Kids were raving about it. All right. Bubba and I have got a pointer or two for you when we come back because I, you have done something that we've been guilty of. We want to caution you about it. Okay. All right. Oh, too much. Yes. Yeah. It yeah. was too much. Yeah. <laughs> Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Come well, out. well it, it, it was discussed. So yeah. let me ask you this question because this is really important. Do you think the Capitol should have been stormed in these conditions, yes or no? Absolutely not. Okay. So then if you, then you're going to be consistent if you say Antifa did this, and I do think there were people there from all sorts of, of uh, you know, uh, worldviews and some people who are just uh, mentally deranged. But I do think looking at the, the evidence that we can see before our eyes, like you said, that I do think that there were some people that were there at the rally. They were they were they knew that they felt like Trump was uh, was getting robbed. He made sure that they heard from him that he is being robbed, and that their voice was not going to be heard, and the election was going to be stolen from them. And uh, and I do think that once the 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 rush on the Capitol started and whoever started it, I do think there were people at the rally that were there just to support Trump who joined in. And uh, and I and I do think that that is 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 true of my point of view. Uh, but do I think that we may find out that there were some rebel rousers in there too? Probably so. But but I, but I don't think that it was totally fake. And no Trump supporters, none none whatsoever, charged the Capitol. Uh, I, I honestly don't think that's true. But uh, but I and there's I, bad apples in every yeah, group. We know that. that. And that's just my opinion. Right. And, and and so. But but and we may find out otherwise. But but like Bubba's saying is for us to question things or say, well, man, I don't really know about that. When did we lose? Like like if I if I do that, suddenly I didn't have President Trump on the show. Suddenly Bubba and I didn't have our pictures made with him. Suddenly we didn't go to the White House. Suddenly uh, we didn't try to get him reelected. Suddenly we didn't make all the points on why he should be reelected. All that's thrown away because we wouldn't get in line. And, uh, and, and go along with the preferred narrative yesterday. When did we become that country? Yeah, I understand what you're saying there. Um, I am not one of those people, nor is my husband one of those people that has become that country. We still stand strong on God's word. And one other question I have for you, if President Trump wants to call, was to call you right now and say, I want to get on the air to the American people. Would you put him on? Yes. Of course. Yes. 100%. Well, let me ask you this. Why Goodness do you gracious. even halfway think we would not? Well, I was just curious because I understand, you know, you but why? have sponsors and everything. Sponsors ain't and, got nothing to do with sponsors. Um, are, Facebook nothing. is posting him. Twitter's stopping him. Everybody's oh, stopping okay. them from okay. wanting to. Oh, I see what you're saying. That's the only yeah, reason. Oh, okay, so I was just okay. Curious okay. If yeah. Now that no, I see. Okay. okay, that that question makes sense then. But uh, to, okay. to to answer your question, 100 percent, we'd put him on. Yeah. Okay, that's what yeah, I wanted I, to hear, I, and I love you guys. Thank hey, you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank appreciate you. you. I don't. I'm amazed by the question. Yeah. Well, yeah, but, but, it's but, back she, to, but she explained it. She yeah. said, has he become such a hot potato y'all won't no, handle him right, anymore? right. And this yeah, thing, yeah. too, we, That's we, a fair keep, question. we yeah. keep getting bits and pieces of this. Well, you're down to do. Sponsors don't tell us what to do. Mm-mm. Sponsors no. can quit supporting the show and we eventually would go away. Can I tell you? If they, if they don't, if they don't rooms, want access to our audience. I have been in rooms with you guys and been uncomfortable with some of the conversations because you wouldn't back down. Right. Okay. So I can, I can lay that to rest right now. Yeah, They've yeah. never can, once allowed that to happen. Can, can I tell all of you something out there? And it may be something you don't know. Cause I know we, we love to do the, the little slogans and all that. And yeah. Hamza, you said you guys behind the scenes, you know it. Listen to me. And I want you to listen to me loud and clear. That, and this is not about, we're not martyrs. Okay. I'm not saying any of that. We don't need to get applause for this, and I'm not seeking applause. But I do want you to understand something. Some of you have completely a 180 on this. You are 180 degrees incorrect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If we would shut up about our the way we see the world, if we would shut up 
about our spiritual convictions, if we would take this thing into a very, very easy to consume, don't upset anybody format, we would have more sponsors, we'd have more stations, and we would be available in more places. So this mm-hmm. thing that, that somehow yeah, we right. say and do things only mm-hmm. because of sponsors and only because of, of our business plan, our business plan is incorrect. Yeah. Now, have we been blessed anyway? Yes, we have. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, and there's no doubt about that because we have always believed there's an audience for the, exactly the way we're doing the show. And you know what? There is. However, we are not on the top of the sponsor list. The gravy, please. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Ooh, it brings me to my knees. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. I can't start another Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. day without him, brother. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Ooh, there is no other. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. All right, we're back. Nine minutes to the top of the hour. A brand new RBU is out uh, today. Uh, it, we came out over the weekend, so if you haven't caught it, uh, go catch our conversation uh, with uh, Dr. Michael Waller in his book, Intel. Also, it's a Rick and Bubba Buffalo Wild Wings charity charge today at all participating Buffalo Wild Wings. And that, those are all in Alabama, Alabaster, Birmingham on 280, Gardendale, Tuscaloosa, Hoover, downtown Birmingham, 4th Avenue South, Trustful, Pell City, Oxford, Chelsea. And then there's two Buffalo Wild Wing Goes. These are the BWW Go locations uh, in Vestavia and Northport. They're participating as well. 10% of all food sales today go uh, to benefit to Beckett's Blessing Box. And th- these go to parents that are grieving uh, the earthly death of their children. And there's items in there that kind of help them through their grief. So you're, you're helping a great organization as well. All right. So Adler just, Bubba, we watched it and we saw it for ourselves. We saw it for ourselves. The bar he just set. Yes. There were some kids traumatized. Yes. There were parents. There were a few running for cover. Yeah. 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 You're going to yeah, have that. Yes. There is a wife that uh, cannot believe what she saw. Yeah. We saw her covering her face. Yes. It's uh, called a face she, palm. Yeah. I think that's called was a face palm. Was she embarrassed? Yeah. What? Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Was she crying? Yeah, what was the yeah, emotion? There was a lot of emotion there. What, what she was it? embarrassed, but just she, she was also just filled with pride. You know, it's yeah, like, it, a, it's a husband. common, it's a, it's a duality of emotions yeah. And um, so it's like embarrassed pride, I think, is what did it is. Did she feel the need to run? Yes. She almost did, yes. I think. Um, Back to her home. But yeah, I mean, I felt that way at times, just run. You yeah. Know, yeah. And I, I know probably Speedy today, but I mean, mm-hmm. and you know, Greg, sometimes yeah. you, you just want to just yeah. run. Yeah. Greg, yeah. I, Greg, I hate that. I know y'all were tending to something that had to be dealt with. You yeah. missed the following line from Adler. Uh, I got a costume to make me look like I was a tiny man riding a dragon. Yeah. What? Well, you can't be mission that. accomplished. Yeah. yeah. And, and of course, yeah. people are texting, going, "Well, Adler is a time. I didn't man, need right? the costume. Right. right. Yeah. I'd like right. to see you the bring grumpy. that out every now and then. Yeah. There, it is. there it is. Here I am yeah. riding the dragon. So that was the oh, nice dragon. That's hilarious. I wore yeah. the nice dragon outfit the whole time. And then I told the kids, hey, keep an eye out for a grumpy dragon oh, that's coming that around. Really oh. Did and you then, borrow that costume from UAB? Oh, I should have. Oh, Y'all, it, I got he this. looked a little blazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Blazy. yeah. I got I got this uh, this dragon costume, y'all. It was uh, I, found, I got it for nineteen bucks on Amazon. Watch out! Because That's why the zipper didn't work? I found the the adult size was thirty nine bucks, but the child size no, unbelievable. The child That's size not true. was nineteen you bucks. Are you and I see, <laughs> Thank you. We could have we would have never known that to yourself. Y'all, I saw that the height re- the height recommendation was like something to up to four nine, and I was like close enough. Yeah, I'm almost. I, I can in. crouch. I'm saving twenty bucks. I, I, agree. I, agree. And, I agree. And so here's uh, here's uh, here here I'm in the oh grumpy dragon. Oh, that's and, blaze. Uh, that yeah. is blaze for oh you. Oh, that looks yeah. like oh, wow. just hit him. Yeah. Yeah. I'll get to hit you. And that was the point. Oh. So I was like on the recording, I was like, "Help me get rid of the grumpy dragon, kids!" Yeah, he really he did an intro and everything. Yeah, yeah. Like, here they is. come. Here come the kids. Please look at everything. It was that, great. You, you've missed him. the ones that were running for cover to the crying. To their oh, parents. I bet yeah. oh. some were screaming and crying. Some were. Yeah, that's true. So but, that's you. you know, that's right. me. Please look, he's doing his arms. And then I ran Please. away. They so, got me. So good. Adler, here's that's the problem. Funny. Here's the problem. Oh, Adler. Uh, you now have the grumpy dragon. I'm the grumpy dragon. <laughs> you, you now have set a precedent at only four years of life. 
Yeah. So many more birthday parties left for not only Ruby, but Ezra. And and now you've said it. I remember when I made this same mistake, Bubba, I remember your words of wisdom. We got we we I we, had we, we talked to Fun Source and it got out of hand. Do you remember this is when Brooks <laughs> or Brody, I can't it might have been Brooks, they were three or four. And we set up we just told Fun Source was this is when they were establishing the relationship with us. So they brought more than we had even asked for. Oh boy! And basically turned our backyard into base the state fair. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's hard to live up to that every year. Adelaide. And so we, when yeah. it was over, Bubba looked at me and he said, "The only way to match this now is we'll have to book the Wiggles." Poke salad. Yummy, yummy. That wasn't poke salad. Yeah. And think about what a downer it was. <laughs> potato, if, potato. if next year oh. it's just not a carnival with sleepy. Right. Yeah. yeah. There's I mean, no Ferris wheel. What's the deal? Right. right. So now you've set this precedent. Live way, animals. So way high. too. Way too so high. high. It was. Yeah. It, we went. We did a lot. But this was our first uh, time to invite more than just family. So I was like, all right, whatever. She's turning four. We'll go over the top. And then I mean, y'all other, showed times out. Can, other times we can do other things. Now, I will say you that. had it at the barn. You had oh, all yeah. of this. You yeah. had live action. Oh, I mean, this yeah. was it was incredible. This was as close to Disney World as Thank you, you get without oh, yeah. being in Florida. I yeah. agree. Yeah. I agree with that. For some my... reason, when my kids are growing up, Lisa came up with a rule. When they got double digits, we would, that was your last over the top birthday because you remember them right oh my god we had horses oh we had oh, horses ponies. i mean yes. ponies we had ponies ponies had yeah. all kinds of stuff it's crazy stuff and, and, and again wacky the clown two or three times birds yeah. just go all out on and, birthdays but once but they so turned hard. 10 after that it was just regular birthdays. Yeah. but for some reason she came up to 10 yeah it was it was just ridiculous every year it, it's so amazing there at the barn um where you had it so Sherry and Brody did their dance right where the inflatable is. Yes, yeah, yeah. Where, yeah. I, I, yeah. I don't where think, you were going. <laughs> I don't think the barn at Shady Lane or Fun Source want me to show. Keep showing this picture because I don't think you're supposed to have bounce houses up in the rafters. No, I, to, y'all, yeah, it just kept going up. The yeah, Fun Source people are inflating. I'm like, it's just still going higher and higher. <laughs> It's right. in the rafters. Way, yeah. Well, it, it was a good idea, though, with the wind that we had early part of the weekend. Yeah, I mean, man. that thing would have been airborne somewhere. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. By the sure. way, where we live, yeah. what a beautiful weekend. Oh, the next yeah. county. Wow, the weekend. Yeah, you yeah. might have found that thing in Georgia. Yeah, yeah. screaming at right. him. <laughs> <laughs> Greg, do you want to hear it again? I thought it was pretty good radio to, to, to play the uh, the Ruby the Dragon uh, thing, the intro sure. thing. All right, here it is. So, this is what went over the intercom. Yes, Speedy. Yes, you just missed this. We just played it last Game segment. Of Thrones. We're doing it again. Well, Greg, should you play Game of Thrones Hello, for four years? Probably not. Oh, thanks for ever coming to Ruby's Thrones. birthday oh, party. Sorry. Hope you're having fun. Uh-oh. <laughs> we saw a nice dragon earlier, but I think the grumpy dragon is waking up and coming out of his cave. <laughs> no <laughs> way! <laughs> Wait a minute. That you play? really... And then here you come. Yeah, and then I came out, and then I had like cues. And so I wanted this whole thing to last only one minute and 45 seconds, and then we went straight into Let It Go. So the girls got to dance. Sure. And my, I you're came. Really, I got really out of. T- I got out of the dragon costume. Came back in. Oh, Ruby's dancing to let it go, and I'm just like, Oh my goodness! One day I'm gonna have to let her go. Ah, but, I'm gonna cry. but listen to this, Adler. You almost did Ezra's four year old birthday party for your daughter. See, I did a lot of stuff for me. I had like inflatable because, swords. I was thinking about because I had these dragons. are girls. Yeah. These are girls. But I, I had uh, guys, friends that were supposed to bring their boys. Right. So I wanted to boy it up a little bit oh, too. Okay. For, so I did some stuff for the boys. That's of course, great. my friend. Friends uh, like canceled on me like them that morning, so that hurt a lot. That happens. Oh, that yeah. hurt a lot. It yeah. became real to them. <clears throat> yeah, she, was, right, right. That was right. pretty good production. <laughs> the big production. Dude, it's much me, boys and girls. I'm the grumpy dragon. Happy birthday, Ruby Adler. <laughs> we'll be back. Rick and Bubba. Rick and Bubba. All right, so I will tell you one of the things in, where we live, which is in Sweet Home, Alabama, it was an absolute gorgeous weekend. And uh, so uh, looking at uh, the, the plants and the trees that are flourishing right now it is a beautiful time of year where we live. And the reason why, I mean, Sherry even came in. She goes, I didn't even realize this was going to look as nice as it looked. And she brought some flowers in, put them in, uh, in a vase, or as Bubba's taught me to say, a vase. Uh, and anyway, so the, the fast-growing trees, when, when you're dealing with them, they're going to make sure that, that they ship you plants, you know, trees 
that actually will thrive where you live. I mean, you can't just go on, you know, go to some place or go online and order something and, and not take into account, you know, your climate, where you live. So you always have ac- uh, access to plant experts. You don't have to have a green thumb. Okay, they have everything you could possibly want, like fruit trees, palm trees, evergreens, house plants, so much more. Whatever you're interested in, they have it for you. Find the perfect fit for your climate and also the space. They want to know where the plant's going to go. Fast-growing trees make it easy to order online, and your plants are shipped directly to your door in one to two days. Along with their 30-day Alive and Thrive guarantee, they offer, well, I was talking about free plant consultation forever. And, and just watching this thrive, people might even think you knew it. It's okay. Uh, they, uh, they, they don't have to have credit. But if you want to put them uh, to work for you now, great offer. Okay? So go get the best deals, half off selected plants and other deals. And, and because you're watching this show or listening to this show, you get an additional 15% off the first purchase when you use the code Bubba at checkout. That's an additional 15%. Okay? So go to fastgrowingtrees.com, use the code Bubba. Fastgrowingtrees.com, the code Bubba. Offer is valid for a limited time. Terms and conditions may apply. Of places they want to be, okay. And uh, I mean, we 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 had a, a sponsor cancel one time because we do the Wednesday Bible study. So you know, could we just say, well, Rick, won't you? Won't we just go do that somewhere else? Don't put it on our YouTube channel. Let's not associate it with the show. Yeah, I could probably do that and even make some justification that I didn't compromise. But we want the the maximum number of people to to, to be exposed to the gospel. And I can give you testimony after testimony after testimony after testimony how people came into the show through the entertainment side and went out the other side of it with an encounter with Jesus. And that's about God, not about us. But, you know, what? if we claim what we claim, then we do what we do and let the chips fall where they may. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, look, I had a conversation with my wife about this yesterday. She's like, on this political thing, should y'all just kind of get in line with what probably is the majority of your audience? And I'm like, so that's who we're going to be? I'm not. I'm not even going against the the, so. the the Trump support. I prefer that Trump have been the president. I was I was very uncomfortable with with being told to vote for him the first time. Didn't want to. Didn't support him until he was the candidate, and still didn't want to vote for him. Okay. The second time, I thought he did a job. Forget personalities, like Hadler tried to tell everybody. The policies that were interacted under his presidency are good for America, and they were overwhelmingly preferred by me. And, and so I voted for him the second time because he earned my vote by the way he actually did his job. Yeah. Okay. So now to say because we won't get in line with, 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 with some, some narrative that a lot of you want us to get in line with that now we've abandoned mm. the, the, our worldview is just incorrect. How about this? Here's an idea. Maybe some of the reasoning we're talking about you might want to listen to. And I, and I hate yeah. to break and, to a lot of people, yeah. but the president gave uh, a speech last night that went out, and he's kind of fallen in the same line we are. I don't know if y'all have seen I that. I haven't yet. seen it. Yeah. 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 Was he tiny Trump? Oh, very tiny. Yeah. Mini Trump. And, um, and, and, and for, can I just say something from a handler's Robert point of view? Yeah. From, from a yeah. handler's point Absolutely. of view, and Helmsy touched on it off air some, I wish I could have been there helping handle the on stage at the Capitol where you know uh, Giuliani came out, Trump came out, and others. I wish I could have said, hey, I want to make an announcement real quick. Probably would have done it between each speaker. Hey, at the, at the, uh, the, at the, the Trump merchandise vending uh, places, there's, uh, there's, we have noticed that there's some Antifa members and some left-wing uh, writers that are, are, are purchasing Trump T-shirts and Trump flags and all this kind of stuff. We want to let everybody know, don't get caught up in this. They might try to stir something up. Don't let them get you fired up to join them because they're out in there in the audience. So, anyway, here's the next speaker. What? And I would have kept saying that the whole time because I do think that they were in it, and I think they rebel-roused everybody and got everybody fired up, and there were Trump supporters that went into the Capitol building, and there were some wrongdoers that were trying to get everybody in there. Yeah, I, I, I look, it doesn't mean I didn't want to vote for him, but I thought he handled the rally poorly. Yeah, yeah there should have been that constant yeah. announcement. Yeah. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba.
Seven and a half minutes past the hour, Rick and Bubba show from the big boy studios out on the bleeding edge of technology from sweet home Alabama to the world. Speedy, the real Greg Burgess, Helmsy, Eddie Van Adler, all here. It is tax day. Welcome back, Bill Bubba Bussy. Who is still working on breakfast. Yes, Bubba, how about this? The the walking dog right now for the biggest check to the federal government today. If yours is smaller than this, no need to email speedy at rickandbubba.com. You have an update from the last one you told me? Uh, yeah, t- uh, 32. All right, 32 grand. 32 grand is the highest. That's the biggest today. check. Uh, you got to write that check today. Uh, so if you can beat that, you got a bigger check, uh, email Speedy. If yours turns out to be the biggest, we'll help you with that tax burden with $100. In years past, we have had millions yes. on this day, yes. which is shocking to me. And congratulations. Yes. Uh, um, but still, today only, what t- you have to write. Today only. As, as you all know, uh, everybody on this show, uh, really, except for Adler, uh, has a direct tie to Jacksonville State University, either as graduates, uh, coaches, uh, uh, your dad coach there. I mean, we've we got every kind of connection you can think of to Jacksonville State University. Bubba and I started our radio career at the campus radio station there. So anything Jack State, we usually will update you on, especially when it comes to national champions. Rick, the women's bowling team over the weekend won the national championship. Wow. How about that? How about that? Huh? Greg? Yes, sir. And, how about, uh, how about the, the bowling has really gotten to be a big yes, deal? Yes, I'm telling you. All the sports have really taken off, and, and bowling is one of them. I mean, they, they got a crowd there. They edged out teams like Sam Houston, Arkansas State, Young, Youngstown State, Um in the do they have like a final four or two? Is they it do. like the whole thing? <clears throat> they do. And um most of the teams, I think all the final four teams were from Conference USA. Wow. Conference USA has and, and they have teams that play other sports in different conferences. So like Vanderbilt and Tulane and um Stephen F. Austin and Arkansas State, they're in different conferences <clears throat> with all their other sports, but they're in Conference USA with bowling. And so um Congratulations to to Shannon O'Keefe and uh, and her husband Brian, who's uh, also uh, one of the coaches. And it's just and a they're, they're the best. I mean, they a, are the best. It's a right? very fascinating story. So I will remember. I remember. Uh, I guess last year, the athletic director and I were talking, and Greg Sites, everybody here is good friends with Greg. And Greg said, "Hey, he's a visionary." By the he way, he said, "Hey, just an hired incredible visionary. just hired a, a bowling coach and." Uh, they're going to probably win us our first national <laughs> championship. And I said, Greg, got such a step out. Like, what are we talking about? And he goes, no, seriously. He said, they're that good. And so they, she was coaching somewhere else, brought all these girls back with her. And uh, think about the – I was thinking about this year's take. Everybody has talked about them winning the national title since they stepped foot in Jacksonville, Alabama. It's been a foregone conclusion. How about that? So to have the pressure of that – and go through the entire season and dominate, yeah. and then pull it off. I think number one. Yes, yeah. I think it's pretty impressive. <laughs> it's impressive. These girls are so good at bowling. I cannot it, believe it. They are just yeah. knocking These them down. Ladies can you knock know, down the pins. Wow. Raise your hand if you wish you were better at bowling. Yeah. I am. They are <laughs> so much better at me than me at bowling. This is unbelievable. I, you, I can't you know, be consistent. I have moments where it looked like I could bow, but I can't be consistent. Mm-hmm. You, you know, know where I'm, not, the, I'm not doing my arm right because they, yeah, they, they, know, they, they do this little, thing. The follow that, through yeah. thing, yeah. Do you know where they practice and uh, play out of every day? I would like to know. Big time entertainment. Okay. How about that? Oh, how about that? Yeah. Uh, so that's that. their asked, home. Yeah. What do you where, call it? Well, that's where they, they practice. Your home, home lanes. Yeah. Yeah, Your home, home lanes. lanes. Nice. Yeah. I yeah. sat with the O'Keefe's at, at our red tie event, and I was asking these questions like, you know, is it an advantage, disadvantage that we don't have, you don't have a bowling alley here on campus? And she goes, oh, we need one here. And oh, what yeah. a lot of schools do is they will set it up so that the university and the kids can use it like as an erect, but then yes. that's their home mm-hmm. bowling alley. Ooh, and so yeah. Maybe that you got to have so many one. lanes to host and all mm-hmm. that. So I don't, I don't really know how it works, but it's fascinating. Maybe they could build one and tie it into the indoor courts. 
Well, that'd listen, be great. Listen to this. I like that, Bub. The Bill Bubba Bussy Bowling <laughs> Arena. Ooh! Yeah. How the bees flow? Yes. How the bees flow? I mean, oh, my gosh. Yeah. Y'all got me sponsoring a lot of stuff, yes, I noticed. Yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's all sponsored. Well, that's it. But that's you know what? Look, the, he, here's the bottom line. Congratulations to the ladies and the team and the coach. And uh, But, you know, when you, you can win a national championship at Division One in anything, you've accomplished yeah, absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, congratulations. Hey, stay in cocky. Let's yep. go. That's and, it. And how about if you if you have the coach and the players, you can win at any you level. Can. And an you indirect can. congratulations to Mickey Shadwick. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. Uh, that's big, right. big time entertainment. That's yeah. right. Oh, buddy, from, win for one, once again the visionary put it together. That's right. So, so the, the lady yeah. that Shannon is one of the greatest bowlers of of the of our time, and that's what's crazy. She was a professional bowler, and her husband was her coach. How about that? And so they're just – it's interesting to see them at work together every day and all yeah. that. And he's kind of a – he doesn't like to be in the forefront. He's behind the scenes. I don't know how that would work in my life, but yeah, he seems to handle tough. it very well as so far as I, that goes. how do you <clears> – what does a practice look like if you're on the bowling team? A lot of pins flying. Work? A lot of pins flying. <laughs> well, you know what I mean? How do they – you, I mean, you know, we even, even in – our, you know, in, in football or basketball or baseball, something we're a little more familiar with, practices vary coach to coach well, I mean, and, wh- and how they do it. But I kind of know what up, it looks you know, like. Like, for instance, like when we go bowl, wow. our only opportunity is, you know, we'll get these situations where we'll knock eight or nine pins down and we got one or two in a difficult spot. Yeah. So to your question, Bub, I wonder if they have drills where yeah. they do the, do they, you know. Do they work on a nine-one split? Uh, thank you. I mean, you that, know what I mean? Oh, that's oh, time yeah, yeah. I, that's I, a I, great I, question. Set one up. Do they have drills that of that's course. what they do constantly? I would think wow. you would have, the, like, all the lanes going down here. Down here, we're just working on it. We're, you know, we're getting lit. And down here, the different scenarios are set up. They already have the pins set up. Uh-huh. And you go down there and try to do the I things like you it. said. And, and do, uh, you, do you have a lot of conditioning? Do you have to work on your your I arms? And th- I mean, Craig. that's a that's a that's a heavy ball to throw. You know, it is. I mean, do you it have is. to do weight training? You do that. that? Or, uh, I think. I mean, I like that kickback. I thing. think there's yeah, definitely the follow through. There's lot, yeah. There's, there's definitely ones strength that don't put condition. the finger in the hole. They just twist it. Uh, yeah. Well, spin it. if you notice, yeah, let's not say twist. Spin all of the all of the good ones. Get back to corporate America. Yeah, they they bring the ball in at an angle. You know, they don't roll it straight. And I've always wondered about the physics of yeah. that. I've yeah. always been a straight shooter when it comes to that. Well, I, you know, I, can't I don't, do I don't the, have a wrist long enough, do this strong enough no, to I do can. that spin. I mean, that's, I've only I'm just glad not to fall down the line. You, know, three, you got to cradle it. Probably three times in my whole life. And, and rip it. But coming in at an angle apparently is better than straight on. Oh, right? yeah. yeah. The straight on will give you, leave you with a split a lot, I think. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Well, well that is right. incredible. Congratulations, Gamecock. Yeah. There you go. JSU. National champion. There you go. Big. Where are they going to build that place at? That's going to be tough. indoor tennis There's a parking lot room. right next to the courts currently. <laughs> there you go. Lanes and courts. Here we come. <laughs> First phone troll of the day. you got a lot to talk about, America. Ten lines available. You're up next. Dial us now. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Let's go uh, rapid fire. Uh, you want to go no timeouts? Uh, you, we can, uh, let's we can, hold the timeouts. Uh, we'll we'll hold the timeouts. It's yeah. just we're not, uh, you know, we're getting, the, the new thing now is Some because. y'all are so funny. It is. We've got a, now, got a guy now, that, or somebody's emailed that said that Bubba has now become uh, a uh, the the Democratic uh, politician we've all come to hate. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, y'all know that. That's him. <laughs> you talking about the one screaming build the wall? You know, uh, and, you know and near, what worries and near me, cause, right? Near cause chaos in Huntsville. <laughs> You know, you know what what worries me. Some people who who decided that that is the case now. I really worry about your judgment. Yeah, yeah. yeah you must yeah. not have good sense. Uh, to Gary, I mean to Nick. Uh, Nick, welcome. Not to that I'm Bubba talking show. down to anybody. You're right. Well, well you, you are kind of. You are, buddy. Uh, Nick, thirty seconds, buddy. Go ahead. Hey guys, I just want to say, first of all, I'm going to take one from Hambly's playbook and say uh, there's a lot of people out there doing some day drinking. <laughs> day drinking. <laughs> But I just want to know when we're going to hear from Tommy and Gary about this crap. Uh, well, I will tell you this. Uh, <laughs> I got a text from Gary yesterday, and here's exactly what it says. Hey, as my grandpa said, we in a mel of a hess. <laughs> <laughs> That's right there. That, that came from Gary yesterday. <laughs> we continue. Uh, let's go to Richard and Starkville. Let's do this on 96.1. Richard, 30 seconds, go. <clears throat> Hey, uh, I just want to 
ask a question like Bubba did earlier. Easy. Uh, and this is just a theory on. Sir, you scared him. I, did I scare you? You did. He hung up. I, oh my God, I just screamed easy. You what? socialist. You, you were just really messing up. <laughs> Brett. Oh, Bernie Sanders was there I for a minute. A, I'm a terrible one. I'm I-65, right. Brett, 30 seconds. Go. Come on, Bubba. We'll take you. <laughs> hey, guys. Uh, you know, holding to the spiritual context, you know, of, of what we believe, can we just can we just look at this from a, a spiritual standpoint and not a worldly standpoint and think that the cabal might be Satan himself? You know, speak speak to that. Well, you know, well, I, I, I think the church. I may go more uncomfortable than you want me to go. <laughs> uh, there are certain things that God Almighty is working out, and we are going. We are going to go at some point to a one world government. That is going to happen. Yep. Uh, and um, not that we like that idea. Not mm-hmm. that we're for that idea, obviously. But uh, it's going to happen, and it has to come to pass so that everything mm-hmm. else will happen. Can Can I ask this question again? Seriously, I, I just. I, I, <laughs> Can can, can, Easy, I, right? can I ask this question again? Mm. Where a lot the, of questions. Where where in the world <laughs> does the current society that we live in think that we don't deserve the wrath of God? Yeah. How do y'all think we don't deserve this? See, his wrath makes a lot more sense to me than his grace. His wrath, I go, yeah, I get that. His grace is the thing that's most perplexing, and that's kind of what you probably want to be begging for. Okay, because he, he, he is a loving and he can be a gracious God, but you got to know his entire personality. His wrath is going to come down, and sin is going to be eradicated, and all who stand with sin from this place, and this place is going to be refined by fire, and there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth, and you would think if we really believe that, we would live our lives much differently and probably prioritize the things we're working on, and maybe at least have as much passion for that as we do for some political movement. Yeah. To the, we'll continue. Uh, let's go to um, uh, let's go to David and Aniston. David. David, David, welcome to the Rick and Bubba Show. Thirty seconds. Go ahead. Thank you, sir. Love your show. Thank uh, you. I, I firmly believe that Antifa stormed the Capitol. Uh, they were the first ones that did. But our mindset in America today is. If they're doing it, we can do it. And, you know, you go back to what y'all originally say, you know, common sense is a superpower, and that's something that America don't have anymore. And that's what we're really lacking is, is common sense. Yeah, yeah, well, there's there's no doubt about that. I, if you want to say anything about if you think Antifa did it, you think Trump supporters did it, you think it was a hodgepodge of a lot of things, and you were saying, hey, man, and th- that was the thing to do, Again, you got to figure it out because now you're saying Antifa w- did the right thing. Please get we keep. I got to say that over and over because we got to get that right. But let's say you're pro the rush on on the Capitol. Uh, I would say to you it was ineffective. Now, Bubba and I, yeah, Bubba and I did say yesterday, uh, which uh, some I guess missed. Do I think the? I don't think that was the answer, and we made that clear. Here we go, 21 minutes past the hour. Patriot Mobile phone troll, make your phone money count by going to patriotmobile.com slash Bubba. Callers are standing by, 30 seconds a pop. At the end of 30 seconds, the buzzer will sound, uh, and then we will go to the next caller. No meaningless shout-outs, no shameless plugs. The real Greg Burgess on the phones. If you want to join us, you can. Uh, at 866 we be big uh, not only are some lines available because of the troll format, uh, barriers are a blessing. We'll move through them quicker. Tucker in Alabama. Tucker, you got 30 seconds. Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say if y'all saw what happened over the weekend at the Stronger Men's Conference in Missouri, there was a pastor that got kicked off stage after he called out uh, Pastor John Lindo for allowing a demonstration from a male stripper. Yeah, well, yeah, I, we're going to do that story next. Uh, we have the video and everything. It's Mark Driscoll, who, you know, has been a pretty controversial figure himself. Uh, and, yeah, we will cover that next. We are aware of it, and we're going to kind of unpack that in the next segment. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I do want to – well, we'll just talk about that. I, Very I, bizarre, uh, the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. I, th- I think us saying male stripper is, is not yeah. correct. 
it is it is correct that that was a bizarre presentation to yeah, have at a conference. Yeah. Uh, and we will talk about that because there's a lot of factors involved uh, that are that are quite interesting. Uh, if you want to join us, eight six six, we be big. You can, Jim in Prattville, I ninety two. Jim, go ahead. You got thirty seconds. Yeah, I make y'all feel younger. I, I attended Jacksonville State over fifty years ago. For wow. I didn't graduate, but at the time, Charlie Pell was the head football coach, sure. and Dieter Brock was the quarterback. Yep. Wow. Well, he was Ralph back then. They didn't call him Dieter. Yeah, yeah. I I'm remember. I, I went to his games, too. I remember when he played. It, uh, you, I'm with you there, brother. The only thing I can remember else, I can remember I stayed in Tutwiler. <laughs> wow. You know, Rick, the big thing I remember as a kid because the concession stands used to be in each end zone, and they had like a, a line that went back and forth. And then you, you got your food and you came out the other side. And when they kick extra points, it would go over the, the concession stand. Oh, yeah, you know? yeah. But if they were back about 30 yards, it'd go right into that line. And I remember as a kid seeing somebody holding like a tr- – it's, <laughs> it's terrible, but the way you were as a kid. Yeah. Somebody holding drinks and popcorn and all that, and they come out and the football bust them and stuff just go everywhere. I thought that was the greatest thing <laughs> ever when I was did. a kid. I mean, I, that was the highlight of the game for me to see somebody <laughs> get killed with a football in the line. You yeah, know? Uh, I, I remember being taken to a game as a kid. Uh, of course, you went home all the time because you lived there, and I was about what, <clears throat> about 20 minutes south of there. And I was taken to a game. They were playing Livingston when it was called Livingston at the time. Yep. And I and and, we're, and no exaggeration, and Bubba, you can speak to this even clearer than me. They they played on not even a big high school football field. It was just a high school football field that was average size. And I remember being there, and, and you know, and was, I guess and to see where it is now compared to them really is. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. What's the home side now? It used to be the Vister, and it had uh, wooden bleachers, and mm-hmm. oh yeah, you know they wasn't closed in. Uh-huh. So you uh-huh. would you would see all during the game some guy having to get down and crawl down under the bleachers because his girlfriend or date or sure. wife dropped something yeah. under underneath, and yeah. I can only imagine what it was like under there. Uh, join us now at 866-WE-BE-BIG-WES. Uh, the University of Alabama, with their new coach, had A-Day Saturday. Wes, welcome to the show. 30 seconds. Go ahead. Hey, guys. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, see what Dickie, Dickie had to say about the, the condition of the turf Saturday for A-Day. It was pretty rough. Yeah, oh, was it? Was it bad? I, 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 I'm not even aware, and I, I don't know. You, you know, know the grass kind of looked dead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So did you go, yeah. did you go Wes? No, I, I saw it on TV, and I thought, man, that, that looks pretty rough. Worst I've ever seen. Yeah, look. Was the gardener, did he leave with Saban? Do we know? Is that... <laughs> now, I saw I Roll know, Tide Willie on the sidelines of something. Really? Was that a practice or uh, on probably, Friday or something he was at? Maybe not a day, like the day before or something. It was know. it was around that. I don't think it was the actual game, but he was, Rick, he was on the, on the field, uh, which, you know, you just don't normally see that uh, access to Roll Tide Willie. I wonder what about Bama fans? You know, uh, did they have a good turnout? Did they like the product they saw? Apparently, they're not happy with the turf. I mean, like Bubba said, apparently the turf man has left and gone with Saban. <laughs> Somebody from Washington coming in and knowing how to do Southern turf. Yeah, road tide. Well, see, they don't water <clears throat> the grass in Washington. They got artificial yeah. turf. So I, right. I, I thought I heard maybe they like forgot to water. It. Seventy-two thousand were there or something like. that. I don't, I, I don't know. I could be wrong. Uh, I might have that number wrong, but I understand too that right after a day, they they put new turf on, so it might have kind of gone downhill. But there were some brown spots for sure. The years that Saban was there, the turf did not look like this, Calvin. <laughs> at Mississippi State, y'all might be familiar with bad turf, not at the Tide. Yeah. Uh, Chris in Alabama, go ahead. Morning, guys. How's it going? Good. To follow up the gentleman's call just a second ago. Uh, the reason why the turf looks so bad is they are experimenting with different kinds of turf because with the new playoff situation, they will have to host possibly in December. So they're trying to figure out what kind of turf will survive during the cold spells uh, so the grass will look nice if they host a playoff game on campus. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, well, there you go. I, I guess you I guess you would you know, need the to natural know. grass in December is tough. Um you have to reseed and all of that. But, I mean, we've seen bowl games. I know particularly one that I always remember was the Music City Bowl, you know, because oh, Nashville, it looked horrible. But they've gone to turf now, right? 
Um, yeah, by the way, are, are y'all jacked about college football season now with the 12-game playoff coming up? It's, it's, <laughs> it's, I mean, it's, it's real, you know. It's yeah. real. Uh, Patrick in Alabama. Patrick, 30 seconds. Go ahead. Um, last week, y'all played the Simon Garfunkel Baby Got Back song. I uh, heard one last night, the, the band Pentatonics, and I had one for their song Hallelujah to it, and it was hilarious. Are you okay, sir? Have you been running? <laughs> no, I was, I was uh, trying to get ready for work. I was outside. So I was okay. Oh, I got you. <laughs> yeah. I got you. Yeah, okay. I had that fast walk about yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, you just had the same little window. Uh, okay, he's talking about these mesh songs? Yeah. When they, okay. Uh, we comment, uh, let's go to Chad with a comment about, uh, the turf. Chad, go ahead. Yeah, I was, I was going to say the same thing the guy said before. They're just getting it ready for the fall. Cause they kind of go through that every year. But, um, as far as the attendance, it was just shy of 73,000. And I was highly impressed with the way the offense looked <laughs> and you could tell that it was a very base vanilla, like defense and offense. Yeah. Well, that's and it was just, what they normally it, do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was because, and there was a lot of rumors saying that they definitely didn't want Kirby Smart trying to figure out what. <laughs> you know, I, I was surprised watching Saban in the PR role. You know, he was gripping and grinning and oh, yeah. you know, coming yeah. to stuff and yeah. all that. Tim in Tuscaloosa. Tim, go ahead. Thirty seconds. Hey, the reason, the real reason why the turf was so bad is because they hosted the high school championships back in December, and that was about nine games if you count the flag games that were involved. So they can't pull up and replace the grass until the summer because they have spring scrimmages and everything else going on. The whole deal with the uh, championship playoffs, that's already been dealt with last year. They installed a heating system under the grass. I don't recall it looking that way when Saban was there. That's all I'm going to say in road tide. <laughs> By the way, you, you mentioned Saban. At some point, he was at the Masters. Yeah. And right. And, right and there was an interview, and he looked as fresh oh. and as lively of he, ever seen him. He like, shot him like a new dime. He yes. was happy. Yeah. He really was. Yeah. Well, you know why? Because he, he doesn't want to coach in this mess. Yeah. And, you know, it's one thing for you to leave and something, you know, and it still be like it was. See, him, him leaving football now, it was no sacrifice because the game he loved is over. Yeah. You know? Bottom of the hour, we'll come back. All right, we'll unpack this men's conference thing. A lot of people are sending in this. I'm getting text about it. You know, Mark Driscoll is a controversial character anyway. You might recall that. He's been on the show, right? Did I not just make that A long time ago when he had a book out. Yeah, Uh, yeah. Many years back. Uh, Bottom of the hour. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Do I think that the, the, the politicians and our government should have a healthy fear of the people? 100%. Uh, I one hundred percent think that, but but that was not. You talking answer. about tickling the dragon scale? Yeah, but that was not the answer, mm-hmm. right? I- ineffective is is one hundred percent right. It was not only ineffective; it is going to. This is why I am against it. It is one hundred percent going to hurt conservatives for a long time. It is going to hurt a uh, candidate in the future that is not a career politician because people can always point to this event as a negative. And it's a horrific day. And imagine, how, honestly, imagine how horrified and angry you would be if it was the other side that had stormed the Capitol building. Imagine that. It's not right, guys. We, we are supposed to be the side that has principles. We are supposed to be better than this stuff. That is Above that, it. We're supposed to be. That's who we're supposed to be. And, and, and in that moment, on that day, we, we failed at that. And it's going to hurt the conservative movement, it's going to be a net negative. It was ineffective. It was a bad thing. I'm yeah. sorry. That's and, how I feel. And I will say there are people that— And a president who stirred it up hours before. Yeah. Let's not forget that, guys. Yeah. As well, much that's... as we love Trump, he stirred the pot. Yeah, it, yeah, he, it I, had a different tone yesterday. Go go listen. Yeah, I, th- I think that—and I think, and I do, because I, I want to give him benefit of the doubt. I think that he thought it would be a Trump rally like any Trump rally, mm-hmm. and I think he did want to fire the people up. I'm, not, I'm not saying and he wanted, he, and he I'm wanted not saying, a mob outside the Capitol yeah, building, and yeah, I, which I, would have been fun. Yeah. And I think he 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 miscalculated. He did. The and we've the, all done it. The powder keg, and if you were like, I mean, let's face it, back in my days before Jesus, we've all the, been the, there. There were times that I remember. Yes. I remember this statement. I promise you, if he was honest, he would say it. Well, that got out of hand. Yes, mm-hmm. <laughs> I've left scenarios where I thought, wow, okay, yeah. that went a lot worse than I thought it did. Hey, well, that got out of hand. Yeah. Wow. Got away uh, from that, it. That, 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 I didn't mean for that to go that far. That, that got away from me there. <laughs> and and I haven't seen his speech yesterday, but yeah. apparently that his his countenance different tone seems like the for made, sure. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and that's and that's why you you have people saying that um, 
um, that they think it was Antifa because of what Aller just said, because it did do a negative yeah. number on the on conservatism. Mm-hmm. And and if you follow that logic, I can follow that logic, but we got to prove that that's really what happened. And, and Rick, if that's true, not to be condescending to anybody. <laughs> You don't Antifa, have another question, do you? Antifa and the anti-establishment people are hurting the Black Lives Matter movement, and they're hurting the Make America Great Again. So shouldn't we come together and, and, and call them? No, you're right. It <laughs> is it is inter- interesting <laughs> to say. I'm sorry, the question. I don't mean to be offensive. No, but, but I, I would say that uh, I could answer that question, but again... Easy. Bubba, we're going to go to Olive Garden today and make it all better. Hey, <laughs> Sam, we'll talk to you next. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Oh, that's good. We lo- Where was Y'all Sam? I ain't, I ain't that smart, okay? Yeah, I, Sam. I made a 19 on the ACT, and if I hadn't had a 31 in science, it would it, probably been 12. What can I tell you? I think that's what it is. Mm-hmm. I think people are getting mad that, you know, you're so stupid, but they think you're acting like you're smart. <laughs> I'm on all fair. I need to talk to you about that tone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Greg's going to give me a tone lesson. <laughs> hey, who'd you go take your tone lessons from? Well, I'll start talking to Greg about it. <laughs> tone uh, low. All right, so <laughs> we had – so Adam, I'm going to go ahead and go to Trump. It's COVID fog. We had – Sam, we need Sam. Sam was on – because they're all full now. Sam was on the line, and she said that we lost our minds and she wanted to set us straight, and then, Sam, we lost Where'd she go? I don't know. I, we were going to take your call, uh, and, and, and we lost you, so I, oh, right. I, I apologize for that. Tell you what, I'll do this. All right, Sam, I cleared one. Uh, oh, boy, let it yeah, real quick. Gone, yeah. Hey, uh, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Rick, I did find one more uh, symptom after you have COVID, though. It says you suddenly turn into a Democrat. <laughs> <laughs> you know and a little condescending. Yeah, you, you, your tone changes, <laughs> Rick, and you, you turn into a Democrat. Hey, All right, we go to Dr. Fauci. One of the things we've noticed uh, with people who are post-COVID, they establish a condescending tone. <laughs> Uh, they're very condescending. <laughs> they act smarter than they are. They act like. All right, so President Trump, and, and some of you that think that we're anti-Trump, you're about to hear Trump How sound. they a, say this show yeah. is anti-Trump? You're, you're, you're about to set, hear Trump sound amazingly <laughs> like the show, okay, for the last uh, two yes, days. You are. Uh, you are. So, Rick, are you going to have to play the drop of him saying it's the Rick and Bubba show? I did. I already played it Come today on. to try to get somebody off of us, and somebody <laughs> said that it was condescending to play it. <laughs> All right, so uh, so here is President Trump yesterday talking to America. I would like to begin by addressing the heinous attack on the United States Capitol. Like all Americans, I am outraged by the violence, lawlessness, and mayhem. I immediately deployed the National Guard and federal law enforcement to secure the building and expel the intruders. And Bubba show. We'll work our way back. Right, so as uh, we work our way back now, I don't think I have to uh, convince you that Israel needs us right now. Uh, over the weekend, Iran, drones and missiles uh, aimed at Israel. Um, and of course, you know, Ma owes Israel is a great organization. These are messianic uh, Jewish people that, uh, that like uh, the rest of us, uh, you know, we are the wild branch grafted in. Uh, and, of course, uh, we want to join uh, our brothers and sisters in Israel and help them uh, and stand with them against all who oppose them. And right now, boy, they really they, they need us. And I, I had people emailing, tell me somebody that y'all trust, that I, that I know I can get aid to the folks in Israel and all they've been through with the attack, uh, you know, back in October and, and what continues to go on. Now they're getting pressured by the world. I mean, it's coming from everywhere. So just go to IsraelNeedsMe.com and, and join us in making a positive impact. Uh, and, you know, the, uh, this this is a Jewish organization. As I said, they, they do believe that Christ is Messiah. Uh, they've been 50 years in operation, and uh, they, they make sure that the atrocities of, of the ongoing war and attack and um, you, you name it, to give hope to the people of Israel and just give them things like, you know, food, medical supplies, you know, children a lot of times need, need basic uh, things. So go to IsraelNeedsMe.com, IsraelNeedsMe.com. Or go to rickandbubba.com, and you'll find the link there under the sponsors. Uh, all right, so we had a caller uh, bringing this up. By the way, I want to update you on the tax thing. And when we're doing the tax deal, and this way it's been for you know the, the last 30 years, 
it's the check you're going to write today on the 15th. Yeah, the, it's, the pain it, of today, of the one-time today. pain. Not what yeah. you paid all through the year. Yep, we got that. You write a, tech, a, a check today on top of everything you've already paid to the federal government. Okay, and uh, does so that include state? Yeah, I mean, it, state it, and federal it, together. It, it, it can. How, be, how have we done the past few yeah, years? Yeah, yeah. Normally, yeah, it's just did. the total amount. The total yeah, amount. I'm good if you're that. writing a check today to taxes, what's the most? And now it's what a hundred and hundred twenty six thousand. A hundred twenty six thousand is. <laughs> Y'all, that's funny. So this is the um, this is the the now that's the walking dog. So if you if you're not paying more than that, no need to email speed. Speedy at rickandbubba.com. But if you're paying more than that, and of course we would ha- we'll help you by giving you a hundred dollars. Um, all right, so let's get to this deal involving, you know, Mark Driscoll has been quite the controversial character. Uh, this is a pastor that um, planted a church called Mars Hill. It became a super mega church. Then things kind of got uh, out of hand. There was a podcast series that people really got caught up in. That was what, a dandy. Was it called The Rise and Fall of Mars Hill? Yeah. And, you know, Mark, uh, you know, had some issues and people have different opinions on, on Mark Driscoll one way or the other. We had him on the show uh-huh. years and years ago. When he, when, when he wrote that. his marriage book, which also became a little controversial because yeah. he pulled no punches on that one. He sure uh, did. But, but anyway. Real graphic. Yeah. So, uh, so anyway, and, and he, he is, Mark uh, has, and he's been very effective, but Mark does come from the I'm coming in here to shock you world. He he loves to be shocking, and and he and he's he's been very good at that. Well, I I didn't even know that he was even back speaking places. I, I know that he did go back to being a pastor again after yeah. the Mars Hill deal. Yeah. Uh, I'm not familiar with this men's conference uh, at all. Uh, apparently, it was in Missouri. Uh, I'm also not familiar with the other pastor that is that is hosting it. Uh, the, that would be John Lindell. Uh, but anyway, and this, and I will say this, with what we do with themanchurch.com, I too am not a huge fan of things at men's conferences that I think are silly, campy, and not necessary. Circusy. I hate the circusy <clears throat> men's conferences. I, it's not my thing. And and of course, it, when we do conferences, we don't do any of that. We're we're here to study the Bible. We're here to he, uh, praise and worship God. And we're here to try to reach you and disciple you. And we don't pull any punches. That's what you're getting into when you come. Uh, we're not going to have some of these bells and whistles things that, you know, just like I noticed in the background, they've got some motorcycle up on the screen and all that. that I, I don't like when we start trying to suggest that, that how to be a man is anything other than being a devout follower of Christ. What Christ calls men to is, is frankly, such a call most of us aren't mad enough to do it. And, and that's the bottom line. I don't really need to be shown, you know, lumberjacks and people climbing mountains and lifting weights and, you know, and, 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 and you know, all this. It's, it, it really doesn't can't, fit. It's you know, really. You know, I mean, camo. And, and I, lo- I lo- look, there's a lot of things that men do that I enjoy and I do them, but it doesn't make me a man. As a matter of fact, I know some really strong, uh, by the world standard, tough men that, you know, served in special forces and can – you know, run for miles on end, can kill people with their bare hands. Uh, they hunt, they fish, they climb mountains, and they're not worth a dime spiritually. <laughs> it, do, it doesn't make them a man of God at all. Now, are those things bad? No. If they're under the authority of Christ, they're fine. But they don't make you a man. But anyway, I digress. So it looked like something along those lines. Well, for some reason, and I don't understand why, uh, I, I want to clarify this, though. I don't think this is a literal Meryl Stripper. I think what you had is a guy doing feats of strength yeah. on a pole, and he took his shirt off. Yeah, I was going to say shirtless. Now, do I think this presentation was appropriate for a men's conference? I do not. Is he a stripper? <laughs> he is not. But everybody keeps saying that they actually brought out a male stripper, from what I can gather. So oh, that's a stripper move there. Yeah, and well, and and Driscoll does his thing where he He's says strong. I think. He, he is very strong. It had a magic mic look to it. It, it does. It yes. yes. Let me let me be clear. This presentation is completely inappropriate. Yep. I don't care who it is. Mm-hmm. However, and you've heard us talk about this a lot on the show about Matthew eighteen. John Lindell, when Mark Driscoll had his time on the stage, he began to call out 
the conference and the presentation as completely inappropriate and inviting the spirit of Jezebel into the conference. And he really, really goes off on that. Where, where you're going to hear John Lindale, he calls out, this is not appropriate, Mark. You didn't come to me about this. And, and we find out later, he said, I had a conversation with Mark for 30 minutes, and he never mentioned his disgust with this. And so John Lindell says, I'm taking issue with the way you're handling it, not what you're saying. That conversation should have been with me, and then I would decide if I was going to let you go out there or not. But yeah. you could have come to me and said, John, what you're doing is inappropriate, which I would agree with. What yeah. Mark's saying, I agree with. The, I, what, what, the way he went about it, John Lindell said, this is not what the scriptures tell us to do. You know, inappropriate, just bizarre. Yeah, you know, it really it, it is just, bizarre. Uh, I mean, we've seen things at, yeah. at other things, and we've been at some that had – you know, other things going on, but mm -hmm. I don't know. It was just kind of weird. Well, looking, you know? yeah, there's some things like you said, Bubba, that you look at and go, well, this is kind of silly and campy. Yeah. This is weird. I mean, this is, if I was a man in the audience, I'd be like, what are we doing? Yeah. And, uh, it's and so uncomfortable. The setup alone, yeah. it looks like it, it took some setup. So yeah. I don't know that that surprised anybody. Well, so you gotta... what you're going to hear is you're going to hear Driscoll take, take issue. Yeah. And then you're going to hear John Lindell say, hey, Mark, this is not appropriate to do it this way. And he says, I received that, and he walks off the stage. Yeah. And then John comes out and said, let me tell you why I said that. He should have come to me first. And by the way, that is true. Yeah. So I, I understand both men's point of view here. Now, but do he, I have to watch this? You will, I'm, I'm you will be yes, so uncomfortable. This oh. is. What have I, done I can't wrong? imagine you being in this crowd. Yeah. Okay. Look the at the front row. Check the front row out. Yeah, the front row's got quite a view. Guy kind of looks like Speedy. He's got a yeah. shaved head. Yeah. He's jacked. By the way, don't miss though when Driscoll <laughs> makes his point and John Lindell takes over. The crowd gets goes after John Lindell. They do. Bit. Yeah. They do. All right. So here we go. Oh no. But let me do this. Um, I've been up since one o'clock in the morning. The reason I'm hoarse is I have been praying for you and my heart is very burdened for you. It's magic Mike. You're right, Helms. And I want to be very careful with this and it's not what I want to say, but the Jezebel spirit has already been here. The Jezebel spirit opened our event. This is a rebuke and a correction of no one. This is an observation. Before the word of God was open, there was a platform. It was a high place. On it was a pole, an ashram. The same thing that's used in a strip club for women who have the Jezebel spirit to seduce men. In front of that was a man who ripped his shirt off like a woman does in front of a pole at a strip club. That man then ascended. See, our God is not arrogant. He doesn't ascend. Our God is humble. He descends. And then he swallowed a sword and Jesus cried, okay, Pastor John, I'll receive that. Thank you. Say so you're done. You're done. So here's the crowd, uh, and then John's coming up to talk. See the motorcycle in the background? I think that's so corny. All right. Speedy, you okay? No, I'm a wreck. Oh, they're mad. Yeah. He said, Mark is out of line. So you see that. What? It, but that is wow. wow. All right, now, I didn't catch this the first time I watched it. You see Driscoll try to get around Matthew 18 by saying this is not a rebuke. Mm -hmm. This yeah. is not a yeah. correction. Yeah. It's an observation. He yeah. tried to get around it. 
But John Lindell I'd like to that. know when they when he said we spoke for 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. Was that because it sounds like they that opened the event, then he and then the next morning. So Mark, did they talk that night, that morning? Like yeah. I'd like to know some more yeah. details. It's clear that Mark was speaking on Saturday, and this had happened on Friday night. Yeah. But yeah, I'm like you. I don't know when that conversation took place. Speedy, you look good. You got some good moves, buddy. You okay? I'm a mess. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. America is and must always be a nation of law and order. The demonstrators who infiltrated the Capitol have defiled the seat of American democracy. To those who engaged in the acts of violence and destruction, you do not represent our country. And to those who broke the law, you will pay. We have just been through an intense election, and emotions are high. But now, tempers must be cooled and calm restored. We must get on with the business of America. My campaign vigorously pursued every legal avenue to contest the election results. My only goal was to ensure the integrity of the vote. In so doing, I was fighting to defend American democracy. I continue to strongly believe that we must reform our election laws to verify the identity and eligibility of all voters and to ensure faith and confidence in all future elections. Now Congress has certified the results. A new administration will be inaugurated on January 20th. My focus now turns to ensuring a smooth, orderly, and seamless transition of power. This moment calls for healing and reconciliation. 2020 has been a challenging time for our people. A menacing pandemic has upended the lives of our citizens, isolated millions in their homes, damaged our economy, and claimed countless lives. Defeating this pandemic and rebuilding the greatest economy on Earth will require all of us working together. It will require a renewed emphasis on the civic values of patriotism, faith, charity, community, and family. We must revitalize the sacred bonds of love and loyalty that bind us together as one national family. To the citizens of our country, serving as your president has been the honor of my lifetime. And to all of my wonderful supporters, I know you are disappointed, but I also want you to know that our incredible journey is only just beginning. Thank you, God bless you, and God bless America. I don't know who that was, but whoever it is is anti-Trump. Uh, I, mean, I, don't, I don't know who that yeah, guy is. Whoever that guy is, he, he, he turned to, he's a Democrat now. Why do I feel like Trump's tied up in a closet somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> and Dave has took over. They've, they've rolled some out there and computer generated. I don't, I don't know whether that was the, was that right off the show yesterday? I mean, Thank this you. is I'll tell you, if, if uh, Trump had made more of his speeches like that, he would have won in a right. lot. I will right. say this. Right. If he decides to run again, and I said this from the very beginning, so it's not a new new thing, uh, we've got to fix the deviated septum. <clears throat> It's like he can't get air. Uh, but I'm with you, Bubba. That countenance. Yep. yep. Now, if that, that would have sold better in, in some places. Yeah. And uh, so, not like old, you know, coach speak Trump. No, no. So, well, you, a lot of people couldn't deal with well, it. Well, you can yeah. do both, but you know what you got to learn is to discern the moment you're yeah, in. Yeah. You got to learn uh, to discern the moment you're in. And but he, if you're mad at us because of what we said, you now have to be mad at your president. No doubt. We asked yeah. questions. Period. I can't get End of answer. story. You I don't be care done who with you it. are. You have to be. You. He has said in that two minute speech the exact same things that we've been saying for days. It, like I guess I was taken back by the would you put him sorry on to call. be so condescending. Um, yeah, Hams. Wow, you're nah, way out there. Yeah, everybody's gracious. gonna be talking about you. Let Send an email right uh, to speedy at rickandbubba.com. Hey, Hamza, you and Bubba need to work on your tone. Yeah, um, a lot of tone needs to be worked around. A lot of tone. <laughs> Pump up the bass. Tone I'm, me. I'm, uh, slow, I'm slowly turning into the nice guy on the show. I know it's a position uh, that none of us are used to. You only to. take I, so much. I don't even know what to do with it. Yeah. <laughs> well, how should I dress? <laughs> 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 I, I do want to say this too, and just well, I'm trying I to take some heat off Bubba. Well, I'm that, trying to take some heat off you. Say what you want to say, man. Bubba, I think you've said so much. Right now, there's a time you're not going to be able to speak. No, look, I love President Trump. I still love sure, President yeah, Trump. Absolutely, I, I love his policies. I think he probably hurt himself with the uh, with some people the way he uh, spoke directly, and uh, some people couldn't deal with it. But um, I mean, I, 
Yo, know, I, I mean, I've, I've had a conversation with him twice, face-to-face, twice on the phone. Uh, led a rally. I, I was chanting, lock her up, build the wall. I mean, yeah. I, I'm all in. <laughs> uh, You've seen that hair up close. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I've got Don, Jung, Don Jr.'s phone. I could call him. I got his cell number. Right. I mean, I, I'm not anti the trunks. Well, it sounds no. like it, huh? you, you've kind of, we've all kind of talked kind of like the way whoever this guy was. It just, right. Oh, sorry. That was yeah. Trump. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> but, uh, I could tell but, by his hair. Okay. <laughs> but get get this. Okay. From the chat room again. James Reynolds. But wait, I'm going to get out of that chat. No, no. no, no I want you room. to hear this. I want you to hear this. Big fan. But a lot of the show is promoting the left agenda this morning. Unbelievable. How, I don't how, know. how you I, get I, that I, out of what we've discussed is asinine. <laughs> We're back eight minutes to the top of the hour, so there you go. That's one of the big stories today. So, uh, and uh, getting emails and opinions on that, that's fine. That's uh, something to discuss, but for Speedy, I can't imagine what it would have been like to have been there. Um, but oh. <laughs> anyway. You kidding me? You're right. And, uh, you know, Driscoll's always been known as a corner cutter when he wants to stay high fields. But, but anyway, so there it is. And by the way, Greg and Bob both said, I did not realize that uh, apparently Larry David is the faster yeah, than Yeah. I, mean, I, I thought it was. Yeah. I thought it was an episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm. <laughs> right, 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 right. I just want to make sure I got all the, the bases touched here. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. So we have Friday night, as we think. We have. No, I, I, I'm, I'm, I feel almost 100% okay. sure about it. We, we have the. the the gentleman come out and I guess illustrate says it how, opened the conference. How, how strong? You mean the spirit of Jezebel? Yeah, thank you, uh, Bubba. Feet of strength, kind of thing. Like I, how I, how strong. There's so he many is. other ways you could show that. I don't. Like, I don't know how, how anybody ever got in a meeting, watched this guy's act, and said, "Let's start the conference with that." Yeah, because I got to yeah. tell you, the Where setup. Did they first see the right? setup alone, somebody would have to have said, "What now? What's this for?" Now I, he starts off by peeling his shirt off one button at a time, right. and then he sashays around the pole. Yeah. I mean, the, the whole. What happened to just tearing up a phone book? Yeah, but I'm anyway, so, so that happens. Then the next morning, it's addressed. Where's the power team? But the My last goodness. Way. Can we just bring in the power they team? They always right. had the strength a, Was it a different day that he had? Yes. That, that's what it was the day, day before. Because listen to what Driscoll said. He said, I couldn't sleep last night. Okay. Uh, wor- yeah. Worried about it. He did. And I'm yeah. hoarse because I've been praying all night against this. Right. So he says that, but then the pastor comes out and takes issue with it, saying Correct. he never brought that up in you our private meetings. You should have told me privately first. He surprised me with this on stage. Correct. And when Driscoll walks off, well, who who shouted what? I couldn't hear. That's the audience. That no, John Lindell said to him, "This is inappropriate." Mark, oh, go go. You're That's done. who was hollering. Yeah. Okay. And then the audience did not like Lindell kicking Driscoll off the stage, so he tries to address that. Mm, and I, got yeah, because look, we we've all been part of so many. I, I guarantee you that you come in on Friday night. This is a standard men's conference format. You come in on Friday night. There's speakers and there's praise and worship, and apparently a stripper. Uh, on <laughs> not a stripper, but I mean, he, it did he, look like that. He, Magic he, Mike was there. Whatever. Yeah. On Friday night, they kicked it off. Look, I went to one one time where they had a guy kick off a conference, and he was standing on a bunch of boxes. I mean, that it was a little bit strange. I did, but but he had his all his clothes on and all he that. Was just That's standing good. on. What box? was he doing on boxes? Did he, he fall he, through? He would them? stack up chairs. That's what it was in boxes balance. and stand oh, okay. on them. Oh, balance. Like, yeah. yeah, I'm not a huge like Bubba said, and he's the same way. I'm not. Well, don't let me speak for you, but it sounds like he you swallowed were. a sword. I don't. Too, I don't though. like turning it into a circus. I mean, I don't need bellow. I mean, let's let's get down to why we're here. I, I, I it, it, this all that stuff is. It just, <laughs> Where was the uh, unicycle and plates yeah. being spun? Yeah, yeah. yeah. what's that? That, that, that lady Asian lady, lady this all game. Mm, yeah, right. Well, even even if you go into the you know the the, the little off of the message entertainment, sure, do something appropriate. That, that was a that was a, bit, that was a bit odd. No, I no, no, the whole thing. That's the I'm whole sorry. thing was odd. Okay, yeah, that, you that, you can come up to somebody and say, hey, Rick, uh, <laughs> I know I know that axe throwing and you know, chainsaw, th- chainsaw. Stuff. And he did three, eventually three, swallow yeah, sword. Hey, three on three basketball. You know, <laughs> oh, yes, motorcycles. Is. That that's not your thing. Or uh, we've got you know an, an archery guy, and that may not be your thing. But there's nothing inappropriate no. about that. No, that may just not be the way you do it. This doesn't pass any test. Mm. I mean, even I've if always you, liked the eras. Uh, yeah. people shooting aspirin. You know, with their bow <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. but what I'm talking about. If you're even a, we want there to be some sort of entertainment. At our men's conference, 
how does this pass anybody's test? Uh, People have different ways they want to do conferences, and that's fine. No, but but this is this one doesn't pass a test of any no, kind. No, Greg, I no. start off by taking my shirt off. Hey, right. He does, Greg. You nailed it. He slowly <laughs> unbuttons his shirt. It's leather. And man. watch his sachet around the pole. He sachets. He sachets. Look at look at this. Here he uh, this move hurts a lot. That move hurts a lot. Right there. Let me let me say let me say where the disappointment is, and this is now he's strong. This is why men's ministry is so important right now, and doing it biblically. Those men, none of them stood. Mark Driscoll should have never had to say one thing. Yeah. Those men in the audience and every pastor that was there should have stood up and says, this cannot go on. This cannot continue. I'm sorry. Y'all might have meant well by this. We cannot sit here and allow this to take place. That's what but, I was about and, to try and just to ask. object. Just completely yeah. object. So Somebody get so Channing Tatum out of here. You're yeah, probably sitting there somewhat stunned at what you're seeing, you're right. and you're, you're thinking, right. well, how are they going to bring this home? Right. You know, and you kind of right. wait for the right. big finale yeah. to go. I guess that was my What's shock, that? is that maybe Friday post, uh, there wasn't a statement or Friday or Saturday morning before Driscoll ever goes up. It's, it's addressed, but he's the first one to mention it. It looks like on one stage? of those, one of those things where somebody messed up and like you had a booking agent that books both acts and you're they right. sent each act to the wrong place. <laughs> you're right. No, that's yeah. you're, you're right. 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 And, and, and the other, oh, no, you weren't like, supposed to go to that. But I think the shock factor is right. Like I, I have, and there's some, a stage somewhere where somebody's preaching. <laughs> exactly. Right. Exactly. You're right. <laughs> there's some guy going, "What am I doing?" Or breaking baseball. <laughs> yeah, 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 whatever. Yeah. Well, he, he looks up and there's a pastor somewhere at Cirque du Soleil going, yeah, "What yeah. am I doing?" Right. There's, there's a pastor at a bachelorette right. party. Right. Yeah. <laughs> But but anyway, there's people holding up dollar bills and he's reading out, of, <laughs> out of Luke. That's so good. But I, like I know a friend of mine that went to some sort of men's gathering, oh, me. and he said he was sitting there, and he he said there is a shock factor. Now he left, but he says I was in such shock. I look back, I probably should have said something. He said all of a sudden when the main speaker starts dropping f bombs, Rick, and, and he said he said I'm sitting there, and the first time he did it, I'm like, what? Did he just I don't and, think. And, and the guy starts, and then he starts. Well, I won't go into it, but he oh, starts wow. saying things that are very lewd mm-hmm. uh, and starts tying scripture to it. And and, well, and, and and this guy got up and left. And then he can what, what about when you he sent a complaint in and everything? But he said there is a moment where you kind of go, am I hearing and seeing what I think I am? Mm-hmm. Well, so they made us been in shock. What about when you invite a celebrity to come and, and be your guest speaker for the Sunday service and they start talking about magic crystals? Thank you, Bubba. Oh, boy, I remember that. <laughs> Thank you, Bubba. Good gracious. <laughs> Are you having a men's <laughs> gathering in the speaker because everybody I'm loves sorry. sports? This is when I got away from all this yeah. kind of stuff. And the speaker actually says the following is because Jesus doesn't make us fully righteous. Mm. To which Andy Blanks whispered to me, I think that's the gospel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he was trying to t- that one. he was trying to talk about sanctification and he got kind of tripped up. Yeah. And uh, so it's and see, I think the, the the sad part about this is why the men did not erupt is because I think they put a certain trust into the pastors that put these things together well, I, that yeah, they must know what they're doing. I, I think if I would have been sitting there, I would I would be like, this is odd, but they're, how are they going to bring right. this home? Yeah. And then it never came home. No, it didn't. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. It is complete asinine. My I mean, kids are in school. I'm, I'm letting loose. Can I ask you this? This is ridiculous. How can I say that that's just stupid without sounding condescending? <laughs> Thank you. I know. Well, my I, plan was to get Ham fired up because I knew he well, would come worked. across a bigger ass doing. than me. Yeah. I see what well, you're doing. Yeah, Good so. luck. Did you just say? He did. What quarter did. is this? Which quarter? <laughs> we're not even, we're not even great, past the, the 12 working I'm days of Christmas. <laughs> Look, and I know it's going to emails because now I'm finally getting some good. Don't, don't no, no, I'm finally getting some good ones. And I'm going to be the last person. I know this sounds like a joke that everybody's already told, but I somehow missed it. And I, never mind. That's Tell funny. it. Somebody sent a good one, but I know we've already said it and somebody else said it. But oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Greg. We repeat Greg. things all the time. About him discovering his parents voted Democrat in the recent election. He's so upset that he's decided to never visit their graves again. <laughs> That is a good one. I had heard that one. I just that's thought good. we'd already been out. Yeah, that's great. Well, that's I love well, Thank that you, one. Chuck. That's a dandy. The, the last thing I saw was Trump, uh, Pence will be there. Trump will leave the White House the day before because he wanted to fly home on Air Force One, and it would not be available the day of the inauguration. <laughs> that, that's what I heard. Okay. Seriously. Serious business. Let's go to. I, I don't know if that's true or not. Let's you don't think Don's got some other planes he can fly on? <laughs> 
I mean, he's the billionaire. He said he won't take the Air Force One. One, one last one, time. Hey, one more ride around the block. Guys, let's huh? face it. He's the one that says, I'm going to use the company's cell phone as much as I can until they take <laughs> hey, what is this? <laughs> what is this yesterday about <laughs> him? I need help here, too. He wants to pardon himself. I heard that I'm yesterday, sorry. too. I think if any of us could pardon ourselves from things, no, he, probably would. I don't know what he was even going to well, do it for, but he yes, was even charged. If you yet. remember no. back when the uh, impeachment thing was going on, this debate come up about can a president pardon themselves? Yeah. And you remember there was some of these uh, uh, legal eagle people said, no, you can't do that. And the others were saying, well, where does it say he can't do that? And some of them said, well, he would need to resign the day before, let Pence become the president, and then let Pence pardon him. Okay. Because I think Trump, and honestly, legitimately so, feels like that someone in the incoming administration will go after him unfairly or his family to try to hurt them. Sure. They've already done it once. Yeah, uh, th- okay, have. so I, that's a legitimate concern of his. Um, I don't know if he can write himself one or not. Who I don't think anybody's that was out there that. yesterday. Yeah, I know, I know. It's it's a good question. Birthday hat lady, go. You're on. Oh hey, hey, I love you guys. Thank you, birthday I was hat in lady. Washington. I was in Washington Wednesday in that group. Uh, we went up there uh, to support President Trump. I, we were at the Washington Monument. President Trump spoke at the Washington, he spoke behind the White House, down there, I think they call it the Eclipse area. He did not speak from the Capitol. That's a fact. Uh, Knowledge is power. I'm going to tell y'all the facts that I know. If I speculate, I'll say I think. But I'm not going to waste time telling you what I think. Uh, Trump spoke. I could not hear everything he said. Everybody was in good mood. He wasn't throwing things down. The mayor had one porta potty, four blocks from the Capitol. And it filled up fast with no paper. Mm-hmm. They T- did not T- want TMI. Yeah, TMI. Mm-hmm. Right, so, um, all the details. And on the way up there, on the bus, our leaders, and we were Christians. So we, were, we are Christians. And we, on the way up there, we were told we are getting word from people already there. They had contact with people already there. That Antifa is there. That they're in Trump clothes. They were selling it everywhere. And if they are going to instigate trouble. Do not get involved in that. That's not what we're about. We understood that. Yeah. We know that. Yeah. They pushed us hard for four years. They called us names for four years. Uh, that's a fact. That's knowledge. Okay, thank you. Uh, well, the only, the only thing, birthday hat lady, I'm glad the bus driver told y'all not to participate. Probably needed that up there on the big stage. <laughs> yes. and, and, I don't, and I don't think it matters. The birthday hat lady hasn't been here. I don't, I don't know if anybody yeah. said Trump was speaking in front of the Capitol. Well, we cleared it up. Yeah, but but anyway. Well, I mean, you could see what was behind him. I, I don't. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't mean to be condescending. You know, you just be quiet. Uh, Nick in Jeff. Alabama. <laughs> Nick, go ahead. You've offended enough people in two days. <laughs> I, I Morning, gentlemen. I, uh, I, I just want to let the, mainly the listeners know that do not want to believe that the Trump supporters were the ones that went in the building. I've got a friend who is a Metro Transit police officer there in Washington D.C. Uh, he's worked the inauguration. He's worked all the marches, everything that has happened up there uh, in D.C. He's been there. He's a major Trump supporter, loved Trump to death. While all this was going on, I texted him. I said, hey, brother, and I will paraphrase, so don't worry about me saying anything I shouldn't say. I said, hey, brother, what's going on up there? I said, are the Trumpers the ones storming the building, or is it Antifa? And his response to me was, unfortunately, it's the Trumpers. So I I knew right then, uh, he and I have had some in-depth conversations about all the stuff that has been going on up there and has been for the past four years. That's not his normal language. Um, But I knew when he said, unfortunately, that, that it was bad. Yeah, well, and and you know, and, and we'll we'll hash this out as we go. And and again, I go back to the foundation of of all of this. Before you get into who it was, who it wasn't, combination, whatever, establish first and foremost were you for or against the the charge on the Capitol, and then you have to work yourself way out from there. Because if not, you get yourself in a bind a little bit. So just keep reminding everybody. First of all, decide for yourself. Do you think that was the right thing to do? And then after that, you can then try to figure out who you think it was or who it wasn't.
six minutes past. Glad to be uh, kicking off another hour with you, America. I hope you'll join us. Speedy, the real Greg Burgess, Helmsy, Eddie Van Adler, all here today. Buffalo Wild Wings, Rick and Bubba Charity Charge going on in Sweet Home, Alabama. Uh, so go out and participate. A new Rick and Bubba University, the podcast out this weekend. Go grab that wherever you get podcasts if you haven't already. And welcome back, Bill Bubba Bussy. Rick, glad to be here. Thank all of you for joining us. It is the little party we called Rick and Bubba. Oh, Bubba, Bubba, Bubba. A uh, new, new leader uh, on the uh, tax day uh, challenge. A $100 uh, check written to this person to help them with their tax burden. Where are we at, Speedy, now? 214000 hey. and change. <clears throat> 214000 Yep. They just keep squeezing us, Bubba. I don't know why they want to squeeze us. Mm. <clears throat> And as we said, they're such good students. You got to write it today. Yeah, right, just yeah. think, think about all the things you could do with that. Oh my God! Oh yeah. You talking about the, to a flat tax? I mean, invest, hire people. You know, put it back into circulation. I mm-hmm. know it's just it's mind boggling. It's like inflation's hit taxes too. Right. I mean, has, everybody owes this. Well, year. well, hey, Speedy, if you have got every kind of program known to man that you got to fund, mm-hmm. and a deficit that's as big as Mount Everest, I mean, <laughs> you, you got four you, you got, trillion. You, in you, it, you got you got to squeeze the public. I remember. For more. I remember yeah. when we were just tore up and co- very concerned about nine trillion, mm-hmm. nine, and mm-hmm. we're at thirty four now yep. and growing. And we don't seem to really be learning. I mean, it, it's no. like we're what we keep saying to the government. I would say Republican and Democrat is we just keep saying oh, we'll have another police. You know that 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 that, that FISA thing. They the Republicans crumbled on it. I mean, I thought I thought they were going to let it expire, and didn't then it end up that they let it expire? That everybody started voting. I don't know. Yep. I didn't follow it. Yeah, I hung I, it up yep. for the weekend. Yeah, I started seeing some folks that. Uh, so that, we that we crumbled. still have the FISA, or yep. we don't? I think we still do, and 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 a lot of Republicans crumbled. If if I heard that right, and I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. Uh, but anyway, um. All right, so let's uh, let's talk about this one, Bubba. People have been emailing. They wish been you were wrong on this one. Yeah. <laughs> Bubba, have you seen? Oh yes. Yeah, have sure you seen it, buddy? You just want to say it, or you well, want us to say it? Well, you know, Rick, I, I when I saw this, I started laughing because I thought, well, this is just part and partial of the Minnesota Vikings and their continued oh. uh, exercise in absolute, you know being no good at all um u.s bank stadium is where the vikings play sorry buddy plans to be a completely kill-free stadium by switching entirely to plant-based meat now didn't we just have stories this week the plant-based meat is bad for you bad idea that's so Um, viking like to not have that information before they announce this (laughs) you know I've been to that stadium. It's very lovely uh, outside. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. Really nice. It'd be like it's like right, impossible. It's though. right downtown, and uh, you know, in walking distance of most of the hotels. Uh, all ice cream, cheese, and condiments will be replaced with dairy-free options as well. The Vikings will be the first NFL team to have a completely vegan stadium. And wow. what are they calling it? Kill-free menu? Kill-free, yeah. Meaning no yeah, animals they, were killed. The, you're the, the Vikings! Going, the way, yeah, I started saying. You're the saying. Vikings! They were pelts. They it, killed everything! It, it goes against the whole mascot. It goes against everything. Well, it goes uh, against any... I mean, no. do they think that the, that big crowd comes and wants to eat that? No. No. I this mean, is they, them forcing it on somebody well, again that don't want it. They're the Vikings. I, I, I predict there'll be such an uproar they'll have to change it. Yeah. Are they going to change the Even mascot the to the fairies? Yeah, well. well right. This will be worse than the school lunches. Obama I mean, you're the Vikings. Yeah. It's the same thing. Yeah. Listen, if it's you want to offer that as an option, hey, have at it. But if that's all you offer. Look, if you want to do The comments on this are very funny. If you have time to, to go to X today and read the comments. Uh, imagine paying $54 for a vegan burger while rooting on the Vikings. Oh, my goodness. Bubba, Bubba, Bubba. You better put in extra bathroom. If you want to do a <laughs> kill-free menu for the soccer team, do they have one? Well, they got a kill-free uh, schedule now. So, oh, you know, Bubba. So. Are, you saying, <laughs> are you saying if you play the Vikings, they already are kill-free? Bubba. They're not a threat to anybody. Bubba, don't be like this. Token Bubba. opposition most of the time. Well, uh, well. Mm. A kill-free menu at a football game. Do you see what's wrong with this country? You know, a lot of people football say... Football fans are eating vegan burgers? Rick. Football fans, not, not having as a choice, forcing everyone to eat them? 
Rick, I don't know, but I heard this is one of the reasons that uh, the former quarterback wanted to get out of there <laughs> and leave. And he, he wanted to go to, south where they barbecue. And he yes. came to Atlanta where they, they barbecue mm-hmm. all the time. Yeah, yeah. So be. Kirk now Cousins, he's food. out. He heard this was coming and said, I'm out. I don't blame him. I you think either. Mike Lindell's going to hey, eat a vegan burger? Kirk, Kirk, Kirk Cousins to get away from this. Yeah, we, this actually, this we're going to see if it was him or the Vikings. But, but Mike Lindell's going to eat a vegan burger. Mike Lindell. No. He ain't going to eat a vegan burger. I I have... I'm going to, Rick, step out here without knowledge, you know, which we do many times. I'm going to say that the people in the booths are not going to be eating the same thing. Oh, that up they're in the feeding the mass. I'm going to say Mike Lindell. And, and if they're not, they'll yeah. be bringing in their own buckets. Mike chicken. Lindell will have a My Burger sitting right out front right, for will. everybody to <laughs> get on the way in. Will. It'll be 100% meat. Yep. But it just goes against guys. This is that, football. This goes against the mascot. Sheets. It goes against the sport. It goes against the state of Minnesota, or as the locals say, Minnesota. Minnesota. Um, it's just this is what just a bunch of candy. I <laughs> thought the Vikings could not be any more embarrassing than they are. Oh, you were wrong. But oh, was I wrong? And with two number one draft picks coming up, they could even make me more embarrassed. Who knows? Oh, yeah. Let's see yeah. how that goes. Did y'all say that they're also replacing all ice cream, cheese, and yes. condiments yes. with yes. dairy-free yes. options? Yes. Y'all said that As a matter of fact, that exact Let sentence. Me ask, do yes. they want to, My <laughs> gosh. Do they want to sell absolutely nothing? Is that their goal? I we don't want so. to sell any concessions. I, well, why, they don't want to win any games. Why Evidently. Bubba, Bubba, bring, yeah, Bubba brings up vegan burgers. Alan and, Page is embarrassed. And then oh. dairy, dairy. Carl Eller is mad. The Jim Marshall people. is furious. He, he may run the wrong way again. That's right. <laughs> and then, then dairy free things. Can y'all imagine? This is a dome too. Do you realize how many people does it hold? Does anybody know? Seventy thousand, probably. A little less, oh, maybe sixty-five. Sixty something. Sixty-five thousand. How big a dome? Less. How big a dome we got here? Yeah, you realize how much farting we're gonna have? Rick. All these foods make you break large oh, wins. They're known for that. Large wins. Bubba, 66. are you officially done with them? Does this make you That's officially done? This might be the dumbest I've, thing I've look, ever heard. I've been done with them a long okay. time. You're I talking just, about getting heady? I, I just, you know, I hang around and just would like to see them try to do something that looks like NFL football, yeah, but it's yeah. just hard. It's a mouth to, ulcer for you. It, it is. It yeah. is. I, I'm really, I'm, I got a Chiefs it. hat for Christmas. I've been wearing it. <laughs> Guys, yeah. but this is Converting. bigger. This is bigger than the Vikings. Oh, it really yeah. is. This is the state of our country uh-huh. yeah, it that is. a stadium that hosts a football team called the Vikings can even get away with this and say it publicly right because unless i'm wrong and i don't think i am there's no way financially this is feasible turn out for them, but uh, they did it anyway did that's it anyway. the scary part. it's feel goodism with the they vikings did it anyway. and football. It, it does seat uh 73 000. 66 8 for most home games slightly more than the metrodome so a day had that many. they can't expand it to yes. 73 000 for concerts and special events like a super bowl uh, I'm picturing a so guy 66, in a Vikings eight. helmet that really was out of the loop and didn't know this going to the concession stand trying to order yeah. something. Or, uh, can you uh, imagine like, what? Polish, a Polish you, sausage hot you, dog. You've yeah. seen the people in the stands. They're dressed like Vikings. Oh, yeah. Okay, they they look rough. They got beards. They got horns on their helmet. You know, they come in there. They're wearing you know skins of a bear. Yeah, and they got big old sandals on yeah. and and probably you know a big stick or axe yeah. or something. And they order a vegan burger. Unbelievable. Imagine. Wow. Just, just the vegan. And so just to clarify, this is all concessions? Or so this is just a second? Hey, this is a real free. story. Is this it's just, all concessions. That, they've this, lost their I hope mind. we're wrong about they've that. They've lost their mind. Maybe it's, it's just a, maybe one concession. Three agents leaving to go elsewhere. This I mean, can't be real. Man. It can't be. It can't be. It can't be. They're not going to be real. I don't believe this is a real story. It's true. Eggs? Ooh. You don't kill anything with eggs. Can you eat eggs? That's it's, no kill. Tell me this is Babylon B. This has got to be fake. This Bubba, where'd crazy. you read this? I don't think it's true. Phone no, calls. It's been all over the news this weekend. Yeah. Phone I've calls. had it a hundred times. Phone calls, <laughs> phone calls next. Bubba, Rick, and Bubba. Uh, COVID-19, hey, you ruin everything. States can expand COVID-19 vaccinations to broader groups to use uh, according uh, to uh, the latest news from our health security or, uh, secretary. I mean, uh, this first.
about it. Uh, another hour has begun. Uh, another day has begun. Another week has begun. Uh, it's another Rick and Bubba show, and we're we're excited about joining the rest of the team and going forward. But we start this hour with the national anthem. everywhere. Welcome in to your two condescending left-wing hosts. <laughs> the home this evening. <laughs> There's Brian Adams. He met you. Uh, the pride of Canada. That's right. Yeah. Oh, Canadians. Oh, Canadians. They sent us a few winners. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, saw an interview with him like modern day. I like hmm. I like Brian. He's still out there doing all right. Oh yeah, still hmm. drawing crowds every now and then. Hmm. Not not you know not during COVID of course. No, yeah. uh, not so, many are. So Bubba, how are you, buddy? I'm good. Uh, I, you know I I kind of uh, I had a very very good weekend. A uh, really 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 good weekend. Now I had to turn off all the email to have a good weekend. Mm-hmm. But uh, but I did didn't didn't watch the news. Uh, I do realize uh, there's many theories today that were uh, that you know. I, I, I opened email like a mistake, and I opened email, and I think I thank all of you that are reasonable and 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 you're you're always an enjoyment to talk to, right? But I but I you know when you when you you know when you something's bad and you like to shut a door on it and right. you peek in and go nope still bad. <laughs> uh, it was uh, it's it, like a storm outside and you're yeah, looking nope still rough still uh, lightning out there. I did yeah. I just peered back into the 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 lunatic fringe. And and before I could get the door shut again, today we're under martial law. The people who stormed the Capitol, actually CIA agents, pretended to be Trump supporters, and the Pope is a hologram. And I just shut yeah, it back. A lot of stuff yeah, happening. Yeah, a lot of stuff look, happening in hey, the conspiracy look, look, world. I, how about this? I just shut it back. Rick, mm-hmm. I, I'll be honest with you. I, I'm amazed because <laughs> I, I started Gosh, getting. Greg, well, no, no, it's not, it's I started. Amazing. I started. <laughs> hologram technologies came away. So I started yeah. getting hit with this yesterday. Uh, that we're going under martial law today. Oh yeah, I, I guess that would explain the tank in the parking lot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm joking. <laughs> I know. I'm joking. You got to be careful. I'm joking. Bubba, watch it. Um, yeah, leave that and, last and, week. And uh, you know, I, I started going now. Martial law for what? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you got your whole range of uh, of, of things. And yeah. I said, well, now when was the last time we had martial law? Well. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I don't. I don't really see the need for it. Uh, well, and the problem. Because, I mean, what 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 would be the goal here? Uh, can't really can't really narrow it down. Uh, well, from what I gather, I, there are some things you need to be concerned about. Some of the censorship going on. Oh, is no real. Doubt. Yeah, we got. And, well, that's I mean, what I that gonna, is a real deal. You and I have been talking in these microphones for twenty seven years. Okay. Yep, yep. And we have been saying for most of those twenty seven years, when you chase some of this stuff. Then you ignore the real problems, right? And right. That, hey, listen, this country has got real, real yes. problems. Yeah. Okay, so I'm not blowing sunshine up everybody's rear end and being naive. I, hey, we got real problems. Yeah, we do. But 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 listen, I, we better spend some time on those because they're legitimate. Okay, but some of this stuff, guys. I mean, like I'm sitting there hearing this break out as we celebrate two years of Ellis Burgess yesterday yeah. on his second birthday. <laughs> Twenty minutes now past the hour. Phone calls. Speedy on the phones. Eight six six. We be big to chat with you. All right. So um, we have people now, Bubba, that are saying that. Uh, of course, it's posted everywhere, and you've been sent it a thousand times. Uh, that the Viking story is from a parody website. Good. Yeah, Good. I, I'm I glad. hope. 
I hope that's the I, case. I am all behind and, that. And I'm hoping the men's conference story is also from a pair <laughs> uh, I, hope, I, hope, have video of it. I hope it's not real either. Wow. Uh, so maybe the story isn't real, Bubba. Maybe. Well, it would be it would be right in line right. With, with Viking tradition. And, and, and America the right now. Going. Yeah, and yeah. America right now. So hopefully it is a parody. looks like it is. But, Somebody get Lindell on the phone. But it's being posted everywhere. Not the pastor, the pillar guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, yeah. The, the lines are open. 866-WE-BE-BIG. Brett in Little Tennessee. Little Brett, welcome to the show. Go ahead. Hey, guys. Hey. Hey, uh, apparently these idiots have not heard John Dutton explain to Summer Higgins that everything in the country that's killed in order for these plant-based things to um, to be grown. Uh, rabbits are killed. Insects are killed. Everything in that field before they plant it is killed before they plant anything. Yeah, the plant people and try the, to take a moral high ground, but what we do for plants, it, it's got, it's got, as you said, Brett, got, it's got, it's got a lot of issues as well. No, but I, no, no doubt about that. Uh, Eric in Columbus, Mississippi, what about the taking, John Dutton. What about the taking of innocent lettuce? There you go, I, I Eric. Stand for it. Welcome to the show. Go ahead. Morning, boys. How are y'all? We're, We're good. Great. We're good. Just wanted to see if y'all had heard about the Ole Miss spring game Saturday. Uh, they had a dunk contest. They had Joey Chestnut with a hot yeah. dog eating contest. That's it was a fun day. I did the, see the Joey Chestnut the, highlights. Blaine and, Kiffin. You got to love, love it. He put on a demonstration, didn't he? I mean, he ate a bunch of hot dogs again with, with the clock going. I know it. Listen, that's not going to tear him up. I don't see how his digestive I system know, can take this. I, one day I, I find it to be disgusting. Over, Totally disgusting. He has to be losing years of his life doing that. That can't be good. I don't know why anybody wants to do that and wants to see that. I'd rather see feats mm. of strength on a pole by a shirtless Thank man. You. Thank you. <laughs> hey, they should at the men's conference get Joey Chestnut. <laughs> no, there you go. God. And, you know, he'll venture off into wings every now and then. Yeah, it's not all hot dogs. Yeah. Maybe sit him down in um, one of these that has the wall of donuts and just watch him go up one <laughs> oh, side. Oh, yeah. uh, So, Greg, I know you keep up with this. I can't hardly watch. I can't watch no, it's gross. can't watch it. Yeah, it's I, the difference. I mean, of I, the buns in the water. Yeah, I, I almost lose it when I watch these things. And they'll, but... they'll double fist them, dog. <laughs> <laughs> no. Y'all are going to stop. I've had enough trauma this morning. <laughs> yes, you have, sir. So, but listen, Greg, I got to know this. Joey. It, Look at him. He looks weird. Joey Chestnut is the walking dog. He is. In this. Yes, sir. But whatever, and you know I'm going to ask this question. Sorry. Whatever happened to Kobayashi? Mm-hmm. Every he, single he, time he we bring this up. Him and the Where whoever is today? The, the the ruling body over extreme yeah. eating, they had a falling out. I forget what it was. But he didn't they, just they go away, him. did he? They suspended him and he said, "Forget it." But does he still I, do demonstrations? I don't think he's done. Any, I don't know. I, don't I know. mean, can he still hold his hot dog? You know, for years he was the guy, and then oh, Chestnut yeah. knocked him off the pedestal. Yeah. But, but I mean, there it's well, so... they never directly competed, didn't no. they? That's why uh, we've all wanted that I matchup of the Titans. Yeah, they did. There they, they are, right they? there. Okay, there's Kobayashi. I think Chestnut beat him. I may be wrong. Why though? Why are look we how, doing look this? Look how young Mark looks. Why somebody. would we do this? Where is Kobe as many Yashi hot dogs today? To go. Where is he at today? I I don't know. And what does he do? And Great. is he fun to eat with? Or does yeah, he, have does he terrible, eat everything fast? Does he have terrible tables? From- <laughs> yeah, I'm not so sure. Seriously, if, if, as I was taking the check to send to the federal government myself, I'm not so sure. Somebody said, I "Tell you what." Tear that up if you sit here and watch him eat a bunch of hot dogs. Yeah. I said, nah, I think I'll turn it in. You know how I am about wet bread anyway. I just, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, wet bread's tough. And again, but... I say this every time. It's a repeat, Greg. I know it is. In my mind, a hot dog eating contest, you have to eat it like a hot dog. Right. Bun right. and right. at right. one time. That, well, this that is advanced. advanced. This is advanced. Yeah, this stuff. busting it up don't count. To me. Well, to me, it's it's what Brad Can Stein. Can he eat vegan stuff, though? I, yeah. mean, I don't know. Can he have show up at uh, U.S. Bank and uh, and do a demonstration there? <laughs> calling what, cauliflower. I think you're right. Calling what they do a hot dog eating contest. It's not. I, y'all, we all take issue with that the way Brad Stein takes issue with the naked cowboy. Exactly. He's got underwear on. He's the underwear cowboy. Well, He's you have really to take that up with the extreme eating committee, right? right. Whoever, Whoever those people well, are. Well, if it's an, if it's a hot dog eating What's contest, like? which I don't want to see. You should have to sit there and just eat hot they dogs. They should have to eat hot dogs. Not yeah. weenies. Apparently, weenies and you know bread somebody, by itself that you've dipped in water and it made it really gross because now it's all over your face. You know somebody brought that up. Mm. Greg, along the way, and they, and they caved, apparently. That's right? it. Somebody found a new way. You remember that day I tried to eat that big hamburger on there? Ugh. The bread's the worst part. When did when did food become a dare? When when did food become a contest? Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it should never be there. Now, if you want to see who can eat the hottest sauce, 
Uh, no, there's your I don't even like that. I'm yeah. surviving food now. That's like yeah. asking Sweat Michelangelo to to paint you something Thank and do you. it in 15 minutes. Thank you. you it know? looks it yeah. looks like Kobayashi has not competed. He it looks like he retired in his 30s. He's now 46. The last documented competition I can see is from 2014 when he set a new world record at the Let Them Eat Canada contest, <laughs> uh, eating 15 and a, 15 and a half pizzas in 12 minutes. <laughs> Oh, but the wow. answer is why. So he's he's I branched get in. out into other crust, foods. Huh? Is that thin crust? Because I can tear it up. Sixty-two slices cool. of pizza in twelve minutes. That's, that's, that's a lot of pizza. If how you, do you how do you even uh, breathe after that? You don't. If you want to join us, eight six six. We be big. My Matt. Hurts. Look, yeah, Matt way, Ruby, be Matt's been standing by. There's lines for yeah. you now. Yeah. Speedy's hey, taking fake phone calls. Yeah, so so we think the Vikings thing was a fake story. Yeah, well, uh, well thing. unfortunately, the shocking. men's conference Driscoll thing was not. <laughs> uh, Matt, welcome to the show. We Matt. wish that was reversed. Yes, we did. Matt, go ahead. Good morning, guys. Good hey. morning. Hey. Hey. hey, first of all, the band you had on this morning it was awesome. Can you tell me the name again? Uh, three on a string. Okay. And then uh, last week I was at a JSU softball game, and the guy up in the press box doing the announcing – Sounded a lot like Greg. Wonder if anybody else has noticed that or, or, or pointed that out. I got a little side gig going. Greg, was that you or was that was that <laughs> Mac? I didn't want. To, I got it in my stage name. Yeah. So the guy on the PA sounds like Greg. Really? I'd like to have heard. I know they've got you know, different I, guys rotating, but I was actually there Saturday and I didn't pick up on that. Let me say Maybe this. a different guy though. Let me say this: if you've heard my voice, I don't think anyone would hire anyone who sounds like me to be a PA. In that. All right, wait, hang I'm on. Just going to say it. I ain't no guy. I've been to a lot of small town games. Yes, they well, now yeah. youth league, uh, I can probably. Right. Uh, hang on a minute. Here's somebody. They said they actually recorded it. It sounded so much like you. Front. This is from JSU softball. All right. But I'm going to pan down after it does it. Gosh, that does sound like that. Wow. Give us a <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> that sounds a lot like that. Yeah, Rick. A lot of people don't know. All right. All right they said that, that the game Gamecocks were in trouble late, and here's the announcer. I hate to say this, but I don't think we got the tools here to pull this do, off. Do this for me. <laughs> All right, Greg, do this for me. Uh, all right, here's a – she she played second base. Give me a um, – now batting, playing second base – Lindley Tubbs. Now batting, playing second base, Lindley Tubbs. It's not yeah. terrible. It's not terrible. <laughs> but I'm going to pan down after it does it. Okay, that's terrible. <laughs> I'd hire you, Greg. Yeah. I would, Jamie. They say, yeah, maybe that's why I need a little side. I gig. think Coach McGinnis would love to have you up there. Sure. What? Does, hey, does Daddy Matt go to the softball? Nice, does yeah. Daddy Matt go to the softball? Anymore? He goes like, Rick, what kind of questions? Is okay, that? so if, it, if it's Jack State, if it there. has anything to do with Jack State, I mean, if the rifle team was at home, I saw him at the bowling go. thing. Um, huh? I saw you him know, at that, the bowling. That oh, was one regret into... that I had in college. One of the guys that sat in front of me was gone like every Friday. He was on the rifle team, and I thought, man, I should have done that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you remember they had a class for it, but it was always full. You could <laughs> never get in. Get in. <laughs> get in. Anytime I go to a Jack State sporting event, I feel like I'm gonna run into Dad. Okay. Well, yeah, that yeah. kind of thing. And he might have been there Saturday, and I just didn't know it. Possible. Yeah. Because the baseball team was away. Oh, yeah. So he oh. had nothing to do. Oh, he did. Yeah, yeah he was there. You just Probably didn't in the outfield. Didn't know it. <laughs> we'll be back. More Rick and Bubba coming up. Now after, betting. Uh, after the bottom of the hour break. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. E. And and two. And, and all of a sudden it breaks out, and I'm like, who is the source for this martial law? And I look, and it's a fat guy on his phone. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Are we all, we think a fat guy he's on his got, phone? He's got all these military connections. So the, the fat guy There's on the another phone? one going around, too, and it's uh, probably a guy that's a little older than us, probably in his 60s, and he seems to be sitting in like a messy living room. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he sounds very intelligent and looks very smart. But and and has a ton pick, of followers. But like, he can't pick up after himself. But yeah, so it's, so let, let me but same same type of thing. Can I, can I go to this? A lot of people sending me that. See if I got this right because it 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 became a big topic yesterday, and I wish you'd heard all the commentary on it. Is um, now Ellis? He didn't care. No, you know, no, no I he, was, he liked that little basketball guy. Yeah, I couldn't get him to t- talk about it for <laughs> dunk, dunking the little basketball guy. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, when we come back, uh, we'll, we'll we'll unpack that. Uh, I think I heard that, again, what I just said, they were CIA agents pretending to be Trump supporters so they could go get laptops in all the liberal yeah. senators' offices, and they've given all that to Trump. 
who will now and today it's revealed who was behind the, the and rigging to, of the election. And today and he, how would, they he would declare martial law and arrest all of them mm-hmm. and and you and show the evidence to the American people of how they stole the election yes. and they'll all be arrested. But he's having why is he having to declare martial law? Because why don't, of the, why don't he, uh, why, now the martial law is there because he expects pushback from Black Lives Matters and Antifa okay. and they're gonna be there to control that. So okay. Trump's doing the martial law. Yes. Because he's still president. Well, if, if Flynn's going to be the vice if president, if he's doing it, so Pope's all wouldn't you be happy with that? I mean, isn't that what you? Well, now this guy was saying the message here. This is a good thing. He said it's all yeah. going to be over in about thirty days. Now, look, guys, I'm just <laughs> I'm not saying <laughs> we're this supposed to true. get well, supplies not, for thirty days. Yeah, right? he says yes. it's got to be over, and Trump will be in charge, and 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 the good Deep will be back on top. And off, bad can I tell all you I, dealt with? I, I always know that there's something going on when I start getting calls. Hey, how'd I get in ham radio? I mean, a lot of people real quick all at once. And, and then this is the other. Hey, what's the Patriot frequency? Do you know what channel, what frequency the Patriots are going to be on? I'm like, what? What are you talking about? Yeah. Oh, you know, the, the anti-government information. Oh, I But know. wait a minute. If Trump's your guy and he's declaring martial law, shouldn't he be for it? Right. I, I'm confused Yeah, no, no, no. The, the, the ones that they were, they were saying it was positive. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. One of the things that I don't understand, because I know the, the ones that say we're going under martial law today are... Uh, tomorrow, whatever, and it's Trump going. He's going to declare martial law while he's still president and arrest uh, all the uh, that the, the the storm in the Capitol was them going to get the computers, and he's going to show that it was stolen, and and then uh, and then we're going to go under martial law, and there's going to be an uprising from Antifa and hey, Black, Rick, what's the Patriot and, frequency? And, you know? and Black Lives Matter. So the, <laughs> then, then of course that starts all the prepping. Now Greg said that they said rural America may be okay, but and you need to be prepared for about thirty days. But here's what I don't understand: if it's just thirty days, well, what's all the dry beans about? Dry, dry well, beans. The guy I heard said two weeks worth of groceries. Well, dry, we don't need dry beans. Well, he didn't then. say that. He just said whatever. I heard dry bean, bean talk, and I'm like, well, dry well, beans. Makes it more you ever prepare dry beans? Mm-hmm. It's a long process. Mm-hmm. Rick, I don't like beans. Yeah. Period. But what I'm talking about, if like I'm going to if I'm going to get dry beans and rice, beans, beans, maybe if, I like field peas. If I just you know, in case my power goes off and all that, I guess under martial law they shut your power off. I don't know. But what I'm saying is, if maybe I'm not. if I'm getting supplies for a couple of weeks to a month. I'm just going to get canned beans. Mm-hmm. Ricky said you need cash and you need to top your gas tanks off. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, see what and it is. And he had about there, 80 there, people listening to it. Listen, yeah. there, there's well, people. Well, there's people sitting around everywhere right now, though. Oh, yeah. There's mm-hmm. a lot of people oh, on the left who are having fun with this. Oh, yeah. And and they, they know there's some paranoia out there and they know there's some panic right now. And they're just they're playing everybody mm-hmm. and, and what, sitting back and watching. Let me carry y'all back to September. As we all anxiously awaited Pizzagate. Do you remember this? Mm-hmm. Do you remember how they piled everything into September? Now, that was QA9, people. Mm-hmm. And and I'm like, September came and left. We had no Pizzagate deal. Uh, JFK Jr. didn't seen, show back uh, up. Is he going to show up after when Do Trump not, does martial law? Will JFK Jr. Yeah. show up now? Y'all, y'all, we got to learn from some of these things. We, we're, well, we're act, we got to, y'all. What is going on with some of you people? Don't forget, we got we got a pastor. Uh, got, we got a calendar being thumped by God's hands, and he's thumping October and thumping November, and and those things didn't happen either. Uh, so <laughs> what was funny? The guy that I was watching, uh, Trump's going to get a second term. Uh, apparently not. The guy I was watching now <laughs> in a landslide. Uh, apparently not. <laughs> this guy is is a prophecy guy, Rick. This guy is a prophecy guy, and he sometimes does teach on that. But he goes, "This isn't." He goes, "These are military connections I have." He said, "This is not a prophecy." He said, these are military connections I have, and this is what's going to happen. Well, it goes back to this. And then I heard another guy say the same thing, and another guy say the same thing, mm-hmm. and they all had these little— They even used Dana Coverstone as, this is not a fake Dana Coverstone. This is the truth. Well, but going back it's to this— people wanting can you I, to can I tell, lie I, or I know, hit their— I know you know. high-ranking military people, too. They, they're not doing anything special today. I know uh, Jason mm-hmm. Benefield. Thirty-five minutes past. Uh, thank you for being with us today. Well, the emails continue to come in on fieldofgreens.com. Uh, thank you for all this. I love hearing this. Um, and um, so uh, it, it's one scoop a day. It tastes great. Comes in various flavors: uh, wild berry, strawberry lemonade, lemon lime, the original. Uh, you pick it, uh, and we're always happy to help you. Uh, some of you that uh, that ask, "Hey, what do you mix it with? How, is it with water? What do you think?" All right, we we can help you with that. But boy, the amazing results 
you know, we, we have uh, emails like the one we got from Mike. I started uh, on Field of Greens a year ago. Uh, every day, feel better than I've felt in years. Uh, and also, my cholesterol's dropped from 200 to 138. Uh, my wife, who was skeptical at first, not anymore. She's now taking it with me. Uh, my doctor is thrilled. Uh, I got the, a similar conversation with my doctor probably in the last month. Uh, after going over numbers, doing a stress test, and he's like, boy. Uh, and there's a reason, you know, there's there's a lot of things you want to add to it, but at, at, at the bottom, at the foundation, what Field of Greens is doing is giving your body the fuel that it's designed to run on. Uh, the, the, the vegetables and the fruits, not just randomly picked, hand-picked, scientifically that supports your heart and other vital organ health. Um, and uh, and one, one thing I love, too, is the immune system then begins to also run at peak performance. And now more than ever, uh, you want to make sure that's happening. So don't let yourself get run down. I talked to someone just recently, said, hey, you know, I had COVID and it wasn't so bad, but I'd let myself get run down and, and I, w- I wasn't taking care of myself. And now it's turned into pneumonia. Well, yeah, I mean, but if your body is, the immune system's working right, you're taking care of yourself, uh, your body's also um, uh, able to fight uh, the things that are, that are out there that uh, that can make us sick. So fieldofgreens.com, uh, go there right now. We'll save you 15% off the first order. We'll give you free rush shipping if you use the promo code Bubba. That's fieldofgreens.com or rickandbubba.com under the sponsors. Bubba, we have a winner. 100, well, are you a winner if you win this? I well, mean, you know, yeah, in this contest, in this context, yes. Yeah, so we, we have the person, we're cutting it off now, who will write the biggest check to the government today. That check is two hundred and fourteen thousand and some change. Mm. Okay, so how about pinning that baby today yeah. for not getting anything? Yeah, uh, we're yeah. trying to contact them to see if they're willing to come on the air, maybe in the next segment, to tell us what they do, how this happened, or they don't have to. No, but uh, it's always interesting. It's always right? interesting. Yeah. So that that is going to be the winner. So um, it's interesting um, getting emails all morning, uh, and they've ranged from all over the place. Mm-hmm. A lot of um, a lot of checks over a hundred thousand mm-hmm. uh, coming in. A close second was two hundred and two thousand. Um, so mm-hmm. it's uh, there's a lot of large. Imagine right now checks being. Could your hand write that hand? Oh, could you no, imagine no. how many how you'd spell? I'd that have to out. practice right. <laughs> three or four times before I yeah inked it on the check. Yeah. You know, when we were, as we've been rebuilding, I've had to write a few big checks as yeah. the checks came in. And it's funny because your hand just, it doesn't want to write yeah. 200,000. <laughs> oh, no. It's, it's, and plus, I don't know how to spell it, you know, when yeah. you get it all oh, out yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. complicated. It is. So congratulations. A lot of we'll help uh, with that uh, with that tax burden. There you go. Uh, by giving you $100. We salute, <laughs> so. we salute you, you right. great American. Right. Yeah, so that'll we'll, buy lunch, we'll, right? We'll see. Maybe a... Um, Tax day lunch. Yeah. <clears throat> Bubba, over the weekend, uh, I, I found myself in an interesting situation. I know we, we all were going beautiful weekend. Hopefully everybody got to enjoy some time. And so one of the things, and, and this is pretty common, uh, the, what local churches do this, you know, they have days set aside uh, that they, they call them serve days or, or whatever mm-hmm. like that. And all the different small groups within the church you know, get assigned something to do to to be the hands and feet of Jesus or, mm-hmm. or whatever. And so one of the things that, uh, you know, Sherry and I lead a class, we wanted to do as a class, and, and it is, you know, it's, it's funny because it's one of those things that is so elementary that we were told to do, but it's probably one of the things that we struggle to do the most, and that is to talk to people about Jesus, right. to share the gospel. Uh, to uh, to be disciples and make disciples. It's 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 one of the most clearest commandments we were given, not suggestion, but it's one of the things you're, you're really the most uncomfortable about. You know, if you were, if, it, it can be mm-hmm. socially awkward and all that. So a lot of people, it's a daunting task, and certainly is. I don't think you ever really get to the point where you're not a little bit nervous about it. And so uh, Sherry was talking, and, and she went, and we asked and said, well, could we just go and do door to door in 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 the part y'all was, the city y'all assigned us mm-hmm. to, but instead of like a building project or picking up trash, whatever, can we, we're going to go just go door to door and invite people to church and, and talk oh. to them about Jesus. So that immediately, you know, put fear all over the entire class of everybody like, oh, wow. <laughs> and, and so, but, you know, here's the thing. Most of this, and I'm just being transparent, certainly we get chances to do that interacting with people in our daily lives. And But the door to door thing, most of that that I have participated in is somewhere else in the world. Not not my own country, not right. my own city. Right. 
Well, you know, a lot of things have changed over the years involving the people coming to your door. Uh, and these ring things are now pretty standard, the ring cameras. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you realize mm-hmm. they've got you. I mean, because everybody can look at you, and, and it's really hard to get anybody to come to the door if they don't want to. Mm-hmm. But I found myself in an ironic situation. Now, did y'all ride bikes? Well, <laughs> you're, you're back, back. <laughs> stay with me here, okay? <laughs> I'm not making this up. I think that I may have been able to, on behalf of – of all of us that have been become part of the church under the new covenant, I may have been able to get a little bit of a payback for us. Okay. Mm. You know, us, your basic evangelicals, we aren't really known for our door to door. Maybe, maybe that's sad, you know, but there's some groups that are known for it. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A couple. And, uh, and so we, number one, I kept getting, I didn't know people that I knew that lived in the neighborhood that kept texting me us on their ring camera while they were somewhere else, like at the lake or whatever, going, what are y'all doing at my house? You're right. <laughs> that was funny. Yeah. Uh, so then comes Case the, in the book. Did then, they answer you through the phone? Through well, the, uh, well ring? We, they did not, not me, but we had <laughs> other groups that went out, and they said they actually shared the gospel with people through the ring camera mm-hmm. while they were somewhere else in the country, or one was another part of the world. So I thought, well, there's the good side of it. Yeah. Technology. But yeah. the bottom line is everybody knows you're out there. There's there I, I don't remember a door that didn't have one. Not yeah. one. No. Okay. Popular. And so they do come in handy. Yeah. I got they, I've had oh, to respond. Oh, they are. I got a simply safe doorbell. Oh, it's camera, great. And it, I've talked on it before. It's great. But it really this door to door stuff has met a new match and it's called the ring camera. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So And if you it, fall down the stairs, they'll have it on there and show yes. Yeah. yes. On the most ironic moment of the day. So we were at a house, uh, like they were huge Bama fans. Okay, a lot of Tide. They were really day. Man. Hey day. The door opens up, okay, and of course, you know we're and we're trying to also train people that have never done this before that say I I, I, sh- I I'm not comfortable with this. Should, we gave you some ideas, some things to start the conversation, and one of them is we're here with whatever church, and we're just going door to door. We're, we're praying all over your neighborhood. Uh, you know, are you, are you part of a church? And it happened. We're Latter Day Saints, and I thought to myself, Ripper. "Well, how you like this? How you That's like a little flip around? How, how, how do you like this? What do you think about some Baptist air on the door? How's this feel?" <laughs> and uh, we didn't we didn't ride a ten speed, right? Uh, it, 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 same effect. Didn't have a button down on. <laughs> no, but uh, no. but uh, how like, about there was a moment when I had never experienced this. It was the reverse. I was on the doorstep of a Latter Day Saint. If you can just get a Jehovah uh, I, Witness, we've got. I know, and no, I kept thinking, really if we can it. hit a Jehovah Witness in this, guys, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. uh, this it felt, and it was interesting our conversation. Uh, so we we began to talk. By the way, they were also big Birmingham Bull fans. Oh, uh, so, cool. <laughs> little hockey. but but what yeah. what you know, even though that we even yeah, even though we like what we do for a living, it is public, so it is sometimes harder to be covert. Sometimes people, when they see us, because once we got on TV and now this year, people are more visual. Now, there was a time if you did radio, people didn't necessarily recognize right, you. Right. But now, with the YouTube yeah. and the days of Turner South and all that, sometimes when people, when they see any of us, they know who we are on site. So that became one of those things where somebody was like, um, you know, why, why are you going to everyone? Now they think I'm giving away prizes. And 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 and, 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 right. and in the doing? and in the group, one of the guys says, "Twelve days of spring." You you realize they think they've won that you're going to pay off their mortgage or yeah, something. Yeah, right. You know, yeah, yeah, house. yeah. yeah. And, Rick's with them. It must be something yeah. like that. I actually had uh, someone who was walking saying, "I'm sorry, today I'm picking St. Thomas over Rick Burgess." And I said, "What do you mean by that?" I thought they were talking about their church. They were going to St. Thomas oh. because we were inviting them to come to, to our Sunday school class the next day, uh, <laughs> and all that. So that that was funny. But I, I will say that two things. That moment. With, with Latter Day Saints, did not meet any Jehovah Witnesses. How people, about Kirby pe- salesman? People talking through the the rings to people and sharing yeah. the gospel, and then just the standard everybody knows you're there, and and that that moment where you realize they're looking at you on camera and they can make the decision whether yes. they're coming or not. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, so that's added a whole new element yeah. to the door to door whatever you're doing. You know what I mean? To have those ring cameras. It and was you a, can program a response out of it, or you can be alerted and go live. You know, mm-hmm. some of them have pre programmed, exp- you know, res- results independent on the season mm-hmm. or, you know, whatever. How about this? The hey, funniest was. Hey, honey, honey. 
pull up the phone. I think Rick is standing at our front door. <laughs> no, that happened. I had a I had a, no, friend, a guy that a guy that Rick I knew. Rick and Bubba's out here. Yeah, I, I had yeah. a I had a, a guy. You know, by the way, poor old Benny Rose. He was bubbled several times. <laughs> uh, but the. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah. most, most time, Benny will just yeah. go with it. But but the uh, but but people mm. seriously were sending me text. This video just came to me. I'm at the lake. What are you doing at my house? Yes. And I'm like, mm, well, it's nice. a long story. But but as usual, oh, yeah. you also had those moments that were beautiful. That the Holy Spirit, where people were like, I cannot believe on this yeah. day you showed up at my door saying you want to pray with yeah. me because of this, this, and this. There was oh, that. Too. Wow, you're gonna have that. All right, well, so we'll come back, see if we can get contact our winner, uh, or just run down any stories we miss when the Rick and Bubba show continues running for this. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Yeah, how about that, hey, Jason? Trooper so sorry, Jason. So, so it's you brought into this. I'm calling Jason. <laughs> What's Jason saying about it? I'll tell you this: I'm gonna be mad if he didn't tip us off and this happens. I tell you, I tell you one on, thing: Jason's part of the group. Happen, that is a good point. Hey, yeah. Jason's part of the group. He can't leave us hanging. All yeah. they're all Come they're trying now. to do is make the right, and some of them are way right. Okay. Look more loony than what we've already looked. Okay, that's all it is. By the way, if you want to go on a wild ride, read emails from a one entitled Rick and Bubba listener. That, yeah, <laughs> I have. Yeah. Yeah. It, you're going a wild ride there. That today. Well, and the guy, the the link that he's given us, mm-hmm. this is a guy that's got like five hundred thousand to a million yeah, but, followers and views yeah, online. Like, but can I say I something? Act bizarre, hey, and world. that makes people follow hey, me and view hey, me, and then I make a little joke. Sweet, sweet <laughs> lady, wonderful lady, enjoyed interviewing her, but. Honestly, I mean the 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 sweet grandmama that shows everybody how to cook biscuits has got a million. I mean, if, if, if there's certain things that just click with people. Now some of it's fun like that, yeah. and innocent and wonderful, and it so it doesn't really have to. You know, we I can tell you all kinds of ways to get. Listen, I could get on this microphone and just and and, <laughs> and, and trust me, I, I could I could just you wouldn't believe the followers I'd have if I if I just started saying here's how I'm gonna go about it. But here's the thing, it goes back to the things that may or may not have been with, with, with Coverstone may or may not have been like this guy's talking about. All right, let me just look all of you in the eye. Okay. The, the current state of our country. Okay. You don't have to have a dream about it. Put it over here. You don't have to know anybody in the CIA. Put it over here. You don't have to have military inside connections. Put it over here. Y'all all did see what happened at the Capitol coming. Did you? I did. Cause you know why yeah. you had, a, you had a, a political party that used a pandemic to change the way we could vote. Mm-hmm. That absolutely happened. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now what we obviously see taking it to the proper through the proper steps did not appear that anybody would hear the case. That could be that the case wasn't wasn't, wasn't wasn't good enough, <laughs> or it could be that it's all politics. I don't know. Okay. So people, rightfully so, or Rick, it could be the biggest conspiracy that had enough uh, enough people involved that it was bigger than the Manhattan Project. Right. Here's what we know: the left, as they always have done, see the book from Saul Alinsky, which a lot of them think he's their guy. They know that when you get people afraid, you can reach and grab political power, you can advance outside the Constitution with the government, and you can manipulate a vote when you couldn't before because certain things will be allowed that normally aren't that are easily manipulated. You don't even need a big, you don't need a big, all the stuff you talked about. Look, if I, if I don't have to identify myself and I'm now allowed to vote in a way that I wasn't allowed to vote in before, that may be all you need. Yep. Okay. Yep. And, and I don't know what did or didn't happen, so, but I understand that, mm-hmm. that we all go, man, this just didn't look right. I got and it. And you've had poll workers come out with questions. Yeah. Go, hey, and there's some, there, right. there's some things. There were some fishy things going on. There's yeah. no doubt. And I'm going to get to what I think we need to do because I know everybody says, what are we supposed to do? But I understand. I'm going to be Chris Rock on all this, okay? <laughs> I ain't saying it should have happened, but I understand. Yeah. Okay? So what you do, you have a disenfranchised, very, very devoted, very, very emotional easily rebel roused group of people that, that descended on DC thinking that an election was stolen and that their candidate should still be the president. I do not think that president Trump intended for them to attack the Capitol. And I didn't think he said anything they should have interpreted that way. Now he was, a, he was rebel rousing, which he does not always rally. Yeah. That's, and so, but that, if, that's but, political but, speech. But if you're yes. watching your guy and he's saying they stole it from you, they stole it from me. I'm the legitimate president. 
and and then everybody. But what and his intention is, let's go to the Capitol and let's let's show these senators they need to stand up and do what they need to do. Mm-hmm. But then you get over there, and some people can't handle that responsibility. And then the first person knocks down the barricade, and then it gets into a frenzy, and it got out of control. But the majority of people did what they were supposed right. to do. But there was enough of them that got out of control that yeah. led to this and actually hurt more than it helped. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Nine minutes to the top of the hour, so a couple updates. So our winner on tax day does not want to be named or on the show, uh, but did win, and we will send them a $100 check, uh, which they said they will. Congratulations. Pro- they said they will, may not cash it. They may just post it to remind them of the government giving them the screws. Yeah, well, we uh, appreciate that, but, uh, sure. you know, do as you will. Do as you will. Uh, also, before we get to well, this thing with the ump that owns us, uh, it, it was true what I, I said a minute ago. You know, you remember we were when we were interviewing, uh, I think it was was it Scott McKay. He actually thought that the FISA spying on us deal would go away and expire. He was very optimistic about it. But then he started talking about that the Speaker of the House seemed to be waning a little bit. And the Republicans did wane, uh, not all of them, but enough of them. Uh, so they have uh, reauthorized the FISA um, uh, without change, with, without, without change. change, so it will not expire. So we will be continued uh, to be able to be spied upon uh, by the government, even if they just deem us apparently to be a political opponent of theirs. So uh, I think this was a setback for freedom and liberty, and I disagree with all who crumbled on I, this. I'm I'm confused why so many people who thought it was abused in the Trump investigation. That they would go back and uh, and and reauthorize it without changing it significantly. Right. I don't know if they uh, got some intelligence briefings and uh, and the intelligence community thought that it was uh, absolutely required or what. I don't know, but we do know it's been abused. No and, doubt. And if you haven't changed anything to check that, I, I don't I don't understand. Right. Well, those that uh, that that. Um, uh, says that they wanted it to expire. They said, I, I don't understand uh, the constitutional liberties of Americans have to come first. We don't suspend the Constitution for anything. Um, it, it, it shouldn't be suspended. And he says, uh, we, we allowed liberties to be taken away, and we've learned that that, once again, was something the government abused. I cannot believe we're going to continue this. So uh-huh. anyway, uh, so very disappointing and uh, disappointed in the Republicans that that caved on this, and um, and their constituents will, will have their say. Um, all right, so now we're down to this thing that owns us. Uh, well, Angel Hernandez is one of the worst umpires in the major leagues. As a matter of fact, we're all shocked he's still umpiring. Yes, uh, there on any given weekend you can get Angel Hernandez uh, oh, highlights. It's, it's and Rick, I want you to see the three pitches he threw uh, or was thrown this week that he rung up his strikes. So now, let me new. tell you, if I'm pitching, this is a guy I want behind the plate. Okay, okay. let's see it, the audio. It's out, outside the box, Whoa. strike one, <laughs> two one. one, and oh my goodness, oh, <laughs> two two. You have oh. got. To be kidding me! Look, the picture's like, what love me some Angel in the Hernandez. World. We've just completely lost it here. Well, at least it's consistent. Well, I was going to say, it's like the pitcher kept going a little further yeah, out yeah, just, just to see kept, what he could yeah. get away with. Yeah, it's almost just, like a dare. After he no, ran, it's, after it's he where ran it him. goes over the plate, not where the catcher catches it. But you see the catcher moving Square. it back in, framing up the pitch. And, and, you know, if you just look at the box, the video here speaks for itself. 
after he rang him up, the watch third him, one especially. He, he looks at he looks at the batter like, yeah, what you want to do? Look at him, see him look over yeah, at him. He's the third one was the worst. It's, it's always yeah, been about by him. far. Yeah, it's by always far. been about him. Yeah, the first one was close. The other two bad. But I mean, the he, last one was terrible. Did they not get evaluated and stuff? Yeah, who, the, these mean, guys make any. He probably makes upward of three hundred thousand dollars a year to do this, if not more. Right, I but think the still, average is yeah, three hundred thousand and may up to four hundred fifty. He's been there long enough. He's probably making upwards of three hundred thousand dollars a year to do this and miss those kind of calls well, constantly. It, but there's got to be a grading system and some kind of check and balance here. I mean, he's horrible. He's the only umpire we know by name because he has right. these highlights all the time. Why is he still anybody in the room? Name another umpire. <laughs> Anyone. <laughs> Well, this uh, this video came from Umpire Auditor. That's like a uh, social media yeah. account that posts this kind of stuff. Uh, he says that the miss was 6.7 inches outside, and that's the largest miss that they've ever done in the Umpire Auditor history. <laughs> well, at least he's wow. got something. It, look, again, I know when you're dealing with breaking pitches, it can be, the optics can be, you know, confusing. But that one is not. I mean, it's just, I, it's like you, you know, we're pitching, you work the stair step. If somebody swings at a high pitch, you give them a little higher and you just keep going up the ladder. He did that to the umpire going outside. He did. Well, and there's even been calls like close plays that before we had the review systems right. that he ruined perfect games and no hitters because of his calls on first. It's, it's, it's What is nuts. his deal? I mean, I he, don't know. And did he have something against this batter? The batter wasn't showing him up. He never said anything to Bubba, him. Bubba, I have been hearing about Angel Hernandez <laughs> bad calls. Most of the time for, of this show. For, for years, What and this is the part you guys are asking, doesn't those who, who assess umpires, do they not know that, that he's become the punchline of a joke? I mean, do they not look at the stuff that everybody can see online everywhere? My goodness, there's rolling highlights of missed calls yeah. mm-hmm. of Angel Hernandez. Do they never get embarrassed and go, this guy shouldn't be out there? Why does he continue to get to do it? I don't know. With it's documented perfect. stuff. It's not like he missed one call right. or, you know, whatever. There's <laughs> people out there at the college ranks in the minor leagues that aspire to be in this position. Can we not bring one of them up and get rid of this guy? Don't you want people doing I mean, a good job? Isn't, is this the point where we need to take the keys away from right. him? I mean, it's, I mean, it's I mean, obvious. Right, yeah. that, that was horrible. I don't see how that guy that he struck out <laughs> walked away like that. When, when, I mean, the, it looked like the umpire the wanted to fight with him. When, you know, he turned around. Yeah, and What inning was yeah. it in? Mm-hmm. I don't what know. What inning was it I in? Know. I don't know. Yeah. It may have been one of those things where it was relatively early and he didn't want to. He knew, knows he's got a bat again, if so he you, doesn't want to. Nah, that's true. If you really want fun today, get you some Angel Hernandez uh, highlight clip. Yeah, just and, and, and just Google it. A ton of them will come up. And, and please, please read the amazed. comments. And you're please, amazed. Please read the comments. <laughs> All right, so it looks let's like watch it again, Adder. Just for tell fun, us the can we? I don't I think, think it says the inning. Oh, wait, top of the fourth. It's the fourth. Top of the fourth. Outside. Yeah, that guy's got a bat again. All right, here we go. Outside, do the announcers read it? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Two, two. I'll start over. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. 2 1. And, oh my goodness. <laughs> 2 2. Uh, hey. You have oh. got to be kidding me. <laughs> hey, don't miss this. Base is loaded. Yeah. And, it, and he should have walked. And oh. that would have been more runs for the Rangers. <laughs> wow. It looks real personal to it, me. It, it, it did, didn't it? I mean, when you start doing that with the bases loaded, you have to look at, does he have money on this game? Because that was ridiculous. Or it's 8-1, to one and he wants to get the heck out of there. But this has been going on. This is not I know, isolated. Not yeah. Top of the hour. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. This is the Rick and Bubba Show. Watch more at blazetv.com slash Rick and Bubba.